Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Friday and welcome to the Ron Henry Lawn Care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry and this is all about you guys. So this is a live stream where we take your lawn care questions. Hopefully I can answer most of them. Sometimes I get stumped, happens fairly often, but still we have a great time talking about it and, uh, and, and we have a good time. Um, feel free to drop your questions down in the chat. That's the way this works. So even though I'm answering other questions, I might be talking about other things. At any point, feel free to drop your questions down in the chat, and I just work through them in the order that they come in. So if you get here early, you're gonna get the likelihood of getting your answer addressed is um, goes up uh, quite a bit. So let's see who we have here tonight and this evening in the live stream. We got Metro Retro kicking it off, asking me what's my favorite color. Uh, what is my favorite color? Probably black and green. I like a lot of different colors, but black is a good color. Red, green, those are those are like are, are probably the colors that I like best. I really like green, green though. Um, yeah, so those, probably probably those two. I don't have a favorite. If you had to pin me down, black and green. Um, yeah, so great great question. And that's not what I've been asked before. So uh, so thanks for kicking off the live stream with an interesting question. All right, so who else we got here? We have Bike, Biker Fox. He says, Ron, you're bad, A. Eh? I uh, would love to watch, but I got him. Oh, see, that's a good question. That's a good reason to miss a live stream. That's an excellent reason. There's not many good reasons to miss a live stream, but that's one of them. You got to get there and get your mo in. I totally get it. Totally get it. Uh, let's see. We got some other questions here, but let's see who else we have in the live stream. We got Up New York Lawn, um, man who just started his uh, YouTube channel this season. And also, I think he's working on a putting green as well. So what's going on um, Up New York? Thanks for coming to hang out with us. Uh, what else we got here in the house? We got uh, JG in the house. CJ Martin, always good. All right, guys, let's get to our very first question um, of the evening. So uh, T-Nug has a question. He says, hey, Ron, I'm putting in a patio and an area now. I literally just quit working on grading work for the day 10 minutes ago. Wow, so you really just got it done and came into the live stream to, uh, to ask some questions. He says, uh, this is stressing it out. I guess you're talking about the grass. And I've just put down some minerals to help it out. Should I, should I raise the continued... Let's see, height of cut to 2.5 inches, it's Bermuda. Okay, so great question, T-Nug. I actually asked you a follow-up question in the chat about this. And um, in general, no, right? So as long as the patio that you're putting in isn't gonna cause like a shade problem, the Bermuda should recover. So the stress that the Bermuda is seeing right now is likely due to, you know, you're always, a lot of traffic, a lot of foot traffic, you may be dropping goods on it, you're, you know, you're, it's, getting, it's getting just beat up a lot. But as soon as that stops, in other words, as soon as you are done with that and the patio is installed and it's growing and it's, it's it's you're finished with like a lot of the heavy traffic work in that area, the Bermuda should should come back just fine. I wouldn't necessarily raise the height of cut. I mean, 2.5 inches, believe it or not, is already pretty high for Bermuda. Uh, so no reason to go any uh, taller than that. So I would I would stick with the current height as long as what you're telling me in the live stream is accurate where you're not, um, the patio is not gonna cause any new shade problems. Uh, you shouldn't have a problem at all. As soon as you're done, the Bermuda is going to recover just fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it at all. That's what I think about Bermuda. It's really, really difficult to get rid of, even when you want to get rid of it. And you know, sounds like you just got like a wear issue that should go away uh, once you're done with your work. All right, Daryl Tunstall is in the house. He says, Ron, I'm getting to mow twice a week now, and after uh, after an over application of PGR, it took a month to recover, but the lawn is now looking awesome. So for those of you guys that don't know what PGR is, anyone that's new to the live stream, what Daryl is talking about is a chemical called plant growth regulator. What it does is it suppresses the grass's ability to grow tall. And you know, from for any of you guys that are regulars in the live stream, you know that Daryl over applied it by I think a uh, rate of like four times. So it's supposed to be a quarter of an ounce per thousand, and he went down like at an ounce per thousand. So what he's saying is that the, the lawn has bounced back. Um, that's that's awesome, Daryl. That's typically the case, right? I mean, I, I don't know if I've heard of any instances where PGR like permanently damaged or killed a lawn with enough time, especially with it being Bermuda, it should bounce back. So Glad to hear that the lawn is doing awesome and you're getting to now mow your grass since the, the PGR is wearing off. You know, guys, that's uh, on the topic for this evening, something I want to talk to you guys about because it's something I've gotten a lot of questions on around the topic of mowing, right? So I've gotten emails from you guys, um, emails and also messages on some of the videos around saying that, you know, your grass has got like a yellow haze to it. You seem to be mowing a lot, but, you know, the colors are not where it needs to be. What's the problem? So here's the thing. As, assuming you're putting enough water on the lawn, which Bermuda really only takes an inch of water thereabouts per week, thereabouts, right? Doesn't doesn't take a ton of water. And the soil is decent. The thing you might want to check that you're not really, that a lot of people don't really consider is how sharp your mower blades are. Um, you know, uh, Alex and I were actually checking that out here today on, on his lawn. He has a true cut. He has not sharpened it for this season. And uh, we started noticing he's mowing about as much as I am. Uh, he's mowing, you know, every other day. And his lawn just has like a, a, a yellowish haze to it, kind of like what probably a lot of you guys are dealing with too. 
So, you know, we were talking today and we said, you know, man, it's got to be something. You, the, your soil is good. You know, you've got plenty of nitrogen in the lawn. You've got plenty of everything in the lawn. So then we did our paper test, right? So we got the mower out. We checked it with paper and it's not cutting paper, you know? Um, after he top dressed his lawn, he, you know, he mowed over some like peanut shells and some other stuff, little debris that was there. And that dulled the mower. So something that for you guys to think about is that if you have a rotary or a real mower, uh, you got to keep them sharp because when we actually got some of his grass blades, I should have taken some off and actually could have shown you guys. What ends up happening instead of the, the grass blade being cut nice and evenly like a pair of scissors cut it, what you saw is that it was like stretched out and like almost like it was pinched and stretched, um, which is indicative of the real, either the tolerance between the real and the bed knife not being set properly or it being dull. When we did our paper test, it wasn't cutting paper. So I think we cracked the problem. Uh, his mower's going in and fortunately he's got a neighbor that has a true cut. So he's gonna be good to keep mowing while he's getting his mower service. So for any of you guys over the summer months that are really trying to maintain that green um, and you know, you, you think you've got everything else right, your soil is in good shape, you're watering it up, but the lawn just isn't looking as good as you want it to. Like it's got a little bit of yellowing going on. Um, you know, it very well could be check your mower blades, check, check the, um, check the edge of the grass, the ends of the tips of the grass. And if you see that it's elongated or it's like, it's, it's like it's torn and those tips are yellow, like one grass blade looking like that is, is fine. But if you spread that over the entire lawn, the appearance will look, you know, not that great. So just something to keep in mind, something you guys, um, may not be considering. And I've gotten quite a few messages around that. So I wanted to make that like the talking point, uh, for the live stream this evening and get it out of the way early. So you guys know that, Hey, check your mower blades, check your real mowers, make sure they are sharp because that will affect uh, how good of a job it does cutting the grass, which is also gonna affect the appearance of the grass. So Daryl, um, thank you for the segue into the talking point and I'm glad that you are now able to uh, to mow your lawn. Okay, um, up New York lawn, he says, tomorrow will be officially part of the real team. Congratulations, sir. He says, I'm planning a bent grass putting green project. I know you're Mr. Bermuda, but any recommendations to get the soil ready and in the best possible shape? Uh, sure, yeah, so um, yeah, even though, I mean, I work on Bermuda primarily, I mean, if you're trying to get, um, you know, you're trying to get to the, the soil in good shape for a putting green, if you've not done a soil test as yet um, up New York lawn, that's something I'm gonna recommend because that's gonna allow us to, to determine like, you know, what, um, what kind of a treatment program, what kind of fertilizer you wanna use on that area, um, on your lawn in general, because it's probably, you know, whatever, you, whatever sample you take for that section of the lawn is probably gonna apply to that entire back lawn area. But if you've not done a soil test, the one that I recommend is the one from my soil, this one here. This is what I use on my lawn, use on Alex's lawn. Um, these are pretty inexpensive. You can get them at the golf course lawn store. So I would start with this. I would start with that um, as a means of figuring out what we're gonna do from a fertilizer standpoint. Now, as far as other ways to improve the quality of the soil, uh, you know, if you can get on that Essential G train, um, that's a good idea. If you got like a site one nearby, you can get some Carbon Pro G, that will work. And then also the Carbon Kit is also um, also something that I'd, I'd highly recommend. So uh, what I'm talking about by that, if I go here, is this guy. It's the Golf Course Lawn Carbon Kit. It consists of three components. You've got Release Zero, um, which is a micronized carbon, 10% micronized carbon, uh, nutri kelp, which is a 24% um, kelp product with a little bit of um, nitrogen, a little bit of potassium, a little bit of phosphorus in it. And then finally, Biospectrum, which is a microbial package that's going to help improve microbial activity in your lawn. Those are things you can do independent of what the soil test uh, says, and they will help improve the quality of your lawn. And then as far as um, Essential G, what I was talking about, this is a granular carbon product that I would also recommend that you give a shot as well. Uh, it's gonna be getting a really, really good response. I've been using it on my lawn with great results and everyone else that I've recommended it to have had really good results with it as well. So that's what I would go with. But let's also get a soil test done so we make sure that you know, whenever you choose for fertilizers for your lawn, that it is based on us not just going, you know, finger in the air and praying and hoping for the best. Because a putting green is a big time commitment. It's a lot of effort. Um, I'm not sure if you see you going bent grass, you're gonna be you're gonna be putting in installing bent grass, you're putting a lot of work into this. Let's make sure that we are doing all that we can to give that area, you know, the best possible products um, and that we're giving us stuff that actually fits. But definitely keep us uh, keep us posted, man. And congrats on the real mower. We gotta do that. You didn't say what rope mower you got, but um, congrats on that. That's pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, hopefully that helps. Let us know how the uh, the putting green project works out. Uh, very, very cool. All right, so we got JG in the house. Again, YouTube royalty, live stream royalty. Her and LG are always on the YouTube long here live stream supporting people, so we always appreciate you guys uh, for that. She says, happy Friday, uh, y'all. Proud to say I traded in my Tiffany's for a battery operated steel string trimmer. Thanks, Mucho at LG. Game changer, awesome tool for a girl. 
So here's the thing, guys. That, that's when you know you're serious about your lawn care. When a, when a lady's willing to part with her Tiffany's, um, she didn't say what it was Tiffany's, but I mean, nothing that Tiffany's makes is, you know, not inexpensive. And they, they everything they make, even their pens, are really, really nice, right? So the fact that she's parting with the Tiffany's or, or you know, giving up the Tiffany's and trading Tiffany's for a string trimmer, you, ma'am, are hardcore about your lawn. I respect you. I salute you. Uh, that's, that's very cool. I don't think many women could say that. So uh, enjoy the string trimmer. Uh, that's, uh, that's very, very cool. Uh, pretty awesome. Tony Valdez is in the house. What's going on, Tony? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. Always uh, always fun to see you uh, here. And then Diamond Shotties also talking about, uh, since we're on the gear train, people getting new gear, uh, Diamond Shotties is in the house. He says the Flow Zone uh, 2.5 uh, backpack spray, I guess it's the Typhoon. Uh, he got that and he got Terraflex 2.3. Uh, it arrived today. It's Christmas in June. Yeah, dude, you got you got a nice combo there, man. The uh, the Turfplex is an excellent, excellent uh, liquid fertilizer. I love it. I get great results with it. And the fly, the, the Typhoon two point five is the new hotness. Right? I don't even have one of those. See, I have the Typhoon two, and I think Flowzone really nailed something with that one because with the two uh, with the two variable, like it was difficult to actually know what psi you were running the sprayer at. So if you're doing like your sprayer calibration, you're kind of guessing. But with the two point five, I think they actually have like detents. So you know that this, you know, you can kind of vary the rate, but you know when you're locking it in at say 70 psi, and then whatever the the different um, levels are, all the way up to 115 psi. So that's a cool sprayer, very very um, very very nice. Uh, congratulations, sir, and uh, enjoy it. Put some uh, some some turf flex through it and let us know how it uh, how it does. Uh, very very cool. Also, guys, also on other housekeeping note that I had to tell you guys about. So. I told you guys last week that we got Hydrotain back in stock and then it sold out in the middle of the week and now the granular is back in stock. There's, there's still plenty of the liquid, but the granular got back in stock, I think, today. Now, I checked the inventory. There's like 70 bags of it, so I don't know how long that's going to last, but if you want the granular Hydrotain like this one, the one that, um, that I particularly use, this guy here, uh, if you're on the fence about getting it, like get it because I don't know how long 70 bags are going to last. Uh, obviously, Ecologel has been getting a lot of response this year on the product, which is great for them, but it means that it's kind of scarce and hard to get your hands on. So if you were thinking about trying out Hydrotain, uh, it's available now on the Golf Course Lawn Store. There's some bags, there's some some products, some inventory now. I have no idea how long it's gonna last, but I promise you guys I would let you know when it's back, and it's back as of today. So uh, don't wait if you wanna get the, uh, the granular version. Okay, uh, Timothy's in the house. What's going on, Timothy? It's nice to see you, sir. Joseph Roberts, always in the uh, live stream. Thanks, Joe, for all the support and for all the promotion you always do all over the Facebook groups. I, I definitely see it, and I, I appreciate uh, all the love and support. Uh, it's pretty awesome. You, got, you, you guys are like you know the, the best thing ever. Like you guys promote the channel and promote the content way more than I ever could. So the the few times that you guys decide to do that, I really appreciate it. So um, thanks, thanks so much for that. Okay, so we got another uh, real mower in the house. We got uh, Ben Raham says I just finished mowing the renovation lawn with the new to me C25. So the C25, uh, for anyone new, that's the um, True Cut C25. That's actually the same mower uh, that I have. He says that you got it from a fellow fan. Thanks, UW. Welcome, well, that's awesome, uh, Ben. Awesome, Ben, we gotta clap it up for that. We gotta do it. Congrats on the new True Cut. I always like to hear people getting uh, new hardware. I don't, you know, I'm probably done with mowers for a while. I don't have any new mowers or anything cool, any cool toys to play with, so. I gotta live vicariously through you guys, all the cool uh, toys uh, that you're that you're getting. So that's very cool, uh, Ben. It's a really nice mower, and uh, congrats again. All right, uh, JG says, yeah, right. I, once I once I said something about wanting a lightweight one, and it had helped more. He was gone in thirty seconds to go pick it up. See, LG's one of these guys that just wants a reason to go increase and 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 you know add to his lawn care arsenal. So you're like, you know, hon, it's I really want to help in the lawn, but this 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 gas power one is so heavy. If only there were something lighter, I would. And he probably takes off and he's back with uh, with a new uh, string trimmer, right? So um, gotta love LG and uh, and and supporting uh, you know. Supporting like all the manufacturers and making sure that everybody, uh, you know, you have you have some good, pretty awesome gear, and you got still too. That's actually nice. That's that's high end stuff, man. So congrats again. Okay, so I have a question here about pricing. So Hotshot King says, "Hey Ron, what do you think is a good price for a used C25?" Huh? Okay, so uh, a used C25, if it comes with the front roller. Um, because by default they don't come with that. If it comes to the front roller, if you can get one between 650 to 1,000, that's a pretty good price. As we get closer to that $1,000 price point, I would wanna see, wanna know that the mower's been serviced uh, recently, um, and then it's in good shape. So things to look for, 
Uh, look at the chains, make sure those chains aren't like stretched out. Make sure that all the guards, so there is a, there's a couple of guards that go on the chain, especially, so if you're, if you're behind the mower on the left side, uh, there's a chain there. Uh, there's a there's a chain. There's a guard that goes on that. Make sure that's on there. And that's what I would want to see when you get closer to that that thousand dollar price point. If you get closer to the six fifty, um, you know the the a guard might be missing, but you still want to, if at all possible, get a mower that's been recently serviced. Like I I know a neighbor um, of mine that is that had that bought one for six fifty and it was in really really good shape. Works works great. Um, all he has to do is just, you know, service it annually and that mower has been rock solid. I mean, uh, Alex is the king of getting like, uh, true cuts at like bargain prices. He's, I don't think Alex has ever paid over 500 for a true cut. Um, and he's just maybe had to ship, replace a chain on it, small things here and there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you, you can get them in, um, you know, for, for a decent price and in, in decent shape. And as long as they're, they're in good shape, they're going to run fine. As long as they're not rusted out or, or anything like that, you should be, uh, should be good to go. Again, my neighbor's got one that is over 20, 22, 23 years old at this point, I believe, and um, still runs great. So as long as they're taken care of, it's kind of like a greens mower, right? They don't, they just, they will last a long time. It's a really well-built uh, piece of equipment. So 650 to 1,000, Hotshot King, and uh, definitely ask whoever you're buying it from if it's been recently serviced. Because if it hasn't been, you're going to have to tack on another $100, $100 or so, $120 to, uh, to get the real and bed knife ground, like get that, get that um, all worked out. Um, so just keep that in mind as far as a, maybe a negotiating or a bargaining chip whenever you're, um, you're, you know, talking about pricing for the mower. But yeah, man, the C25 is a great mower, great size, I think, because it can fit in, in tighter areas than the 27. Um, but yeah, uh, it's awesome, awesome choice. I love mine. All right, another mower question. Um, up in New York line, he says, uh, more question, Ron. Would you spend two thousand on a new McLean, uh, an Allet, or two thousand on a ten to fifteen year old Toro or John Deere greens mower? Uh, so it depends, right? You're talking about two completely different pieces of equipment and two different, really two different classes of equipment, like what they're designed to do, right? They're both real mowers, um, um, but really, if you're if your only criteria up New York lawn is the best possible cut. And if you think you're the one doing the putting green, um, then it's gotta be the Toro or the John Deere. It's gotta be one of those two, in my opinion. Um, the the Alex a great mower. The McLean, uh, they're okay. I, I'm, I am not a fan of the drive system on them, but I mean, people have them and they get great results with them. So just because I'm not a fan of them doesn't mean they're not a good mower. There's people that have them and get great results with it. Um, and the Alex is also attractive too because you've got that interchangeable cartridge system. I don't know that you can get one for two grand, maybe, maybe one of the smaller ones. Um, I thought they were more expensive than that. But again, if you're talking, when you compare, um, if you're talking, if you're asking me between Allet and McLean, I'm gonna say Allet. Really, you can't compare a McLean and an Allet against a Greensmaster and a, like a, a John Deere. You just really, they're really just, they're two different, completely different classes of machine. Um, and the level of cut, the quality of cut that you're gonna get with a Greensmaster or um, a JD is going to be, it's, 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 it's really awesome. There's nothing really that's that in that price point that's going to really match it. Um, the one thing I might consider, if you have a putting green, right, um, you know, if you can pick up a Flex, like a Toro Flex or one of, I'm sure John Deere has a, has a floating head unit as well too. I'm not familiar with their, like their models because I, I got mainly deal with Toro. Um, but if you get like a Toro Flex, um, that could be a good option for your putting green, depending on whether you're doing a lot of undulations and you, you know if it's going to be completely flat or if you're going to have some ridges in it. You know the Flex will do a better job not scalping as you get those those cutting heights down a little bit lower. Um, but if it were me for what you're talking about, I'm going to choose a Toro or a John Deere. Just make sure it's in good shape. Uh, you know it's it, that you know it, the hours on it. I mean, yeah, check, if you can get lower hours, that's going to be fine. But for two thousand dollars, you're probably looking at hours in the, you know probably the four to 500 hour range, maybe a little bit higher thereabouts. Um, but as long as it's been taken care of and it doesn't need a ton of service when you pick it up, um, you should be should be good to go. I would go with, with the Toro or the John Deere. The, the, the way I would decide between those two is figure out which one of them in your area you can get serviced, okay? So like the, the, the deciding criteria should be whenever, I gotta, whenever it breaks, because they're eventually gonna break, whenever I have to service it, because you're gonna have to service it, where can I take it to get the real worked on and where can I get replacement parts? Um, and that kind of thing. That is what I would use as my criteria. So great question. Uh, thanks so much for chiming in. King Khan's in the house says, what's going on? What's going on, King Khan? And Timothy's like, hey, he says, Ron, your picture, your lawn picture looks like artificial turf. Uh, that is intense. Thanks, sir. I spent entirely too much time messing with it. 
Um, so that's that's the look. Believe it or not, you guys always say how nice it looks. When I go out there, all I ever see are all the things that's wrong with it. I'm like, okay, that, I, you know, I scalp a little bit here. This spot is not as good. You know, I'll, it's like anything else. When you look at something all the time, you see a lot of the issues with it uh, versus what's awesome. But I mean, you know, overall, it does look really good and I, I appreciate it. Uh, Rahul Berman's in the house. What's going on, Rahul? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. Appreciate you as always. And then uh, Sanj has a question about watering. It's a good question, especially given the time of the year. He says, which is better, constant watering or random watering? I hear random causes better uh, root growth thoughts. Uh, yeah, so um, so Sanj, the idea is if the lawn, and I guess use this as a qualifier, if your property, if your lawn will, will hold on to the amount of water you're going to be putting down in one watering instance, it's better to water infrequently and deeply, meaning um, let's take an example of Bermuda, right? Bermuda needs a, around an inch of water per week, assuming everything is, um, you know, all, all things being equal. So if you can get that inch of water per week down in a day, like over a couple of watering sessions within a day, um, early in the morning, that would be great. You know, that would be, that would be good. But very, I mean, most lawns, especially like most residential lawns, if you've got any kind of a slope or anything like that, um, you know, it's going to be hard for the soil to take up that much water all in one sitting. So what I find the sweet spot is, is that if you can water twice in the week, you know, maybe you can do um, like a Monday watering and then a Thursday watering and get down to say half an inch of water each time. That's a good sweet spot. Um, that's not, that's still going to allow the, the, it's going to still promote deep roots. Um, and it's also not going to waste water. Cause the last thing you want to do is put try and put a ton of water on the lawn and then have it all have most of it running off. Right. It's only like watering is only good. Putting an inch of water an inch of water on the lawn is only really an inch of water on the lawn if it's actually staying on it. If it's running off, you're just, you know, you're wasting water. So something to consider. Um, as far as, um, I guess when you say random watering, it's, yeah, if you're talking about like watering every day, I wouldn't do that unless you're, unless there's a specific reason, like you're seeding a new lawn or you're installing, new, you just had a new side installed. But as a, as a matter of practice, um, I would water less frequently and heavier than like, you know, five minutes every day. That's That I would not do. Uh, great question, and especially this time of year. That's something that uh, a question that a lot of people um, probably have at this at this point. Um, and as far as something that can help you with watering, uh, Sanj, the thing I was that, that product I was just talking about, Hydrotain, uh, this one here, well, this can cut your watering in half. I mean, it's it's a product that um, that draws moisture from above and below the root zone, and and helps draw water like the moisture that's pretty much in the air and the water and the moisture that's below where the roots can reach, it tries to bring that to the root zone, which is gonna help reduce the amount of water you have to put on the lawn. So it's a cool product. The granular is really easy to apply. So something to consider if you are looking for, you know, another thing to help your watering strategy to help improve, um, improve your lawn, keep it looking nice even in this summer heat, right? All right, Jeremy White is in the house. He says, uh, big bro Ron, let's go. He says, uh, here in Mexico, missing the heck out of mowing, still enjoying my family. Yeah, that's a good reason, man. You get out, and I'm not sure if you're on vacation with the family or if your family is in Mexico, but either way, uh, cool, man. Good that you're getting some time away, and the grass will be here when you get back, man. Just do a high-to-cut reset, and you're going to be good to go. Mexico is actually pretty cool. Like I've been to Mexico City uh, a couple of times, and it's it's the history of that place is actually um, really, really, really cool. You can drive about an hour and a half or so outside of the city and you can get to like the Aztec pyramid. So there's a lot of really cool things to see in Mexico. I'm not sure where you are, but, uh, you know, while you're there, enjoy your time. The grass will be here when you get back. I promise it'll be just fine. It'll be just fine. I appreciate you even being in Mexico, chiming in, in the live stream to come hang out. Uh, JC's in the house. What's going on, JC? Appreciate you. And then we have a first, a new time listener guy. Is uh, Anthony Leakes in the house? Thanks you, thank you, Anthony, for coming to hang out in the live stream. Anthony, I'm not sure if you're just gonna just watch the show, but if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. The earlier you get them in, the easier it is for me to get to them and answer uh, the question. Thank you, sir, for taking some time out of your Friday evening to come hang out with us. All right. C. Martin Jr. says, um, inch of water per week. Better to do one, uh, one watering, one inch or two waterings of half an inch, or does it matter? Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, if you can do one inch uh, and you can get it all down and it can, it'll actually stay on the lawn, sure, go for it. But if, um, like I was just telling um, uh, the gentleman ahead, uh, before you that, you know, splitting it up into two waterings is actually a good strategy too. I've done that and that works, that works pretty well. And it'll scratch the itch, right? Because I mean, some people, very few of you guys that have irrigation systems are going to be able to just run it once per week and just be like, well, I, you know, I did my watering once per week and I'm just going to just wait till next week to water again. So it gives you something also to do, splitting up your watering into two sessions. And, you know, for most people, you'll get a, a really good result uh, doing that. 
All right, uh, Luis is in the house. What's going on, Luis? He says, good evening, Ron. Good evening, Luis. Um, very, that's, you know, that's a really good head of hair, sir. It's a really good, uh, you know, little comb over you got going there. Looks clean, man. Looks clean. I like it. All right, uh, Jeremy has a question about when he gets back from Mexico. He says, should I raise my height of cut when I get back? I was able to put some PGR down, but I don't know if it'll keep it in check. So PGR is not a miracle worker. I mean, you know, in great circumstances, it's going to cut your mowing in half. But if, um, you know, if you're gone for a week and a half and, you're, and you, your height of cut is like where my lawn is, like say half an inch, just under half an inch, like you're going to have to, it's going to be taller when you get back. So uh, when you get back, what I would do is I would, um, it depends on you, Jeremy. If you don't want to deal with the scalp, you don't want to deal with the lawn looking brown, you can just raise the height of cut if you want to do that. Um, some people, a lot of people tend to do that as the season goes on. Like a lot of the advice you hear that people say, you know, as the season goes on, I should raise my height to cut up. It really, you really don't have to do that. Like the grass doesn't, you know, isn't like it's summertime and the grass is saying, hey, it's drawn, it's July, you should you know, mow me taller. It's more around that as heat gets here, the grass grows more aggressively um, and raising it a little bit higher or making it a little bit taller is going to reduce how often you have to mow, right? You can, you can like mowing frequency or, or how often you mow your, your grass is all really, is really based on how tall you're trying to maintain it. The shorter you maintain it, the more often you got to mow. So the lower you go, the more you got to mow. So if it were me, I would just do a high to cut reset. I would just, just, just take the pain, just bring it back down to the height you want um, and just and get it back there. Unless you just want to go taller. It's kind of your call. But if it were me, you're asking what Ron would do, Ron would bring it back into, bring it back to order down to where I want to maintain it and just deal with it looking, um, you know, looking kind of ugly for a week or so, but it'll be just fine. Just mow it, mow it a lot. It'll be fine. Mm-hmm. All right. King Kong has given me a hard time because I can see Ron sipping his tea to this music. Um, oh, you're talking about the intro music for the for the live stream? I do sip my lemonade a little bit, try and get the get try and get the throat a little bit wet before uh, talking for a few hours. But uh, but yeah, you know, I like it. It's kind of chill. I've been thinking about doing another or changing it up because right now it's just a static image. I'm thinking about putting something kind of cool, maybe uh, changing up like what actually shows on there, give you guys something interesting to look at for the three minutes while the show's starting up. I have to think of some ideas and, and work on it. Maybe next week. Maybe I'll have it done by next week. We'll have to see. We shall have to see. All right, B. Gaines is in the house. He's got a question about a product called Protein 600. He says, I'm here tonight. Have you used Protein 600? I have not, B. Gaines. I've not. I've never used that product, so I can't comment on it. I know that in some of the, the lawn care groups that I'm in, people that, that, that have used it seem to like it. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's all I can say. I've never personally used it, so I can't, I can't comment for sure as to, you know, how well it works, or how it doesn't work, but people that use it seem to like it. So if you want to give it a shot, give it a shot. Uh, very, very cool. Great, uh, great question. Okay. Mark Day says, he got a question here. Um, he says, I have some common Bermuda that's made its way into my zoysia. How do I get it out? Um, so there is a hey Mark, there's, there is a selective herbicide I think it's called um, Fulisade or Fulisade. Let me see if I can. Um, uh, I think it's called Fulisade uh, Two. I think is what it's is what it's called. Uh, blah, 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 blah. That's rated for getting rid of um, getting rid of Bermuda in zoysia. Yeah. So fus fusilade. I can't. You know English. Um, my first language, but you think I'd be able to speak it better, right? Uh, this product is rated for that. So let me show you that. This product is, uh, is rated for, let me see. Yeah. Bermuda, common Bermuda into Zoysia. How do you get rid of it? Yeah. So this guy, so this is, there is a product called Fusilade. This one here, um, I think it's, in, I think it's made by Syngenta, I believe. Um, here's the thing with this. I've never personally used this one, but looking at the label for it, the application rates for this are very, very, you have to be, you really gotta be disciplined about this one. Like it's something like three to six ounces per uh, thousand, uh, sorry, sorry, three to six ounces per acre. <laughs> three to six ounces per acre. So if you take the low rate of this product, right? And I'll actually put it in the chat. I don't actually have a link for this, but it doesn't really matter. I'll put it in here for you anyway. Make sure, Mark, make sure you absolutely read the label for this thing like three times before you do it because there are some some gotchas like um that you want to not mow your ideally not have mowed your grass for seven days after you apply it not mow for seven days afterwards there's restrictions around like or around the best time to apply it, best time of year um like i think uh prior like july and august the rates or the recommendations are different so something you got to keep in mind for that but I just put the link in the chat for you to check out. This is the product. This is one product that I know that will that should get that will do that. It's, it's not very many products that can actually target Bermuda and not hurt um, other grasses, but uh, Fusilade Two uh, will do that. 
you again, I can't stress enough, read the label, man. It's super, you gotta really, really um, pay attention to it. The application rate, I think when I did the math on it, is something like 0.07 um, ounces with a gallon or two of water per thousand square feet. So it's, think about that, a tenth, less than a tenth of a fluid ounce per thousand square feet. So very, very little, very, very precise. You have to really be careful whenever you are mixing it and applying it. Um, but that is the one product that I that I uh, I know of that can address that problem. That can get uh, Bermuda um, out of Zoysia. Keep in mind, it's not gonna. It's probably not gonna permanently kill the Bermuda. Um, it will knock it back. It'll it'll what they say call control it. But as far as like getting rid of Bermuda permanently, it's actually really difficult to do. But it, I think for the for the purposes of what you're trying to do, uh, this product uh, should do the trick. But again, I I've said it like uh, three times already, but I'll say it again please read the label on this one. Like there's a lot of gotchas on app, on applying this one that you really got to pay attention to. Even everything from like the, the type of nozzle you use and the pressures that you use um, in your sprayer to apply it, like all of that is spelled out in there. So be sure that you pay attention when you read the label on that one. Great, great, great question. Great question. Okay, so um, uh, Tony uh, Valdez has a question. He says, um, um, Promaxis, um, MEC, a uh, plant growth regulator has Trinexapac ethyl as the active ingredient. Would it work as well as Tnex? Can't say for sure. I've never used it. I would think it would. I mean, I would think it would work as, I mean, it, you'd think it would work as well as Tnex, as, assuming that you're applying it at the uh, the correct rate. So as long as you're you're following the, the proper rate and following the label, you should get a good result, right? Um, you got to forget, remember, like Tnex, um, this product, um, Podium, they are all... Um, you know, they are all um, generic versions of uh, Syngenta's product. I think it's Primo Max. Like that's, that is like the, that's like the brand name of, you know, the, the PGR that has Trinexapac ethyl in it. Um, but yeah, so it should work just fine. I don't, I'm not sure how much of the active ingredient, how much act, how much Trinexapac ethyl is in that one. But if it's the same thing as the Syntinex, you could probably expect the same amount of regulation. But as always, check the label out, Tony, and uh, and see uh, see what it says. Um, see what it says as far as that goes. All right, uh, Lewis uh, Rodas has a question. He says, "What's your um, pre um, preferred uh, growing degree days when it comes to using Tnex?" I don't use um, GDD. I don't, I don't use growing um, degree days, uh, Luis. I just simply apply it once per month. Now I know some, for some people. Um, like gives some people a lot of heartburn, but like here's the thing: I've got like you know right at twelve thousand square feet, and let's say that the let's say that the application of Tnex like landed like or the the the, the it was going to expire, or it was going to come out of regulation, um, you know, a few days um, after or a few days early. Like I'd have to go out and do another application just for that, and I don't want to do it. So it, I it, what I've been doing myself, and I've had pretty good results with, is just once per month. Whenever I start um, at the beginning of the month, which I did actually this morning. Um, early this morning when I got up, um, whenever I do my carbon kit and liquid fert application, I do TNX along with that. And then that's it for the entire month. So I won't apply TNX again until the end of um, July. Uh, and that's that's just how I do it. Now, growing degree days is a better way, a more precise way of knowing, you know, when you're um, you know, when it should be coming out of regulation. But I've just I've just dealt with um just doing it once a month. That that's worked fairly well for me. And I just mow I mow enough that it really honestly doesn't matter. I, I probably actually don't actually need PGR for as frequently as I mow my lawn. But um I like the way the lawn looks with it. I like the like the color, I like the way it looks with it. So that's that's why. Hopefully that helps answer your question. Um I can't tell you what uh, my growing degree day length is because I don't I don't actually do that. But I do see the value in it, and I understand why people would would do that. There's there's something to that. Okay, um, JC has a question. He says, "How much ironite can I use, and how often on tall fescue?" So, uh, JC, ironite is not a product that I've actually ever used. I would check the label. Um, you know what I would use. You know, if I were going to use ironite, if I were going to use a, an, an iron specific product, right? Because you're trying to get the lawn to really pop and get nice and green, right? So let's say, I mean, this around this time of year would be a good time to actually introduce that because 4th of July is coming up soon. You might have family coming over and you want the lawn looking its absolute best. Um, I don't know how long it takes ironite to break down and begin working, but I would I would probably look at it doing it this weekend because you figure the 4th is next weekend. So yeah, this weekend is probably when I would, I would work on getting that down so that it has plenty of time to break down, get in the soil, start making itself available to the grass, and then you start getting that, you know, it's gonna peak and look really nice um, you know, at that, that time of, um, during, during the fourth, again, assuming that's your goal, as far as how often to apply it, I don't know the answer to that. I, again, I've never actually applied ironite to my lawn. Anytime that I want to do uh, liquid iron or like I want to do iron outside of the fertilizer that I put down my normal fertilization, I use something like this, like Turfplex, this guy, 
This has got um, 2% iron in it, I believe, if memory serves me. Yep. Actually, no, I'm lying. It's, it's a, tenth of, a tenth of a percent. But what I, what I use to supplement this is Nutrizolve, which is um, another product from, um, I think I'll knock my golf ball off, um, is another product from Ecologel. Actually, I'll show you it here. I can do that. Um, this is what I actually use for, um, for getting an iron kicker in my lawn. So... Uh, on the golf course lawn store, if you come down here and you go to Nutrizolve, this is an only a micronutrient fertilizer. So it's only got um, iron, manganese, zinc, boron, and copper in it. And I think this is like 3%, 2 or 3% um, iron. So it gives you a nice response. It literally, you can, you can spray this on your lawn a couple of days before whenever, you know, you want to start looking really green. Um, this is what I use. I have never actually used any of the, um, the granular iron boosters. I mean, the, probably the closest thing I've ever used that has iron in it to help turn my lawn green is um, malorganite, right? Like Milo will do it too, but it takes a little longer. I use like a combination of Turf Flex and then also the um, the Nutrizolve, the product I just showed you there uh, to get my lawn to really pop. And as far as how often you can apply that, it depends, right? So you, I apply it every couple of weeks. Um, you can do it monthly, you can do it every couple of weeks. I do it every couple of weeks. As far as ironite, I am, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're great. Great question. Hopefully, it helps anybody else that is um, looking to get their lawn that's super green, in anticipation of having company over. Pretty cool. All right. So Anthony says, learned so much from listening and watching your videos. I appreciate that, sir. I really, really do appreciate that. You know, you might not believe it, but sometimes I get I get like varying feedback on on some of the content. Like most people seem to like it, um, and some people want like want it to be more long form. But when I've tried that kind of content, so like some people say, hey, you should make your videos a lot longer so we can kind of see like you going through everything. But when I do that, no one watches like very much of it, so I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. So uh, I'm glad that you get some value out of it, Anthony. I appreciate you watching, and if I can help with anything, definitely uh, let me know. And guys, in case we didn't realize, don't think I forgot. Don't think I forgot, guys. Tonight, we are um, going to announce the, the, the winner of the giveaway for uh, the one of three hats that is um, that was so generously supplied by um, Josh Habib. Thank you so much, Josh. In addition to that, so we're going to do uh, three giveaways, three prizes. This is going to be the grand prize. It's going to be the last thing. And then the first is going to be Stripe Action stickers. So if you're looking for something to put on your fridge... Um, you know, refrigerator, spreaders, lawnmower, toilet bowl, whatever. <laughs> you got a sticker for that. And if you want the actual logo sticker, this is, these are also brand new. These are these are brand new. Whoever wins one of these, um, only the winner will have one of these, and Josh will have one of these. That's the only people that have them. So these are these are brand new. So this will be another one. And then finally, the grand prize will be the hat. And you guys that were in the live stream last week already know what you had to do to enter to win. So when we get to that point in the show, later on in the show, we will go through and do all of the, uh, give all three of those out. So really excited. It should be awesome. Um, and here's the thing, guys. Remember, you got to be present to win. So if I go and, you know, call, pull your name out of the, use the, the, the comment picker and I, your name comes up, um, and we're going to give you a little bit of time, but you got to be here. You got to be present. You got to be present or we're going to, you know, we'll call some, we'll pass it on to someone else. Okay. So next question we have is from Alexander Thomas. He's about top dressing a product or a, or a process near and dear to my heart. I love it and I hate it so much. And his question is, do you really need to top dress to re use a real mower at a height of three quarters of an inch? Depends. It depends. It depends on how bumpy your lawn is, Alexander. Um, most people can get away with like an inch with a real mower. Depend Again, depends on how, I say most people, right? But it depends on how bad your lawn is. If, you're, if your lawn is relatively smooth, um, three quarters of an inch to an inch is usually doable with a real mower. Um, but if you are, but if it's, if it's bumpy, then yeah, you need to, you know, you may have to top dress it. it. I will tell you this, regardless of whether it's bumpy or not, it will look better at three quarters of an inch if you top dress it. But I, but I don't want, I want to decouple this whole idea of, cause I've got some questions about this here recently too. This whole idea of, um, a real mower and top dressing. Like you must do, you must top dress to have a real mower. That's absolutely not true. It's really whenever you want to go down like to lo really lower heights of cut and you really want that smooth pool table look, that is when top dressing really becomes a thing. So three quarters of an inch, assuming your lawn is reasonably smooth, Alexander Thomas, uh, you should be good to go. What I would do is I would just mow your lawn and just progressively bring it down and if you scalp anywhere, there you know that's it. That's that's as low as I can go. Bring it up a little bit and just maintain it um, from there. Assuming that you you know you got the time to, to cut at whatever that that mowing frequency is going to demand for that height of cut. Um, but no, it, it depends on your lawn. It depends on your lawn. Like Alex's lawn, he could have gotten away. He could have mowed his lawn at three quarters of an inch without top dressing it. But it looks really good now. He's he's cutting it around the same height as me now, around half an inch, and you know it just it looks better. So. The only reason to top dress though, Alexander, just to kind of like piggyback on that, you don't know you didn't ask this, like 
like getting the lawn smooth is one benefit, but that's not the main reason or not the only reason to top dress it. Like as far as like the lawn's ability to um to draw moisture away from the surface, that's a really good reason. Um, you know, like there's a lot of other benefits to top dressing. For me, the big benefit was drainage. Like my lawn used to flood and just stay like a, a pool anytime it rained. After I top dressed it, it just like water goes in, just whoop, pulls it right away from the surface. So it's that, that's something that I absolutely love about having done that. So uh, something to keep in mind. All right. Uh, Jeremy White says, only six likes. What the heck? What's wrong with these people, Big Raleigh? Well, I think that was probably earlier in the live stream, Jeremy, but point made. You know, guys, while I take a sip of my uh, lemonade, if you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button ever so gently, again, it's free for you guys. You don't have to go to the store. You don't have to buy anything. It's an easy way to support the channel, and it gives me a chance to take a sip of uh, my lemonade out of my cup, and I'd appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Uh -huh. All right. So next up, Helmet Ruckus is here. He says, hello, Ron. Happy Friday. Just checking in. What's going on, Helmet Ruckus? What's going on, sir? Thanks for coming to hang out in uh, the live stream. Rohan says it better than I could have says it myself. He says, hit that like button ever so gently. Effortless crazies in the house. What's going on? What's going on? And then uh, Christopher Smith says, watching at work in the OR. That's pretty awesome. I guess it's a, uh, a downtime or slow time between cases. Uh, that's... um." That's a first. I've had people tell me that they were doing it like like watching or listening to the live stream while they were driving. Uh, a lot of people do it while they're mowing. Um, but I, you are the first, Christopher, that has told me that you listen to it while you are in, I guess, oh, I'm assuming it means operating room. But uh, you're the first that's ever done that. So that's that's cool. So uh, very, very cool, man. I appreciate the uh, the dedication and uh, and the support. Thanks so much. Okay, Andy's outdoor lawn care is in the house. He says, what's up, Ron? Dodging rain tonight. And to try to mow three to four inches of rain this week uh, from a drought to soupy soil in one week. Welcome to Illinois. Yeah, I get it, man. I, I like some of that rain. I think most of us here in the southeast in Georgia would like some rain. We got some a few days ago, for like three, four days ago. But I mean, if I could get like a nice heavy rain once per week, that'd be great. So Mother Nature, if you're listening, uh, if you could arrange that in the northeast Georgia area, it would be much appreciated. It'd be really cool. But yeah, th three to four inches is quite a bit, Andy. Um... You know, that's probably more than the lawn can really take up, but it's better than drought. At least you don't have to water, right? So there's there's always that, always uh, always the uh, the silver lining, right? All right, Everless Cray says, do you sell products from my lawn? Um, I don't know. It depends on what kind of lawn you have. I, I think pre pretty much most of the products in the store uh, will work on all lawns. So I would say yes. I mean, the one thing that I definitely sell that would definitely work on your lawn is the soil test kit because this will tell us like which other products to apply to your lawn, um, Everless Cray's. And then things like Essential G and the Carbon Kit, like those will work on all types of lawns, cool season grass, warm season grass. Um, no soil test required for those. Um, but yes, absolutely. Uh, the Golf Course Lawn Store does not discriminate. It uh, We love all grass types, um, especially Bermuda though. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that, hopefully that helps. Okay, uh, Tony Valdez says, should I immediately water in a multipurpose plus since it is supposed to have hydrotain in it? So here's the thing, Tony, I've never actually applied a multipurpose plus. I would check the label. If it does have hydrotain in it, then yes, I would water it in. If you're if you're certain about that, then yes. Um, the hydrotain absolutely needs to be watered in, uh, especially when it's applied in a liquid form to um, to begin working. Um, so, th which is another reason why I really like the granular, although I need to quit saying that because like the granular always gets sold out and no one buys the liquid, right? Um, but, uh, but yeah, if, if it's, if it's in liquid form, which I think the multipurpose plus is a liquid, if it does have hydrotain, you are going to want to water it. You're going to want to water it in so that it gets down, uh, into the soil, into the root zone. So it can begin doing its thing, man. Help saving you money on watering. That's, uh, definitely a thing. Yep. Okay, Joseph Roberts has a question about uh, PGR. He says, uh, PGR question, two weeks in. All right. First application went from 36 to 48 hour cut to a four day cut, clippings at quarter inch. Is that typical results? Lawn looks great. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. So, uh, you know, here's the thing. Some of the things that will, that will influence um, how much or how well PGR works, um, like how much rain you're getting, how much fertilizer, like how much nitrogen you're putting in the lawn, like that will also influence like how much it reduces it. But if you were cutting every two days and now you're cutting every, every, if you're cutting every two to three days and now you're cutting every four days, that sounds about right. I mean, uh, Tnex, uh, you know, most PGRs, they advertise a reduction of about half of what you would normally have to mow. So it sounds like you are, you're right on track. Um, what I would tell you though, is that even if you are on that four day cut, so meaning you can get away with it, what you're gonna find, Joseph, is, is if you can still, let's say you don't mow every two days, right? Cause you don't really have to anymore. But let's say if you can, even though 
four days is what's really required. If you can bring it down to say that three day, it's gonna, it's gonna look beautiful. It's gonna look really nice. Cause really all you're doing then is just knocking the dust off. Just, just, just you're taking just, just the tops off of it. And even though the lawn's got PGR, even though it's, got, even though it's under regulation, it's still gonna look better if you cut it. Like my lawn's got PGR on it and like a crazy person, I still wake up early in the morning because I like the exercise, I'm just like doing it. And I go out and I mow my lawn and it looks really, really good despite um, being cut, you know, practically, sometimes every other day, sometimes every day, um, you know, just depends on how, how I'm feeling. But it, even though you got PGR on your lawn, if you mow, you, you're, it's still gonna look good if you keep mowing it, um, you know, fairly frequently. You can reduce it some, but you know, Keep, keep mowing it, I, I would say that. Don't just like hang up the mower just because you get PGR down. But yeah, your results are typical. Sounds like you did a good job. Sounds like your application rate is, was right. And uh, Joseph, you don't mind, um, if the PGR you used was Teenex, let us know, Ch hit us up in the comments and let us know if you saw any yellowing. I'm not sure if you applied it with any kind of a liquid furt or anything or, or iron, something with some iron and, and nitrogen in it to help um, prevent that yellowing. But let us know in the comments if you don't mind if you added anything with the PGR when you put it down um, to help get the results that you're getting. All right, so Tiffany, uh, Tim, sorry, Tiffany, Timothy Smith is, I, I knew a Tiffany Smith, that's why I jumped to my mind. Uh, Timothy Smith is saying, I wanted to do another top dress and leveling after the fourth, would it be okay or risky? I have a 20 inch true cut, may consider 27 inch uh, to widen the cut and minimize scalloping when going lower on a hill. Okay, uh, yeah, so to answer your question, Timothy, yes, you can top dress your lawn um, after the fourth, that's no problem. If memory serves me, we did Alex's lawn after the 4th of July. I want to say, if I remember correctly, we did his lawn like the weekend after the 4th last year. So it's absolutely the best time. I mean, it's not the best time. I mean, it, you can do it with no problem. The problem with doing it in mid July is that it's mid July, right? So it's going to be really hot outside and it's going to, um, so make sure you have help uh, to help move the, you know, the material around. And I'm not sure if you're going to, if you're going to be doing it or if you're going to, you know, um, bring some sand in and, and just, you know, just just do it manually, but get some help because it, the, the, the heat is gonna be no joke in the middle of, uh, of July, something to keep in mind. There's no risk at all with that. Uh, it's gonna be just fine. The lawn's gonna grow back in actually faster. It's gonna recover even faster than my lawn did because I did mine early um, in June, like late May, uh, early June, and it recovered fine. But in July, it's gonna bounce back that much faster because there's so much heat in sunlight, it's gonna come back in really quickly. Now, as far as your point here about the 20 inch true cut, and going from that to the 27 to minimize um, scalping. Um, yes and yes and no. Um, something to keep in mind too, right? It depends on how you mow your lawn because, how can I, how can I illustrate this? If you have, um, the wider the mower is, right? Let's say you've got like a slope, because uh, you say you do have a, a hill. If you have a slope, where that slope crests, right? So like where it goes from like being a kill to being more level, like I can't really illustrate it here, but let's just say that this is the top of the hill right up here, right? Like if you're mowing diagonally, when you go up that hill with a longer, with a wider, wider height of cut, you're more likely to like high center the mower and cut a little lower in that area. So. Um, believe it or not, like an actually a, a slightly narrower mower, uh, a slightly narrower mower, a slightly wide, narrower track um, will do a better job on those types of areas in a wider track. Like whenever I've, my mower's been down, I've had to borrow the neighbors or I've used um, Alex's mower. Uh, if you go over, um, going over that crest, um, it's more likely to scalp there with a 27 than with a 25, even though it's only a couple of inches, it, it does make a difference. So something to keep in mind, um, I'm not sure how you're mowing your lawn or how it's set up, but just something, make sure that, um, I wanna make sure that you're not um, trying to solve um, this problem with, in a way that may not get the best result that you're actually looking for. But the 27 is nice in the sense that if you got a bigger property, it's going to, um, you know, it's gonna do a lot better as far as just less passes. If you got a bigger lawn, the wider cut looks better, right? Because the wider stripes, right? The wider stripe action always looks, always looks clean, right? And, uh, and it's less, less passes. So, you know, either way, either way it works. I just want you to really think through it and make sure that you're, uh, you're solving the problem in the, uh, the best possible way. Okay, so we have Roberto Campos in the house. He says, me and, my, and a buddy are gonna be leveling soon. Always good to do it with a buddy. You guys might not be buddies afterwards, but always good to have a buddy going into the project. He says, what are your thoughts on skipping out the aeration and just throwing down mason sand and plenty of fur to boost that growth? Are we screwing up? There are people that do not aerate their lawns. I, I will tell you, there's, there's people that, that are gonna do exactly what you're doing as far as um, just throwing down the sand and putting down some furt and you know calling it, calling it good. I like to aerate the lawn because when you do that, a couple of things, right? You're taking, the lawn's already gonna look really bad anyway with all the sand all over it. So um, the, you're taking the chance now, whenever you aerate it, 
to break up any compaction that be might be in the lawn. So any you know any compaction you have, you're gonna help reduce that a lot. And then more importantly, you're opening up voids all throughout the lawn. So when you put that sand down, it's got somewhere to run into. So so the top dressing mix and the and the and the um, your current soil will integrate better versus just laying like a layer on top of a layer. If that makes sense, you see what I'm saying. So if you have like you know clay soil, super clay soil, you just drop sand on it. Um, you know you're like laying a layer on top of a layer versus if you have um, if you aerate it, you're giving, you're, you're creating opportunities for that top dressing mix to work down into the sand and integrate with the existing soil. The only other thing I would say, Robert, Roberto, you're saying about using just masonry sand. What I would recommend, especially if it's your first time, is I you can do 100% sand. That's that's fine. There's people that do that and it's it, they get a good result. Um, like Alex has done that and you get a good result. He got a pretty good result with it. However. Um, for most people, I would say using a 70-30 mix, so adding some organic material um, in addition to that to that leveling sand is is usually what I recommend to get just to get the best possible result because you know sand in of itself doesn't have very much nutrient value. Um, so putting getting like some very nutrient rich um, compost or if you're going to go 100% sand, like getting like a, a, a Ton of, a lot of bags of like essential G or carbon pro G and putting that down um, and then putting the sand down like that's an option too but I would I would I would highly recommend aerating if you can do it like there's a lot of benefits to it one big benefit is that if you have a slope a good question like a good example like with my lawn my front lawn it's it's fairly heavily sloped right um, I aerated the front lawn really heavily in this last this this spring before I top dressed it, and then even though I put sand on it, I didn't have any runoff. I didn't lose any material, even though we got six inches of rain over two days after I finished top dressing. Because if you think about it, all those voids, all those those holes, they give the sand, they give the material something to kind of bite to lock into. So you can also help reduce runoff that way too. So if if you can. Um, I would I would highly recommend um, you know aerating as part of the process. Like to be completely honest, like aerating is not going to feel that bad compared to everything you're about to go through when it comes to top dressing. So I would not skip out and do that. And as far as the, the the sequencing, I would aerate, fertilize, and then top dress. And if you need you need to see that, um, check out the video that I did earlier this year and I think last month early last month. Um, it's called top dressing and over system about top dressing and overseeding. But the thumbnail is going to be like ultimate guide. So if you just go look at like Ron Henry top dressing that video should come up and you'll see the entire process in excruciating detail of how I recommend you do it. I mean, so just, just something to keep in mind. Great question. Good luck on the top dressing job. Take your time. Don't go too heavy, but also watch that video. It's going to do a lot to help you out to get a good result. And then Joseph Roberts says, yeah, his uh, height of cut was uh, three quarters of an inch. Okay. That's, um, that's not so bad. Um, uh, Joseph. Yeah. So that three quarters of an inch, that sounds about right. I'm um, going from every two days, th 33 days to, to every four days. It sounds, sounds pretty good. Okay. Um, so now we have, um, S Bender is in the house asking another question. She says, Hey Ron, happy Friday, everyone. If SMK is in the house, what are your thoughts on using uh, Fusilade 2 to kill St. Augustine in Zoysia? Okay, another question about killing stuff in Zoysia. Um, so if memory serves me, um, uh, uh, S. Bender, um, Fusilade is labeled for crabgrass, but I don't think the label actually specifies um, St. Augustine. Now, here's the thing. Um, a lot of herbicides that kill, that, are, that will target crabgrass will also damage or harm St. Augustine. So it might work, but if I look at the label, I can check the label here. I don't think um, St. Augustine is actually listed on the labels. Yeah, we can actually, I can take a second here, we can actually look at it together. So yeah, this is the label for Fusilade 2. And if we scroll down to grasses, um, it's got a bunch of things, a bunch of do not do's, but if you look here, it's got barnyard grass, a bunch of other types of grass. It lists crabgrass, but if we scroll down, it doesn't actually mention St. Augustine in here, right? So I, I have a hard time believing that Syngenta would leave that out if it was really effective against that. But again, having said that, crabgrass is listed and a, a lot of herbicides that will kill crabgrass will also damage St. Augustine. So it might work. Um, uh, and this, and as far as like the product to use for zoysia to get rid of like Bermuda or to suppress Bermuda, I hate to say get rid of it because you're really not going to get rid of it, but to suppress Bermuda, um, and a bunch of other problems in zoysia, uh, Fusilade 2 is a great option. Um, but you absolutely want to read the label on that one because the, the application rates are super, super low, like super low. Um, especially the way you're going to be using it for just a small area. So just something to keep in mind, uh, Probably worth a shot, but it's 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 um I will I'll reach out to some of my contacts at Syngenta and ask them as well. Um, but again, it's I you know 
it might be a hundred dollar experiment because I because it, I, I have a hard time seeing that they would not actually list Saint Augustine as one of the grasses that it targets if that were the case. But worth a shot, worth a shot um, versus uh, me weeding it all manually, right? But I will uh, I'll take that as a, as a point to uh, to follow up with you on S Bender. I'll reach out and I will uh, get a get an answer for you. Great, great question. All right, uh, Raul Burman has a question now. He says, Hey, Ron. I have primarily Bermudalon. Good job. You're in DFW, Texas. Uh, sides of my house gets less sun. I was advised to put zoysia in that area. Will the zoysia crowd out the Bermuda and change the look of my lawn? Uh, no. So, like, what you're going to end up with is a, mutt, is a mutt lawn in that area. I mean, could the zoysia crowd out the Bermuda given, like, a decade, maybe, like a long, a really long time, yeah. But I mean, one option you could do is um, the side that does not get sun, that's kind of thin, you could install the zoysia and then you could use that same product, that Fusilade 2, as a means to kind of, to knock the Bermuda back. That's that's an option. But as far as like the, the, the zoysia taking over the Bermuda to where it's now, the Bermuda's displaced and now it's only zoysia, um, I don't want to tell you that's going to happen because it's, it's kind of unlikely, kind of unlikely to happen. Um, and, and the only thing I would keep in mind is, you know, depending on how thin the Bermuda looks, one thing you want to keep in mind is that Bermuda and zoysia, at least to my eye, they look very visually different. Like, like they, like if you put them side by side, they look really different. Like I've got two grass plots, planters growing out there with zoysia and Bermuda, and to my eye, they look really different. So you want to make sure that if you're going to go and do, put zoysia down, like ideally, you want to install the zoysia in an area where you can't, you're not going to be able to see the Bermuda part of the lawn and the zoysia at the same time, so it doesn't look kind of off. Um, but yeah, outside of that, uh, it, it, I mean, zoysia will do better in shade than Bermuda will do, assuming it's getting, you know, again, a good five, six hours of sunlight. It should do better than Bermuda, which, which really wants as much sun as possible. And then that same herbicide that I was talking to S. Bender about and the other uh, gentleman about, I think Mark, uh, Fusilade 2, um, that one, that is labeled to suppress Bermuda in zoysia lawns. But again, if you decide to go that route, absolutely read the label. You got to be really careful um, with that herbicide because it just takes very, very little of it, um, you know, to 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 have an effect. All right, uh, JG is uh, has a question about as benefits. What more do you have? We we have a GM 1000, and, and I'm getting old. It's a beast, and Hubs travels for work. I want to find something I can handle to get to keep up with the lawn when he's gone. Um, I guess yeah, as Bender chiming on that. I think I think as Bender has um, a true cut. I think. But um, they can chime in and let you know. But I think the true cut is what they are rolling with. We got Papa Mo's low in the house. What's going on, Papa? It's coming to hang out um, on the in the live stream. Always appreciate you, sir, and always appreciate all the love in on in Instagram. Thanks so much for that. Okay, uh, let's see. And Alex B uh, has a question. It's a great question. He says, "Hey, Ron, which specific products from you um, from the golf course lawn store do you recommend applying lighter?" or heavier than the bag recommendations, or do you stick to the label for most part? Okay, great question. So uh, as far as the um, going heavier than what's on the label, Essential G, like the granular carbon, that one I go a lot heavier than the label rate um, because there's really, there's really no harm to that and it's going to it's going to put a lot of organic material in the, in the soil. It's going to put some biochar in there and I'm just trying to build that up and help improve the quality of my soil. Like if you guys saw that video um, when I had the sprinkler head replaced, you guys saw like how, like I've got a good probably four to five inch layer now of really like dark organic loveliness that the grass is growing in, which is why it looks so good. Um, and that's that's taken, you know, the better part of a year to, 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 to create that and several top dressing sessions too. It's not all, it didn't all happen in a year. Um, so that is one thing that I go heavier with. Um, as far as um, things I go a little bit lighter with, um, when it comes to Turfplex, this one, this product, this um, uh, fertilizer, like the lowest rate is six ounces per thousand square feet, right? That's a tenth of a pound of, of nitrogen is what that is what the label calls for. Um, what I found is I've actually started testing it this, the latter part of this month. I backed it down to four ounces per thousand. So I went just a little bit lighter and I still got a really good response, really good result, great color, not too much growth. So Turfplex is something you could probably go a little bit lighter. Like I know the label rate um, is six ounces per thousand, but you could probably run it a little bit lighter than that and still get a good response. At least in my case, I found that to be true. And then everything else I would apply at the rates that are listed on the bottle. For example, the uh, the, uh, the, the um, 
Carbon kit uh, has a fairly wide application range, like two ounces per thousand, all the way up to I think seven ounces per thousand, if memory serves me. I apply it, or and I also recommend that you guys apply it at the lower rate. Uh, you're going to get more mileage out of it, and you're still going to get a really good result. I mean, if you don't believe me, ask Papa Mo's Low. He's been applying it, um, I believe, at at the rates that I, that I, I say to, you, and his lawn looks great from it. So the only thing I really go heavy on are like the granular carbon products. Everything else I do at rate. Um, Everything else I do at rate or actually lighter. With uh, like when it comes to fertilizer, granular fertilizer, like the Humic Max, that I put down really light. That's at like half a pound per th- or half a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. So I use a lower rate uh, for that as well. But that's Alex. That's largely because I do a spoon feeding program on my lawn. So I'm out there every couple of weeks. Um, um, I, the granular goes down once per month, but then the liquids are going down every couple of weeks. So I don't need to push a lot of nitrogen. I can just I can go lighter and still get a really good result. Great question. Great question. And then Papa Mo's Low says that carbon package is the real deal. Thank you, sir. I'm glad uh, you're getting good results with it. I always, I always look at your, uh, your Instagram posts and uh, your lawn looks, lawn looks really good. So between the carbon package and all the mowing and everything else you're doing, uh, nice work. Very, very well done. Okay, Jeremy White has a question. He says, uh, Big Ron, do you know if Turfplex will cause slight yellowing if not watered in for a day or so? It shouldn't. It shouldn't. I don't water it in. So remember, Turfplex is... Uh, foliar absorbs, which is designed to be taken up by the leaf. So you're you're not actually supposed to water it in after application, um, which is why I also say stick to that rate I give you, that six ounces per thousand with a gallon of water. Uh, that's going to be just fine. Um, and I don't I don't get any yellowing on my lawn from applying it and not watering it in. Just but again, go really light. Now there are heavier rates that are listed on there. There's a rate um, that I think has you putting down seven and a half ounces, and there's an even heavier rate. Um, that uh, is something like 15 ounces or something like that. Like that, like that's a lot. Like if I did that, I'd be hard pressed to put it down that heavy and not put some water on it. Because I, I think you might have a chance, you increase your chances of perhaps burning because remember, Turfplex is a uh, quick release. It does release faster than, um, you know, some other liquid fertilization products. You really don't need to use a lot of it to get a good result. So uh, so yeah, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, uh, Jeremy, as long as you're applying it at the right rate, you shouldn't see any yellowing. Great question though. Robert Rainey is in the house. What's going on, Robert? Uh, holding that high pose after the golf swing. Uh, thanks for coming to hang out in uh, the live stream. All right. Uh, Dwayne Hopkins has a question here. He says, uh, hey, Ron, love the channel. I know you choose not to seed in the fall due to uh, due to need to use herbicide uh, thereafter. Have you heard of or are just allowing the, the rye to die on its own? Um, from heat versus herbicide. Your thoughts? Okay, that's a good question. So yeah, you're talking about overseeding Bermuda with rye in the fall. Um, yeah, I, I tend to not do that. For really two reasons, Dwayne. One, I don't, you're, you are correct. I don't want to spray herbicides on my lawn in like March, April uh, to get rid of the rye. But also, I don't want to have to get out there and mow in the middle of winter. You know, I'm, I'm originally from the Caribbean, so I don't like, I don't like uh, cold weather. Like anything below 65 degrees to me is officially cold, right? So I don't want to get out there and have to mow um, in the winter months when it's, you know, when it's freezing outside. But as far as um, allowing it to die on its own, I, I have not seen that go well. Like I actually got um, um, some pictures from a viewer that was was t- talking to me about his Bermuda lawn, saying that, hey, it's still not greening up, it's not doing well, and he overseeded it with rye, and he didn't spray it out. He didn't spray it out in like um, Mar- in March, April. Um, and even now, here we are like, you know, June-ish, and his Bermuda still, I mean, it's greening up, but it's still not like where lawns that have not been overseeded are. So kind of the luck of the draw. Um, if you are going to do rye, I would plan to spray it out to get rid of it um, in the early spring, if you want the Bermuda to look its best around this time of the year, right? Like allowing the rye to die off, uh, you know, is, um, you know, you're just, you're, it's kind of a gamble. And there's nothing that says that it's all going to die off all equally. Like, I mean, I got some rye that I'm growing in a planter that, yeah, right now it doesn't look as nice or as happy as the Bermuda looks, but it's still growing. It's still, still just fine. So you very well could end up with a lawn where parts of it die off and some of it don't die off and it just looks really bad. So in the end, I would, if you are going to overseed with rye in the fall, I would plan for in the spring that you're going to be putting down, you're going to be spraying out, spraying it out in the spring to get rid of it. That, that's what I would, um, I would plan. I have not seen it. I have not personally seen it work well otherwise. Great question. Okay. Uh, Robert Rainey has a question about irrigation. He says, uh, getting ready for irrigation installed next week. Any tips for the best recovery? Um, depends on how they're doing it. Like if you can get, tr- if they're going to be trenching it, like if they're doing the vibratory trenching method, uh, Robert, then, uh, it really shouldn't take that bad. It shouldn't take that long for it to recover. Like Alex's lawn, 
didn't take that long to recover um, once the, the his, his pipes were pulled through the lawn. Um, as far as like a, a faster recovery, just make sure the soil is healthy. Make sure you're getting, you've got enough nitrogen um, down. Like get if you've not gotten a soil test done, get one done and make sure you've got enough N. Um, if that's the case, the lawn should, given all the heat that we have this time of year, the lawn should bounce back pretty quickly. If you want to speed things up a little bit, a liquid furt, something like turf plex, um, go at that light rate, that, like that six ounce per thousand rate, that is going to help speed things up some as well too, because it's, you know, it's foliar absorbed in a couple of days, you're going to see a response from it and that will help the lawn recover a little bit faster, um, as well. But again, given this time of year, if you're doing it next week, you're going to be in, you know, July, it's going to be hot. It's going to, the lawn should come back really, really quickly, assuming that all your other nutrient levels are where they need to be and, and whatnot. So, and also keep mowing it. Don't stop mowing it just because after the, after everything is done, like that's going to also help stimulate growth too. Mowing helps, you know, drive power that engine to help, help the grass continue to grow. So that's something to keep in mind uh, as well too. Great question. And congrats on the irrigation, man. It's going to be pretty cool. You have to get out there and, uh, and uh, pull hoses and stuff all the time, right? That's that's always cool. Uh, SMJ1978 is in the house. What's going on, SMJ? Thanks for coming to hang out. I don't think I've ever seen you in the live stream before, so welcome if you are new. I may I may have missed you, but uh, if you are new, um, welcome to the live stream. And uh, Effortless Craze uh, has a question about overseeding, I think. He says, I just moved into a house last year and I put down pre-emergent over the winter. Lawn is mixed with centipede, bahia grass, and Bermuda. So you have, you have a true mutt lawn. You got a little bit of everything going on there. It says, my question is, should I aerate and overseed or wait? Um, okay, so, you know, I mean, if the fact is that your lawn has a little bit of everything in it, pro tells me this lawn is not a new lawn. It, it, I mean, I can't see a builder would be putting in Bahia grass, Bermuda, and centipedes. It's probably a lawn that's been around for a while. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to aerate it, if you've not aerated it this year, that's something you absolutely can do. As far as overseeding, I'm not sure what um, what you're looking to accomplish with the overseeding, right? Because um, you've already got quite a bit going on there. I don't know that I would introduce any more seed or anything else new to it um, at this point. If your plan is to like to, to nuke it all, like to do like a renovation, like blow it all away and start over, uh, that could be a thing. But as far as like, uh, you know, adding another grass type to what is already, um, you know, a lawn that already has a couple different types of grass in it. I'm not sure that I, I would do that um, at this point. The one thing I would do is I would aerate. I would aerate your lawn. Like, cause especially now, like the lawn, it's, there's plenty of heat. The lawn's gonna bounce back really, really quickly from it. Um, but that would be my advice. I'm not, maybe I'm not understanding the question effortless craze. If you wanna give me some more context, I can revisit it. But uh, as far as overseeding that, I don't think I would do. Um, aerating, I would do. And congrats on the new house and the new lawn. Very cool. Adam is in the house. What's going on, Adam? Very cool. Thanks for coming to hang out, sir, in the in the live stream. All right, uh, let's see. So Joel um, Ebenezer Paul, Joel Ebenezer Paul says, "Hey Ron, I recently done aeration from Bermuda lawn. Congratulations, um, or I'm sorry. Uh, do you recommend to take the soil plugs or not? Is there any benefit to one over the other? Okay, so." I do not pick up the plugs off the lawn. I don't do that because on my lawn with my soil, the plugs break down. I, there's no need to do it. Like I've, I've aerated my lawn every year for the past six years and I've never picked up a single plug off my lawn, mainly because they just, they just, they dissolve and they break down. Some soil, right? So if you have like um, certain types of clay soil, whenever the plugs come out, they can be really hard like like uh, after they sit and they dry out, they become hard like concrete. They get really, really hard. In that case, yeah, pulling the plugs off the um, off the lawn would be a good idea. So what you can do, Joel, is after you're done aerating, you can pick up a plug, and if you can just pick it up and you can kind of just roll it in your hands, it just kind of goes poof and it just disappears. You know, in other words, if your soil is a little bit more sandy, then uh, then there's really no need to pick them up. I I am not a fan of getting rid of them or pulling them out because here's why. Um, like the soil that's in them, the grass is in there. That's all like organic material, right? So I don't, I don't want to like take all that and throw it out unless there's a really good reason for it. Now, if you have a type of soil that is going to, you know, when you pull plugs out, they become hard in that case. Yeah. It makes sense to get rid of them. But, but for, if you have a sandier soil where they're just going to break down, that's free. Again, that's free, um, free fertilizer, free organic material. Like I can tell you, like uh, when, whenever I had the lawn professionally top dressed, the first time it was top dressed, uh, they aerated the lawn and they didn't, they didn't pick up any plugs. And I, I asked them, I said, is it picking up the plugs a thing? They says, eh, it kind of depends. We don't do it pretty much on, on most lawns. We don't do it. So it's kind of one of those things where if you if your soil type is such that the plugs are going to become hard or they're going to become a problem where they're going to be, take a, they're going to take a while to break down, get rid of them. 
If they're not, I'm a fan of leaving them because it's free organic material. It's for the same reason that I don't bag my clippings or I don't catch clippings whenever I mow. It's free fertilizer. There's no reason to, to pull it all out and throw it out. You know what I mean? So uh, that is my take on it. So the best answer to your question is it depends. It depends. It depends on your soil. It depends on your lawn. But in my case, I, I don't. And on Alex's lawn, we didn't do his either. We didn't, we didn't pull, pick up any plugs either. Okay, uh, Dwayne Hopkins says, second question. All right, Dwayne, you're asking two. You, you kind of hog up the questions here, but we're going to take it. He says, I've never done a soil test and want to do so. When digging samples to send, how do you know where on your lawn to pick for samples? That's a good question. I've never actually been asked that one before. I have about 7,000 square feet and I want an accurate result. Great question. So um, if you've never done one, I'm not sure which one you're going to use. If you've not decided on a soil test as yet, the one I would recommend is the one from my soil. This is the one that I use on my lawn, Alex's lawn, any of my friends that ask me, hey, I want to get a soil test done. Which one should I use? I say, go get this one because it's super easy to um, super easy to use. Uh, the results are easy to understand and you get them back quickly. The one thing you're also going to want to get, uh, Dwayne, in addition to a soil test kit is one of these Mamma Jammas. This is a soil probe. This makes it super easy to get samples, to get really good core samples out of your lawn. As far as how often to do it or how many samples to take, on my back lawn, I will take, I'll do, I'll pick like seven or eight spots over the back lawn, just random, random spots. So I'll pick a couple of spots near the patio, out near the rocks, you know, I'll just, I'll just walk different parts of the lawn and pick multiple samples, go to the front, same thing, swell air, same thing. The more, the more, more cores you can pull, the better. But I, I would say, you know, five to seven um, per area. You see, you have 7,000 square feet. Um, so I don't know. I, I, let's, let's shoot for a goal of a total of 10 to 12 samples over that, right? Over the course of that entire lawn. More, more is better. Once you're done, once you're done getting them, mix them all up, like break them all up. So it's like all kind of like homogenous. It's all like, it's representative of the entire lawn. And then in the soil test kit, I can actually show you this, um, comes with an envelope and instructions, but it's going to come with a couple of things. It's going to come with, um, the, um, deionized water, that and it's gonna come with a scoop. So once you get all the soil mixed up that represents your lawn, you're gonna get a scoop. I take about, about a scoop and a half, one of these, um, and you're gonna put it in this deionized water. In there is the ion exchange resin, that little uh, brown thing you see in there, that's like a synthetic root. It kind of simulates what your grass sees um, as far as nutrient levels. Um, so you can throw that in there, throw it in the envelope, and then mail it out to my soil. And then within a week, depending on where you are in the country, you'll get your results. Um, but yeah, if in your case, as your the specific question you the specific question you asked, um, let's go for ten to twelve samples over you know your course of your lawn. Just make sure that when you do that, you mix it up really well, and make sure you use a clean bucket. So you're using one of these guys to get all your samples. Um, make sure you have a clean bucket. There's nothing else in there. Get all of them in there you know, and then break them all up, mix them up, make it all like, you know, one big that, you know, it's a, a pile of dirt that represents your lawn, then put it in here, mail it out, and then you're good to go. Uh, great question. And you can get both the soil test kit and the probe at the golf course lawn, sir. They're both available and shipping today. Great question. Excellent, excellent question, sir. Okay, Alex B has a question about um, dormancy. He says, uh, Alex B says, uh, Ron, with the unseasonably hot and dry weather in my area this season, I have a question about heat-related grass dormancy. Do you recommend completely stopping mowing once it sets in? So I think if you're talking about cool season grass, um, Alex, yeah, I mean, I think I think um, a lot of the, some of the cool season guys, like uh, like Ryan, some of those other guys, I don't think they I don't think they mow nearly as often once um, like around this time of year. Like if you've got Kentucky bluegrass or um, or rye or any of the or any of the other cool season grasses that tend to go dormant or get stressed during um, summer months when the heat is the highest. Uh, yeah, I mean, make sure you're, you're still putting a little bit of water on it, but as far as like, like slowing down on your mowing, um, yeah, you can absolutely do that with Bermuda with warm season grass. You would not do that. You, if anything, you're going to pick up your mowing frequency. So I don't know what kind of grass you have. I'm assuming by the question that it's probably cool season, but if it's Bermuda, if it's warm season, no, now is the time when you want to be mowing more, not less. If it's cool season, you probably are going to want to back off on your mowing some because it's um, the temps are getting high and the grass is going to go dormant. It's not going to be growing as much and there's no need to add additional stress to it in addition to uh, to the heat. So uh, great question. Grace Ortiz in the house. What's going on, uh, Grace? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. And then up New York Lawn says, thanks for the recommendation. I'll try out Essential G. Somebody uh, recommended me the Humichar from the Andersons, but doesn't have any nutrients. By the way, I got the seven blade Earthwise for the moment. Very cool, man. Nice. Congrats on the Earthwise and congrats on... Uh, going with Essential G. It's a great product. I think you'll like it. It's got the smell of success. I, I will tell you that much. It does have the smell of success. Okay. 
Uh, Troy Ridley has a question. He says, hey, Ron, I tested mixing sand with potting mix. After a rain, I mostly saw mulch on top. Um, I would like to use carbonized PM with sand, but carbonized PM is $25 a bag. Sand only looks to be the only choice. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, carbonized PM, yeah, to do your entire lawn, um, that is going to be more a pricey proposition, right? That's going to be kind of expensive. But I mean, it, Troy, there's no one in your area that can deliver like any kind of a mix, like a 70-30, like a blend, a top dressing mix to you. That would be, I mean, that would be what I would search for um, if at all possible. If not, if you can't do that, what I would say is if you can get your hands on some Essential G or some Carbon Pro G, I would lay that down heavy prior to putting the sand down. That's what we've done on Alex's lawn and we've gotten really good results with it. Uh, but I, I'm just a really big fan of introducing some kind of organic material um, as part of your top dressing pro, um, you know, progress. As far as your, as long as your, your, your process, make sure you do some, um, some organic mix of some sort, at least on, on residential lawns. I know on golf courses, they just do 100% sand, but it's a golf course, right? Like a green is completely different um, to your home lawn. So you, I, would, I would try and get some organic material down if at all possible. Uh, but yes, I definitely agree that twenty-five dollars a bag. If you got a really big lawn, that's going to get uh, that's going to get expensive. It's going to get expensive. Okay, uh, Papa Mo's Lowe says uh, I have to upgrade my ten-year-old Scott spreader. What's a good option that won't upset the wife? Uh, depends. Um, how, what's the dollar threshold? Help me out here, Papa Mo's Lowe. You can give me all the information I need. What's the dollar threshold at which point wifey's going to get upset? Um, I will tell you, I like the Earthway. Like I'm a big fan of the Earthway spreaders, mainly because. Um, they are, uh, I think they're, they're a good blend of what I would consider like prosumer, prosumer um, uh, spreaders. Um, the nice thing about the Earthway is that you got the airfield tires, you got the bigger hopper, and probably one of the biggest reasons is that because like, I guess it's considered more of a commercial grade type spreader, like any products that you, like a lot of the commercial grade products you buy are actually gonna have a, a spreader setting for it on the bag. Whereas like if you look at uh, like essential, like not essential G, but if you look at like, um, like any of the Lebanon turf fertilizers, there's they're not gonna have Scots on there. They're gonna have like, they'll have an Earthway, they'll have like the Lesco, they'll have a bunch of other ones, um, but they're not gonna have um, the Scots. So I, I like the Earthway mainly because it's it works well. They're pretty much bulletproof. They Outside of like the cotter pin, um, after several years that breaking and having to replace it, I mean, they work really, really well. Um, and the one I would go with is the Earthway 20, a uh, 50p. That is the one. That is my jam. That's what I go with. That's what I like. And I'll put a link here for you in the chat. This is what I would go with. So uh, let's see. At uh, Papa Bo's Low, that one. And they go for. Let me see. Earthway 2050p. Yeah. So and so they go for around 139 dollars. Sometimes a little bit cheaper depending if they're running any kind of a sale. That's the one I would go for. It's a good. It's good value for money. Not too big. Easy to store. And most importantly. Uh, there's settings for it on a lot of like some of your nicer fertilizers they're gonna have settings for it. So that's that's another reason why I would do that one. Uh, great question. And hopefully it passes the wifey test. If not, do not blame me. Do not do not call up the, the live stream and say, Ron said to, you know, this is the one I should get, dear. Don't do not don't bring me into it. I don't wanna, I don't want to be getting in trouble. I'm just I'm just offering advice. What you do with it is your business. All right. Um, Michael R says, uh, the typhoon. The Typhoon or Cyclone uh, 2.5 battery backpack sprayer. So you're asking the Typhoon versus the Cyclone. I have not tried the Cyclone 2.5, so I can't say. I have tried the Cyclone 2 and the Typhoon 2, and I like the Typhoon better. So I, I, if I had to rate them, if I actually had to rank them um, from a standpoint of like, um, you know, like pressure and just the ability to make like your life easier when it comes to spraying stuff, spraying like products. I would actually go Cyclone. I would then put um, the Chapin above it because I've actually I had the Cyclone for like a day and I didn't like it. And I took it back. Um, I would do I would go Cyclone and then Chapin because the Chapin actually um, at least the then the the, the the new Cyclone may be higher pressures, but the, at that point at that time the um, the Chapin had higher pressures. I liked the, like how it worked better. And then like above both of those by quite a big margin is the Typhoon too. So the Typhoon is the one that's the Mac Daddy. It's obviously more expensive, um, but if you can spring for it, that's the one I would go with. I will say that the, the build quality of the Cyclone is better than that of the Chapin, but from a standpoint of a spreader to use on your lawn and it, you know, having supporting higher pressures and um, I think getting a better result, I like the Chapin more than I do the Typhoon, so than, than the Cyclone, but I like the Typhoon better than both of them by a huge margin. Like the Typhoon 2 is, uh, that's, that's, that is a really, really, really good sprayer. Like FZ spray, if y'all are watching, Good job on that sprayer. I really, really, really like it. 
good good job. The 2.5 is supposed to be supposed to be the best of both worlds too, because you get like multiple. You get like uh, whereas I only have just like the dual pressure. I only got like 70 psi and 115. You got a bunch of different spreader settings or different uh, spreader settings you can go to, which is which is kind of cool. I don't know how often you'd really use it, but cool to have it just in case you need it. So yeah, if it were me, Michael, um, no doubt I would go. Um, Typhoon ver, uh, over the over the cyclone. All right, uh, Grace or uh, so LG's in the house. LG, what's going on, man? Thanks for coming to hang out in uh, in the live stream. And uh, let's see who else we have here. So John D saying my hey, Ron, my Friday is always busy, but just love stopping by to support the channel. I appreciate that, sir. I know the live streams can go on for a while, but I appreciate you guys stopping in, even if it's for just a few minutes, just to say hi, just to harass me, give me a hard time, ask me questions that I can't answer, and then just cut up and have a uh, a great time. Todd W is in the house. I'm gonna try and pronounce it, Todd. Please do not butcher it. So Todd Warizniak. I think I got close. I think I got close. He says, hey Ron, long time no talk. Hope all is well. I'm hanging in there, sir. Hanging in there, not bad. This is Buffalo, New York in the house. I love when the neighbors walk by and argue with each other over whether the lawn is real or fake. That is pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool that, that when you, you're definitely doing it right when you're at the point where they're asking, they're arguing with themselves whether it's real or fake. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You got to share tips though, man, Todd. Don't, don't like just let them think that. At some point, you know, just, just do like a random lawn walk while they're like, you know, arguing over the lawn and, and you know, maybe they'll strike up a conversation. You can share some tips. They can, you know, help improve their lawn. But yeah, it's not, it's not an uncommon thing. I, um, Whenever, whenever I get a new like UPS or FedEx delivery driver, every now and then I'll see them and they'll actually step out and they'll actually, they'll actually, I've actually watched them before them step out and they'll walk on the lawn and they'll take a step and they'll actually stop and they'll step off the, off the lawn and step back on it again. So I'm guessing that it just because it feels really soft, I guess they step on a lot of lawns. Uh, but yeah, it's always cool. It's always like one of the best compliments when someone is arguing over whether your grass is real or fake. Okay, Up New York Lawn, it says, uh, what about the bigger Scots one? Yeah, so there's the Scots Deluxe Up New York Lawn. That one's a decent one. I mean, I've not used it personally, but just looking at the build of it, it looks like it's built a little bit better than the Deluxe. I think it's called the Scots uh, Elite. But again, for the same reason, it's you're not gonna find spreader settings for it for a lot of the, like, you know, the prosumer, some of the nicer, um, I hate to say nicer, but some of the some of the more professional grade fertilizers or products, like they're not gonna have the Scott spreader settings on the back. Like I, I had to go through and actually do like the calibration um, for Essential, I think, I think Essential G there is one, but for um, like Humic Max and put that on the website in the golf course lawn store so you guys that have Scott's um, would know what to set your spreader to because uh, Lebanon does not put Scott's on uh, their bag. Okay, uh, Keon Castleberry has a question about rotary scissors. He says, do you think rotary scissors are worth purchasing as I have a fence line that I'm trying to match with the rest of my yard? In that case, they, they could have some value. I, I don't own one, I've never actually used one, but like the lawn tools, I watch um, watch those guys use it. They appear to do a really good job. Like I watch um, I watch those guys run it uh, against their, they have like, things like a wood fence, they run it against that and it does a really nice job. It looks, it looks pretty much like it's been real mode, right? So that is one benefit to it. Um, the the downside, and I think that they even say this in their videos, is that they're loud. I mean, they're like really loud. So it's something to keep in mind. Like whenever you use it, you might want to do it like in the middle of the day, so you don't make the neighbors too mad if you do it early in the morning. Um, but it's, it's it's up to you. I would go take a look at the Lawn Tools uh, YouTube channel because they've done um, some videos on rotary scissors. Uh, you can watch them using it, and they'll give you the pros and cons, and then you can decide for yourself. But as far as like getting a better cut that looks like a real mower that's probably gonna be your best option. It's gonna do a better job than a string trimmer, if that's your goal. But just, just kind of know what you're getting into, and their video is probably one of the best ones that I've seen that kind of like outlines the pros and cons of, uh, of rotary scissors. So, so definitely check that out. Um, let's see, and then Todd says, oh, I forgot to say, go Falcons. Man, I like, and being in New York, you still support the Falcons? You know, I gotta tell you, the Falcons are a hard team to love, man. They are, being any kind of an Atlanta fan is a hard team to love. You know, the Hawks, I'm not sure if the Hawks are still in. I, saw, I, I don't even want to watch because I don't want to get my hopes up. You know, after, this, after the, um, the Super Bowl, I just, it's, it's, uh, I just, I've, I've lost faith. I've lost faith that we can actually win a championship. All right, uh, Lawn to Learn says, Ron, my man, Celebration Bermuda here. What's going on, uh, Lawn to Learn? Uh, thanks for coming to hang out. Always fun, always fun. Um, up New York Lawn, he says, uh, come on folks, one dislike, what the hell, smash the, the like button, it always helps. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for that uh, up New York lawn. Hey man, you know, there's, there's people that are fans, there's people that are not fans, but even the people that aren't fans are fans because they're taking time out of the day to dislike, right? So still love you guys anyway. I really appreciate it.
Okay, we got a super chat in the house from Andy. Thank you so much, Andy. Super chat, Garcia. He says, just for no reason, other than just Andy saying uh, he wants to support the channel. So I appreciate that, Andy. Looks like you got a cruiser. I don't know what that is. That. Is, it a, is that a Honda? It's like a, a Honda a motorcycle. I'm not sure what that is. It looks like. Look, you're on, on your bike. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate the support. Always, always like that. And uh, Lawn to Learn says, Raw, my man, I've gone half an inch on the Greens Master 1000. It looks horrible. Um, I've been cutting every other day at half an inch for almost two weeks. It's very bare. Should I feed it or just go back to one inch? Okay. Uh, so a couple of things we want to check here, Lawn to Learn. One, is your Greens Master sharp? First thing we gotta check is it sharp, right? So make sure that you can cut paper with it. Check it, check the um, the reel to bed knife tolerance, make sure you're cutting paper. If that's the case, if that's the case where it is sharp, uh, it's gonna take a little bit of while. I mean, you said you went from half an inch, you went from an inch to half an inch, that's a pretty big change. You know, I would give that a couple of weeks before I expected things to start looking decent. So depending on how long it's been, you know, you may not have been patient enough. Um, and as far as feeding it, you know, if you, you know, if you have not, get a soil test done, make sure that, you know, you're, you're getting, giving the lawn enough nitrogen, but if the lawn was looking really good at one inch, um, like, it's not like you just cutting it at half an inch is going to, like, now there's not enough nutrients at half an inch when there was enough at one inch, if that makes sense. So I think it's really, um, either a combination of a couple of things. One, uh, the mower is not sharp, because that will make a difference. That will make a difference of, as far as, like, the quality of cut and also how it looks, the appearance. And then second, um, this it just you have to just keep cutting it, man. You have to keep you have to stay on it. Just keep cutting it, keep cutting it. If you can, if you can mow it, you're cutting it every other day. If you can pick up your mowing, fre mowing frequency even more, that could help. Because I always I always tell people like you know half like three quarters of an inch is the sweet spot for real mowing in my opinion. Like three quarters of an inch is a good height of cut to not have real mowing mess up your life. Once you go down to like half an inch, you're really on that every other day during this time of year. If you're not using PGR you know, really, you know, every day or every, like maybe like two days in a row and then a day off and then two days in a row and a day off, you're really going to to pick up your mowing frequency a lot um, this time of year if you're cutting at half an inch. So I, I would try that launch to learn. I wouldn't give up just yet. I would, I would, um, I'd, you know, pick up your mowing frequency, make sure your mower is sharp. Um, and then if you decide that half an inch is not for you, go to three quarters, like split the difference. Don't go, don't go back to a full inch because three quarters of an inch actually looks pretty awesome, right? It looks really good. So I might split the difference and go from half an inch to three quarters of an inch. And that's a lot easier, frankly, to live with, uh, than half an inch. Half an inch is a serious commitment, um, to get the lawn looking good, um, at that height of cut. Hopefully that helps. All right. Donnell Burrell is in the house. He says, uh, "What's up, Ron? Lawn Academy in the house. What's going on, Tanel? I always like to I always like to see you in the in the live streams." He says, "What is your beat? Uh, the summer plan for Bermuda? I heard you can use a 0025, so a high potassium and hydrotain fur to help beat the heat. It, it can't hurt. Um, potassium definitely helps with water with water movement throughout the grass. Um, so yeah, using a fertilizer." with some potassium in it makes sense and hydrotain also makes sense. I have never tried that combination you're talking about there, right? Where we just go through and just slam along with just a lot of potassium. Um, it could work. I mean, the, that's that's somewhat close to the Yard Mastery stress blend. Like there's there's 7020, I think if memory serves me is what it is. Like that's that's um, a fertilizer that people use and get good results with. I might try that. I mean, you, you can give it a shot. Like I, I am not really switching things up. I'm still going to maintain Humic Max. Um, and then spraying Turfplex along with the uh, Miramichi Green Carbon Kit. That's just what I'm gonna do for my plan. And I've also already got Hydrotain down. Like Hydrotain is already down on the lawn. So um, so that, I think that I agree with. The, the high potassium for it, I've never tested it, so I can't say for sure, but there are some merits to it because there are fertilizers that are, that are specifically designed um, with like high heat and, and stressful times of the year in mind. So give it a shot, give it a shot. Let me know how it works out. You know, I mean, it can't hurt. Um, you know, this this would be the month to do it, right? It's gonna be kind of hot this next coming month. So if, if you wanna try it out, this would be the time to uh, to go for it. But I've never actually tried it, so I can't tell you what kind of results uh, you would get. But as always, I appreciate you asking the question and hanging out in the live stream. All right, R. Reed checking in from Stone Mountain, Georgia, not too far down the road. Thanks for coming to hang out, R. Reed. The lawn is looking on point, man, in your thumbnail. I like it. It's looking clean, some nice stripe action. Good job, sir. Looking really good. Yeah, and then uh, S. Bender is confirming that, yeah, she do does in fact have a True Cut C27. Uh, very, very cool. All right, so the mad scientist, Cedric's in the house. He's just checking the mad scientist. No questions this evening. Turf's up for down stripe action forever. 
and peace. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome, awesome uh, comment. Let me get down here and take some of, the some of these super chats. Um, we're doing a bad job about that. So first, Andy has one, another one. Super chat. He says, Let's hey, see. Ron, a Catula, Georgia, uh, didn't know to use pre-emergence and have been fighting spotted spurge in my Bermuda. Best herbicide that won't leave brown spots. Huh. Um, so you can use spectricide. You can use this one, but it depends. Where are you? You're in Georgia. See, the, thing, the problem with spectricide, the one I'm recommending for you, this guy here, um, Andy, is that really you don't want to be spraying this when temps are over 90. So if you can pick this up, you can this this will work against spurge. If you can find a couple of days when you know the temps are going to be in the 80s, uh, you can go with this. Like this will target spurge. This will um, this will work against it. And what I've also used um, in the past that that definitely will take care of spurge is a combination of dismiss and speed zone. But that is going to yellow your grass. So that's, that that fails the one criteria you said. Hey, I want spurge gone, but I don't want yellow grass. So. I can tell you something that's definitely gonna kill it, but it's gonna it's gonna yellow your lawn. The, another option that's a little bit lighter, might take more than one application, is the spectricide. But with that one, you really wanna be careful. Don't apply it if temps are over 90 degrees, which in Georgia, it's kind of hit and miss, right? We have some times when we're well in the 90s and some days we get a stretch where it's a little bit cooler. So go down to Home Depot, pick that up if you can, and just let's monitor your weather and see if you can find a couple of days when the temps are gonna be lower, and then roll with that. That's what That is what I would do. And that's the, the most economical way of um of doing that of taking care of spurge and spurge spurge stinks you want to get on top of that now if you can because it's it's not a fun uh problem to deal with let's see we got some other super chats here one from ben it says uh thanks for the uh quality informative content and all the time for the live stream i'm going to i'm going to the golf course lawn uh even even in the woods uh the inspiration helps uh thank you so much ben i really appreciate it. I appreciate you guys hanging out and uh just asking the fun questions and we just have a great time uh, talking, right? And then Alan C., uh, another super chat. Super chat. He I says, uh, really appreciate the channel and all the help. You're very, very welcome, sir. Uh, thank you so much for uh, all the love and support. So now the hardest part whenever I scroll down to get the super chats is finding where I was. Okay, I think uh, I think we're, we're, we're back here. So Todd is saying, stop over some time up uh, up to, uh, to mow my lawn. Happy to show you the mower and talk grass. Uh, yeah, as long as you got a Falcon shirt on, Todd, we can probably uh, we can we can probably arrange that. But no, none of this Bill stuff. We gotta have you know you gotta wear a Falcon shirt. You gotta wear that uh, Dirty Bird shirt. Okay, uh, Rahul, Rahul Berman has a question about um, weeds. He says, Hey Ron, I have another question about identifying some non Bermuda grass in my backyard. I emailed you a couple of pictures. Please help identify it and how to get rid of it. Thanks. I'll check my uh, email when I get off the live stream, uh, Rahul, and I'll get a, get an answer for you best I can. So probably one of the best ways to figure out um, what a weed, what kind of weed you're dealing with in your lawn is your local or most local extension offices, at least Georgia does anyway, um, most of them will have um, on their website a picture or a section that has a lot of the most common weeds for your area. And it's got pictures of it. So you can simply go on there and it'll tell you like, you know, you can just match what the, the picture to the weed you have in your lawn. And it'll tell you what um, what kind of weed you're, you're dealing with. So if you are in Georgia, you didn't say, but if you're in Georgia, I know that UGA has one. Um, they have they, like they will have um, you know they have that on their um, on the extension office website. So just search, just search for like again if you're in Georgia, um, like you know, Northeast Georgia Extension Office or U University of Georgia Extension Office, and then um, like weed identification or something like that. But, but throw that into Google, something along those lines, and it should take you to a page or present some pages with pictures of weeds that will help you um, figure out what's going on with it. But I, I will check your email and pictures um, after the live stream and I will get back to you. We'll do it. We'll definitely do it, sir. Thank you for the question and uh, the email. Um, LG says, uh, hey Ron, how is the lawn recovering after the Amazon, after the Amazon fiasco? Uh, it's doing well. Um, so um, Austin came out, he repaired the lawn, he did a really good job. If you guys saw the Instagram story, not really story, but the Instagram, like small video on that, he did an awesome job um, repairing it. Did as little, did very little damage to uh, as little damage as he could to fix it. Uh, the patch job that he did looks like the uh, the we looks like looks like it's it's holding, which is good. And um, hang on here, I'm just responding to someone. Um, yeah, so it, the, the the patch job that he did looks like it is working out pretty well. Um, so that's good uh, because I was a little bit worried about it. Um, and then as far as the other parts along that I still have the top dress to fix, the little rut areas, I'm probably gonna wait till after the 4th of July to do that. Uh, so 
a couple of weeks from now is when I'll actually fix those. So the lawn's recovering nicely. That the good thing is this time of year, there's plenty of heat and, you know, to be in, in Amazon's defense, they did come through, they did, um, you know, pay for the damages. So, you know, you can't, you, you know, anyone can make a mistake. Anyone can, you know, you can run over someone's lawn. I don't know how they managed to do it three times, but, uh, you know, good on them. They came through and they did take care of the cost of the repair. So, you know, you can't, you know, you, you, you everyone makes mistakes. I make mistakes. Everyone does things wrong at times. Um, but you know, they definitely handled it. Um, in the best possible way. So I can't, you know, I can't can't throw too much shade, but I still question how, like, you know what, about, it's bad about that. I could see the one where he's backing in. When you're backing into the lawn, I could see that because it's a big truck because you can't really see those are long. But when you're driving out, like, why you got to get me on the right side too? You got to get me on both sides, really? You know, just it almost seems spiteful. Might be like a, a viewer that doesn't like me or something that works for Amazon. Could have been a hit job, LG. What do you think? Might be, right? All right, enough goofing around. So let's get back to your questions here. Um, Taylor Ursu says, because of my clay soil, I have shallow roots, Compa um, uh, suggestions. Um, yeah, so I would, use the key word there you said, Taylor, is compaction. So if you've never aerated your lawn, this is a prime example of how aeration can help with that, right? I mean, it's not going to turn, it's not gonna magically transform your clay soil, but hollow tine aeration, like mechanical aeration, does do a lot to break up compaction if you do a good job at it, right? So if you just if you do a light like aerating pass, it's not going to do a whole lot. But if you make passes in multiple directions, so um, we'll use the soil test kit as our um, lawn. So as long as you make your your passes in like you know lengthwise across the lawn and then come back like this, so you like basically overlap to make sure you get like lots of good coverage as far as knocking holes in the um, in the lawn. Uh, that should do a lot to help break up compaction and, and it will help improve the, qual the quality of your grass. The one thing I will tell you also is that if you're gonna do that, if you are gonna take my advice on um, uh, aerating your lawn and you have an irrigation system, make sure you mark the sprinkler heads before you do that, okay? Make sure you go through and mark the sprinkler heads in your lawn prior to um, prior to going through and, and aerating the lawn. That's the only thing that's, I'd say. There's really no negatives to uh, to doing it other than like, you know, the like the feeling of riding a really nasty bull that's trying to kill you when you're uh, when you're aerating it. But uh, but yeah, that that should help. Great, great question. Moro Marcillo is in the house. Uh, thanks so much for coming to hang out, uh, Moro. And then Lon to Learn saying, if you've never mowed overgrown in St. Augustine, you are missing out. Man, no grass looks better. Uh, all flat topped out. I could see that. I mean, Alan's lawn looks pretty cool when he mows it. I, I will say that St. Augustine, if you like that look, if you like a taller grass look, St. Augustine does look really good. So does fescue. Like any any lawn, I mean, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of any grass that when it's mowed properly, like I don't like the way it looks. Like, yeah, I mean, like tall fescue and St. Augustine may not be my preference. I like that, that shorter tight look, but it does look good when it's mowed and it's all nice and like it's like flat top, like you're saying. It does look really good, Alonso. I gotta, I gotta hand it to you. That's that is a true uh, statement. Okay, Ben is talking about um, the water bill. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. He says I got the water bill for germinating six thousand square feet Reno from scratch. Twenty eight days. Um, twenty eight days. Four twenty minute cycles for three zones. With each uh, with three zones, each on a tripod heads made the seed and uh, the seed and invert seems cheap. So okay, so Ben, how are you, how are you gonna do this like that, man? You said you got the water bill, but you didn't tell us what the water bill was. You got you gotta let us know, man. You can't leave us hanging. But I, I will tell you that is true, right? Like what I said in um, my first video earlier in the season on overseeding, like the one uh, that has like a bag of Arden fifteen in it. Um, I said that the, really when you are thinking about overseeding or even seeding a lawn from scratch. Like watering is a huge, hairy, big part of, of doing that, right? It's, it can cost as much or more than um, than the actual seed and fertilizer by far. You know, like on my lawn, it was um, it was five hundred and forty dollars um, for doing the back lawn, and then the front lawn. Um, I forget what that bill was, but it was it was, it was expensive too. So it's it's expensive, right? The seed, like Arden fifteen, like twenty five pounds of it is like four hundred bucks, and then you know the watering was almost double that. So. Just something to keep in mind whenever you decide you're going to go through and um, and do your lawn. Um, it's something to uh, just just you know, watering is a big deal. Watering is a big, a huge part of um, of of the seeding project. Okay, Mazama Blue's in the house. What's up, Ron? Lemonade time. Type the like button, everybody. Thank you, Mazama Blue. I do need a sip of my lemonade. So if you guys are, are new to the live stream, we got 140 or so in here right now. I appreciate you guys hanging out. If you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button ever so gently. It's gonna give me a time to take a sip of my lemonade and it's free for you guys, free work for you guys to support the channel, sends good vibes to the algorithm and I would really appreciate it. So if you guys wouldn't mind doing that, I would uh, most appreciate it. Mm-hmm. All right. 
Great question. I'm all freshened up. Throat's all good to go now. Okay, Rahul says, does shorter grass require more water? Say two inches tall versus half an inch uh, tall. Now, I guess in theory, taller grass, because you're shading the soil more, it should hold on to moisture a bit better than shorter grass. But just saying that it's gonna be a ton, a huge difference, um, Rahul, um, I've not found that to be the case. But then again, my grass has always been short, relatively short, right? Like last year, I maintained it at three quarters of an inch. And then this year it's at half an inch and then before, or just under half an inch. And then before that, it's been around the same thing, an inch to three quarters of an inch. And I've watered it pretty much the same amount all the time. But yeah, it may, it does make sense that if you are mowing a little bit taller, that is going, especially during summer months, that is going to help the soil hold on to moisture than if you're mowing it shorter. But if you're mowing it short and it's also really tight, like my lawn is very, very dense, it's very tight. Like that tent, that dense canopy also does a lot um, for keeping heat, keeping the sunlight away from the actual soil. Um, you know, so... Um, in theory, yes, but I don't. I haven't seen a huge difference um, one way or uh, one way or the other. Great, uh, great questions. So we got a super chat in the live stream. We got to come down and get this from Mr. Josh Habib in the house. Let's see what Josh is saying. Super chat. It says, "Thank you so much, Josh. I really appreciate that." He says, "Happy Friday, Doctor. The ADSGN contingency is here. Um, ADSGN. Okay, so you went. You went and found some um, of the." Um, of the greens great fertilizer then. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Side note, backyard has dollar spot, no surprise, all the rain a week ago, and I conveniently forgot to throw down Caravan uh, G on the backyard. Life is good, bud, cheers. Yeah, man, no worries. Um, yeah, and if you have, if you, you're sure it's dollar spot, Josh, you're not gonna wanna use Caravan G, you're gonna wanna use um, Headway G because um, if memory serves me, Caravan G has got a zoxastrobin in it, which I don't believe is labeled for dollar spot. You need propiconazole for that. So if you if you your sure it's dollar spot, which I could be, but I mean as much nitrogen you have in your lawn, I you know it could be, but I kind of kind of doubt it. Um, but if it is that, if it is in fact that, you're going to want to get Headway G, um, not Caravan G, because um, it you know it actually has Headway actually has the active ingredient that will target. Um, that will target dollar spot. Okay, and if you need to get Headway G, um, Josh, assuming you don't already have a bag, so I know you, you like to say stocked up, um, at Josh Habib, there you are, you're right there. Um, that is um, Headway G. That's what I would go with for uh, for uh, dollar spot, if in fact that is what you have. If you're absolutely positive, yeah, you got dollar spot in your lawn, that is what I would roll with. I would go with, I would bring out the big guns, man. Bring out the Headway G, bring out the Headway G. Okay. Uh, the next question we have, Lawn Master's in the house is, uh, the Lawn Master has arrived. Okay, Lawn Master. You know, if you're gonna have the name Lawn Master, we're gonna, at some point we're gonna have to see pictures of your lawn. I'm gonna see pictures of your lawn for you to have the name Lawn Master. That's quite, that's quite the title, sir, but uh, you know, we'll let you roll with it. Okay, so uh, Moro Mercil has a question about nuts edge control. He says, Ron, how long after applying a nuts edge control, i.e. sedge hammer, can you mow? Uh, also, is it too late in the season for a secondary try, um, a second try at overseeding with Arden 15? Um, I would look at the label, um, Moro, for Sedgehammer, I'm not sure, off the top of my head, I, I don't know, but it, it, the thing is, for, for that, for any any um, herbicide that is that is um, taken up foliarly, right, to where you want, where it's absorbed by the, by the foliar of the grass, you want to give it a couple of days. You don't want to, like, put it down and then go and mow, like, right after. In most cases, a few days is, um, is good. Um, unless you're dealing with that one, that one, um, like, uh, exotic, uh, herbicide, like the one, uh, is it, I keep saying this name, it's either fusillate or fulisate or however you, however you pronounce it. The one that's designed to kill Bermuda in Zoysia, like that one, according to the label, they want you to wait like a week, seven days before and like seven days after. So they want like a long period of like undisturbed, like the grass being all happy, um, growing actively when you spray it and to not, you know, to, to get the best result out of it. Um, so check the label for such hammer. Uh, a couple of I would wait at least a few days um, before mowing after putting it down. Uh, if you use something like Image, uh, you can you can still mow because Image just you have to water it in. It's 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 mode of action is different. Like how it, how it attacks um, the nut sedge is different to sedge hammer. So you know if you're doing something like Image, you can mow you know next day if you want after you water it in. But sedge hammer, I'd give it some time. And as far as is it too late in the season for a second try at overseeding with Arden 15? No, not really. We still got plenty of heat. Um, what are we in July? We're about to start July here next week. So yeah, you still got plenty of time to get it to germinate. The thing you got to realize more, and I can't, I can't un, like underplay this enough um, or overplay this enough is um, the amount of water you're going to need to put down. Like it's, it's getting hot in Georgia. So you're going to be on at least, you know, three times a day watering 
for three weeks. You know, that's going to be, just think about that because it's going to be, that's going to be an expensive proposition uh, to get the Arden 15 to grow. But I mean, yeah, it will still grow in now. No problem. It's still going to germinate um, as long as you can keep enough water on it uh, to keep it happy. If you want to give it a second, second shot, by all means, go for it. Uh, just, just know that you're going to have to put a lot of water on the lawn to keep it, to keep it happy and get it to grow in nicely. Okay, uh, Daryl Daryl Tunstall is talking about this. He says, uh, "Ron, my neighbor used his core uh, used his cores from his aerator project for his soil testing. Do you recommend that?" Um, let me see. Cores from his aerator for his soil testing. Could you do that? Uh, yeah, I guess technically, yeah. I mean, I mean, as long here's the thing I would say about that: if the air, you want to make sure the aerator was clean before you before you started doing like before you start aerating your lawn. Like that's one thing I, I don't really talk about enough. If you're renting an aerator like Home Depot or any of those other places, most places do a pretty good job of making sure it's clean before they give it to you. But if not, make sure you hose it off properly. There's no like, you know, anything you're bringing from the lawn that it may have been on into your new lawn. And yeah, I guess technically you can use the cores um, from aerating uh, to get to get plugs. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's technically the same thing as what this is doing is doing, right? You're pulling plugs out. You can pick some of those up from different spots of the lawn blend them together and then use that for a sample. You could do that. I've never actually done that, but I can't see why, I'm trying to think. I can't think of a reason why that would be any different to what we're doing with this. So yeah, I think it, I think it should work just fine. Uh, huh. Yeah, if you're doing them, doing them at the same time, why not? It's a good, good idea. Okay, uh, Lon to Learn says, oh snap, alpha in the zoysia. Oh, you're talking about Bermuda in zoysia? Yeah, it's tough to get rid of, but there is, there's a product for that. All right, Elder Everett says, thanks for the tip on T-Nex. You're very welcome, sir. I'm glad you decided to spring for it. I know we had a lot of back and forth over you deciding whether you wanted to go with the T-Nex, and I'm glad that you made the decision to eventually uh, go that route because uh, just PGR in general is awesome stuff if you apply it properly. Okay, and then Alex B is saying, I prefer uh, uh, once per week heavy irrigation, let the grass fend for itself until the next watering to help promote deeper root growth um, but in the peak summer, should I up the watering frequency? So yeah, so that kind of what I said earlier in the live stream, Alex, I'm not sure if you were on then. Um, instead of doing like super heavy watering just once in the week, if you want to divide that up uh, to like, you know, say a Monday watering and a Thursday watering, you know, so that way you're putting some water on the grass twice in a week, then that's good. And, then just, and the biggest thing is look at the grass, see how it looks, right? If it looks like it's heat stressed, um, then, you know, regardless, if, if you're mowing it properly, it's got plenty of fertilizer on it and it's still just looking like a little bit off, then maybe give it a little bit more water, right? But it, I would, you know, doing like one one on a Monday, another watering on a Thursday and just kind of monitor, monitoring that and seeing how it does, that could be, um, that is what I would do. That's a good, um, that's a good, good plan of action. Okay, Ben is uh, talking about this. He says, I've got a 10,000 square feet to go. That bill will really sting but all the water works for germination. Yeah, 10,000 square feet. That's yeah, that's gonna be rough, man. That's gonna be rough. Bring bring your pocketbook on that one. It's not gonna be uh, not gonna be inexpensive, but it'll look really cool once you're done. And then A Cardenas is saying he's listening and driving home to throw down the carbon kit. That's awesome, sir. I'm glad that uh, that you are tuning in despite the fact that you're driving home and uh, have fun throwing down the carbon kit. I did mine this morning. Uh, technically, I should have done it um, on Wednesday because Wednesday is like the end of this month and beginning of July, but. Um, I, I'm not going to have, there's other things you're going to be, I'm going to be doing this weekend. So I don't want to like have to rush. And this morning I could get up super early and just, I just got it done a few days early. is not going to hurt anything. So that's why I got mine done today. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys, I know that. So very, 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 uh, cool. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Green thumb says, Hey Ron, uh, just so you know, I'm in Texas. What are your thoughts on a high to cut reset with temps? in 100 degree, 100 plus degrees. So I don't know, I might wait on that, Mr. Green Thumb, because, you know, Bermuda likes heat, but even 100 degree weather, you know, a high to cut reset is stressful. And that you, since you've got really high temps, you know, it's like you're kind of piling on a little bit. I might wait. I mean, I mean, how much are we talking here? Are we talking, you're taking it down just a little bit, or are you talking about going from like an inch to half an inch? You know, if you're talking about a, a, a mild height of cut reset, so say, I don't know, like say uh, an inch to three quarters of an inch, Maybe can get away with that, but I wouldn't do anything crazy drastic, uh, given that the grass is already stressed, um, given the temperatures that you're uh, that you're dealing with. Uh, that is what I would do. Again, you, you're probably not going to kill the Bermuda, but it's just going to look ugly for a lot longer uh, if you decide uh, to go that route. Um, let's see, a question here that I'm not going to know the answer to, but I will put it in here in case someone else does. It says, Christian O'Connor says, what can I use on KBG to kill aspen and sumac tree sprouts? 
Uh, no idea, uh, Christian. I am not sure on that one. Um, but maybe someone that watches this afterwards will say, hey, Christian, that question that he had, someone in the comments will be able to chime in and tell you, or if someone else that has Cool Season Grass and has dealt with um, either of those and has dealt with it and knows the answer, feel free to chime in, but I do not know. But I don't want your question to not at least get acknowledged and go um, have a chance of getting answered, uh, Christian. So hopefully someone will either chime in here in the live stream or um, after the fact on the replay, someone will see it and will chime in and get you uh, an answer. Uh, Cedric is a big fan of the Growing Degree Days app. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, some people like it. It's it's cool. It is cool. It's kind of cool to nerd out too. Um, but uh, yeah, again, for me, I just I like simple, so I just I just do it like once a month. But I totally get why some people would really like that. Okay, uh, Asal Lopez uh, has a question here. He says, um, "Hey, do you recommend what do you recommend for top dressing on a property that doesn't have an irrigation system?" with the hot weather down uh, here in South Carolina. So, I mean, yeah, so here's the thing, um, Saul, if you don't have irrigation, like irrigation is not strictly necessary for top dressing, right? It's not strictly, you don't necessarily have to have irrigation um, to top dress your lawn. Um, what I would do is I would go lighter. So some people want to go super heavy, like they want to like beach the lawn, like, you know, like turn the entire thing into, a, into like a, a beach. I wouldn't do that in your case. Um, I would, if you go light, if you go light, it, it should be fine. And if you can also time it, it's gonna kind of hard to do with top dressing because that's not something you really do just on a whim. But if you can also time the top dressing, you know, ahead of when there's some rain in the forecast, that will help. Because even in my case, right, even when I top dress my entire lawn, I really only watered every day for like three days to kind of help speed things up a bit. And I really didn't even have to do that because I got a ton of rain um, afterwards, right? So, you know, it's rain, like having irrigation is not strictly necessary. But I would just say, make sure you go light. Don't go super heavy um, because top dressing is a bit stressful to the, to the grass. And if you don't have irrigation to kind of help it along, you know, it'll take a little bit longer to recover. Not gonna, you're not going to kill it. It's just going to take longer to, to, uh, to bounce back. So just, just something to keep in mind. I, I would still go forward with it if you want to. Just go light. You know, either way, I would go light. Okay, Elliot Anders is talking about his 4th of July prep. I think he says, JC, I use Ironite and Humic 12 on my... Uh, Turf type tall fescue, always a tongue twister for me. Uh, about once a month, I put three pounds per thousand square feet today, so my lawn will pop on 4th of July. See, this is a man that's thinking about it. He wants his lawn to look his best uh, for next weekend, so he's putting it down. You know, he's doing his prep now to get the lawn looking good. Yeah, that's a good, that is a good plan. So I probably will drop some Nutrisolve. We'll give it a little bit of a, a little bit more iron mm, Thursday of next week, just to give it a little iron kicker, just depending on how it's looking. If the lawn's looking good based on what I did today, I'll leave it alone. But if I want to get that super green, you know, fake AstroTurf look, maybe a little bit more iron, maybe just a touch more. We'll see. We shall see. Uh, the Lawn Father says, hello everyone, I want to level my lawn, but it would take forever. Uh, break it down. If you can, if you can break it down in pieces, you can do it in sections, uh, Lawn Father. Uh, you know, uh, you take a look at like Alex's lawn this year. We just did just his back lawn, you know, just we did a just section of it. So you don't have to do the entire thing all at once. Um, what I would do is I would do like the areas you can all see in at one point. So in other words, if you look at the front lawn, I wouldn't do like half of the front lawn because it's going to look weird from the street. Like one's going to look really smooth and the other parts can look kind of weird. So any part where you have like a single vantage point where you can see like that section of the lawn, I would do that um, all in, uh, in in one go, if at all possible. I don't know how big your lawn is, but just, you know, just something to, to keep in mind. Okay, um, to uh, to Tyler Smith is saying, um, to, uh, he says, he says uh, to FYI, to Mark Day's question about controlling uh, Bermuda, when using uh, full estate, I highly recommend to mix it with triclopyr. So there you go, you got someone else that's actually used it, I guess. I'm Tyler, I'm guessing that you've actually used um, a uh, full aside before, and if he's given some insights, uh, Mark, on how you can get a uh, better uh, result. Uh, very cool. And he says the reason why you want to do that is that not only will it kill the Bermuda, which again, I, you know, I don't like all this aggression against Bermuda. I got to tell you guys, it kind of hurts a little bit. But he says more importantly, in addition to killing the Bermuda, it's going to protect the zoysia from damage from the full aside. So there you go. There's a guy that's done it before and uh, obviously has a t-shirt because he's got a concoction there that will work. So, uh, you know, I don't know, Tyler or, you know, reach out to um, to Mark if you guys can link up somehow. I'm not sure how that would happen um, and just figure out what the rates are that you need to use for both to get a really good, uh, a really good result with, um, with mixing those two products. If there's any adjustments you have to make if you decide to mix them together. Okay, Keith Kramer says, I have a good covering of dead matter at soil level and an average thatch tick thickness of close to one inch, uh, a Kentucky bluegrass sodded lawn. What can I do this summer to help uh, before I core aerate after 
Labor Day. Okay, so if you want to help reduce um, dead matter like thatch, anything you can do to, that's going to help pick up or increase microbial activity in the lawn, Keith, that can help as well too. So core aerating obviously is going to help as well, right? It's going to help. That's going to help. Um, you know, it's going to help relieve compaction. It's also going to help break up some of the thatch, um, make it easier for it for, to to get broken down by um, by microbes. But what I might do also is, is introduce some kind of what they call those liquid aeration products. Um, you know, if any of those that you might like, that would be something I would incorporate in addition to doing um, um, hollow tight aeration. So a good option as well is the carbon kit. So you've got, uh, I'll actually show you here because I always get tired of taking them off the shelf and putting them back on the shelf. I always think I'm gonna drop them one day. So I'm just gonna show you here on the store, it's easier. <laughs> so what you could do, Keith, is uh, the Golf Course Lawn Carbon Kit um, here, which is NutriKelp, Release Zero, and Biospectrum. All three of these will help improve or increase um, the, the biology, the bio biological activity, the microbial activity in your soil, which will help um, break, help with thatch. It's gonna help break down thatch. So it's like a two-pronged approach. I absolutely would still uh, hollow tine aerate your lawn. I absolutely would still core aerate it. But as far as um, something else you can do in addition to that, using one of the liquid aeration, like those, the dethatching products, which essentially all they do is increase or improve and stimulate uh, microbial activity. Like that's something that I would do as well. Like that, those two, it's not either or, I would do both of them. Because one inch is uh, it's quite a bit, and you definitely want to you want to like get that down a little bit. I mean, you you need some thatch, but I mean, one inch is uh, is quite a bit. I imagine your lawn probably feels pretty spongy with that much uh, going down there. Okay, um, another question on 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 Saint Augustine out of Zoysia. Planos Pat's cut, uh, Chop Shop says how to keep St. Augustine out of my emerald zoysia. So here's the thing. Some people are saying that fulisade or however you say it, fusillade will work for that. Um, Will work for that uh, Plano's uh, chop shop. I it's not labeled for it, so I you know as far as I'm concerned, um, you know you can try it, but I don't I don't know that it, that you're going to get a good result. I mean the product is not super expensive, but um, it's not. I, I find it difficult to believe that if it were very effective at targeting um, Saint Augustine, that it wouldn't that Syngenta would not have put that on the label as well. So um, you know that that one product that we mentioned earlier, Fusilay or Fulisade, Fula I keep saying it wrong. Um, um, Fusilade is a, is a good option um, that could, could potentially work. It targets crabgrass, and a lot of herbicides that target that will kill crabgrass will also harm or necessarily kill, but will also damage St. Augustine. So it's an option. It's something to try out if you want. I, again, it's not labeled for it. I've actually checked here live on the live stream, and I didn't see St. Augustine listed anywhere on the label. Um, but I will also reach out to my contacts at... Um, at Syngenta and ask them if that's like an off-label or off-label um, application for it as well, if it'll work. But uh, but yeah, you got zoysia and that's the one thing that, that's the one herbicide that is a kind of a boutique type product that should work well, should work well. All right, uh, Joseph Roberts is talking about Anderson's uh, Governor G, so that's a grander uh, PGR, and he says, I still had some bronzing, hit it with a light application of iron hose, and yeah, so it's just Trinexapac ethyl, man. I'm not sure how much um, how much iron you put down, um, and if you did the iron, like, did you did you spray it? Or did you use, like, ironite? Like, how do you do it? Because it, I know if you spray the iron, if you spray liquid iron with a little bit of nitrogen, that does take the edge off of the bronzing a little bit, so something to keep in mind with that. Um, but yeah, that is something that you can you can consider. Okay, um, so the, the Lawn Chariot is saying, hey, I love PGR. Monday, Thursday, I cut with very little clippings. The test will be when I'm out of town uh, for the week of the 4th. I also get a slight color change post application. It's cute, and I apply uh, iron. Yeah, so just remember, it's going to help Wind Chariot, but PGR is not a miracle worker. So it, it can reduce, like if, if all the stars align, meaning you don't have like, tremendous amounts of nitrogen in your lawn um, and you apply it at the right rate, you can it can reduce your mowing by up to 50%. And that's that's a that's a best case scenario. So your lawn is still gonna probably grow. It's still gonna grow while you're out of town, but it's not gonna be as bad had you not had PGR on it. So just to kind of level set that you know it's not a miracle thing that don't don't get mad if you get back and the lawn is growing a little taller than you expect because you haven't been mowing it, right? So still gotta mow it even with PGR. Okay, David and Lori uh, Anderson says, Heidi Ho, they're from Central Texas. Heidi Ho, I guess that's a, a Central Texas greeting. Uh, David and Lori, thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you. Always uh, fun. Hey, what's going on, G Free? Hi, Ron. Uh, Kelby Ruiz in the house. Uh, happy Friday. I've been seeing a lot of white tiny mites in my lawn. Is it true they can stunt my growth? Um, 
Um, I don't know about that, um, Kelby, but I do, um, I do have a, there was a question I had to follow up on about mites. Yes, so there's a question that I had from last week on mites in Bermuda. Yes, they can cause damage. They can, they're not good for Bermuda grass. Um, and it's the, the, um, the, the solution to that, at least what I found from doing some research, is to apply something like Talstar, something that has um, bifenthrin, bifenthrin in it. Um, like anything like that, anything with that kind of insecticide will work to kelp, to kelp, kill those, to kelp, knock those back, um, and that will that should help with the problem. So something like Talstar or any product with bifenthrin, I think you can actually get bifenthrin in a granular just by itself, um, which would probably be easier um, for applying to your lawn. So that's something you might want to kind of consider. But bifenthrin is what you want. That's the active ingredient to look for as far as to knock back um, lawn mites. So um, so just something to uh, to keep in mind. Corey Martin in the house has a question about thickening up his lawn. He says, uh, trying to thicken up my lawn, I mow twice a week and alternate furt and biostims every two weeks. Sound like you're doing the right things. And water just about every other day. So that's probably a bit much, um, but not seeing the result I want. Is there anything I'm not doing? Okay, uh, so mowing twice a week. Um, so it, I think on the furt, you sound like you're doing a pretty good job on the fertilizer front and on the biostims, that looks good. The watering, you're probably watering a little bit more than you need to. I might back that down to like, you know, you know, twice a week. Um, but the one thing I'd say that will help thicken it up is mowing, picking up your mowing frequency. So mowing twice a week, Corey, depending on the height of cut you're going for can work. Like mowing twice a week, in my opinion, is just like, that's just the price of admission. Like if you're serious about getting a good looking lawn, twice a week mowing is like the minimum you gotta do if you want it to, if you wanna have a chance of it looking, you know, above average. To get that like, you know, where people actually look at it and say, wow, this lawn looks different to other lawns in the neighborhood. Twice a week mowing is like just the, the price of admission, right? If you want, if you're serious about thickening it up, like mow even more. So like three times a week is going to be even better. If you can get to the point where you're mowing it every other day, especially this time of year when it's really hot, uh, that's going to help encourage lateral growth in the lawn. So you didn't say what kind of grass you have, but I'm assuming it's something like Bermuda. Um, if it's Bermuda, yeah, Bermuda likes being it likes being mowed shorter. So mow, you're mowing Bermuda shorter. Um, and mowing it more frequently is going to help it to thicken up. Those things, those two things kind of go together. So it sounds like you're doing the right thing. The lawn's getting plenty of water, it sounds like. You're using good fertilizer, you're using biostimulant package. Uh, that should be enough from a standpoint of like, you know, feeding it. Now let's make sure our, um, our mowing practices are where they need to be to be able to support that, okay? And that's what I would say. And the other thing I'd say, to Corey, is... Um, with your mower, make sure that it's, it's sharp. If you haven't checked your mower blades recently, make sure they're sharp, sharpen them up. If, you're, if you have a reel, make sure that it's cutting paper. All those things are important when you're really trying to, to pick up your mowing frequency and get the lawn to look nice between mowings. All those things begin to matter a lot more. Okay, uh, Pat, Pat says, yeah, uh, hey, Ron, the question was already answered. Sorry, the repeat question. No problem at all, Pat, no, uh, no issues. Uh, whatsoever. Uh, Alan Kripe says, hey, Ron, uh, when is a good time to verticut? Um, you, you can do it um, as early as in May. Uh, you can do it now if you want. Really, whenever the lawn is actively growing so it's going to recover faster is, is the time to do it. Kind of like, kind of like core aeration. Uh, I've done hollow tine aeration as early as March. The best time to do it is probably like late April into May. You know, whenever there's, depending on what part of the country you're in, right? In Georgia, like May-ish is there's enough heat where the grass is starting to grow aggressively that it will recover quickly from it. Same thing is true uh, for verticutting. Just whenever the grass is actively growing is when you uh, want to do it. So if you're like in the Southeast United States, Georgia area, now could be a great time if you wanted to do that. Okay, so Evans is in uh, the live stream. It says, uh, hey, Ron, I always love to listen to your live sessions. I appreciate it, sir. Thanks so much for uh, hanging out. I've got something going on in my Bermuda. Are you any good at identifying damage? Not sure if it's brown patch or chinch bugs. Send pics? Uh, sure. Send me pictures. Um, I'll look at it. If it sticks out as brown patch, I'll say, yeah, it looks like brown patch. But um, more importantly than always being able to identify everything on my own, Evans, I know people. I know people that I can send the pictures to and they will tell me. They will tell me what, what's going on with it. So yeah, definitely send them my way. Um, my uh, email address is here is ron at golfcourselawn.com. Feel free to send the pictures to that and just say, hey, this is Evans from the live stream. Um, this is the travesty that is going on in my lawn right now. Tell me what it is. Uh, given this time of year, it, it probably is like summer patch or brown patch. Uh, that is that is fairly, that is somewhat common if you haven't put down any kind of a fungicide, any kind of a preventative fungicide something to keep in mind. Uh, so it, it probably is. Um, but, uh, but yeah, send me the pictures and I'll take a look at it and we'll figure out a plan of action. 
Uh, great question. And as far as a fungicide, if it is that, so, so if you want, if you want like a product, if you've not done a fungicide or an insecticide as yet, Evans, uh, a great product that is not going to break the bank that will that will take care of brown patch um, and also will take care of grubs um, is a product called Caravan G. It's a combination insecticide and fungicide product. Um, I've used it a ton in the past. That was like my go-to staple product. This year, I've switched it up in the sense that I have um, gone for uh, two separate products. I've went with a Celeprin um, and Headway G. So Headway G is strictly a fungicide and a Celeprin is strictly, a fun is strictly an insecticide. But if you're looking for um, a great product that, that has both, does both of them, like all in one, um, Car uh, Caravan G is a good option. And I think I should have a link for that here that I can show you. Yep, I do. I do right here. So I'll send that to you in case you want to give that a go. But also send me the pics, um, um, Evans, and uh, and I will do my best to help you out. So at Evans, and uh, there you go. Good stuff. Okay, uh, Kevin Sheehan says, hey, all. Sorry, I'm late, but I'm here. That's true. You are late, but you are here, sir. Appreciate you coming to hang out in the live stream. And guys, be sure to continue hanging out because remember, you must be present to win. Must be present to win. We are doing the drawing from last week. We're doing the Stripe Action sticker, which I know, you know, you guys, some of you guys may like it, some of you guys may not, but it's an awesome sticker. I think I like it very much. The um, newly introduced Ron Henry logo sticker. So this, these guys are brand new. Whoever wins this will be the only person outside of myself and Josh Abib that has one of these. And then finally, the, br the grand prize, you know, a brand new, never used, th one of three in existence, um, trucker hat with that leather patch. I guess it's made by Weston Ryder. That's who... They're proud of it. They put their logo on the back. You can tell, never worn, never used, still got the cardboard in there. Some one lucky winner will be winning this from <clears throat> last week, week's live stream that was that entered in the giveaway. So make sure you stick around uh, for that. Again, Josh, if you're in the live stream, thank you so much for all the generosity and for supplying all the swag. I'm gonna start calling you Swag Master because you're like the guy that always like has all the cool stuff that uh, gives me cool things to give away in the live stream. So I appreciate you, sir. Really appreciate you. All right, L Lonnie Estrada is in the house from Austin, Texas. Thanks, Lonnie. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, Raider Nation saying, Ron, I always enjoy the show and info. Thanks. Thanks so much, Raider Nation. I appreciate you. I always appreciate you also chiming in and asking me the questions in uh, in the uh, my YouTube videos. You always ask. You, you're a man that likes the follow-up questions. I'm like, I'll answer one question. You got to come back and like, well, tell me more. You know, you always, you always want more details, which is cool. I, I like people that like to understand the why behind things. It's always fun. And we got uh, YouTube royalty in the house. George from Princess Cut Long here. What's going on, George? He says, what's up, Ron? Long time no talk. Good to see you, too. What's going on, man? Uh, glad you're, you're coming up from Final Cut, sir, to come hang out with us for a little bit. Uh, hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully the grasses are doing well. And, uh, you know, George is someone that's killing it this season, guys. If you guys have not checked out Princess Cut Lawn Care, he's got some really good content. He's been growing, like, by leaps and bounds this season. A lot of cr creators this season have really been stepping up their game. And George's content is uh, really, really awesome. Um, proud to call you a friend, sir, and to, uh, you know, to, to see all the growth and everything that's happening on your channel. So definitely give uh, some George some love. All right, R. Colson, haven't seen you in a while, sir. Good to see that you're still around. He says, what's up, Ron? Another week in the books, spraying my second PGR app tomorrow. Nice, I like it. Uh, thoughts on adding feature, uh, two ounces per thousand, as well as Turfplex at low rates. Too much iron? No, I think that'll work fine, um, R. Colson. I mean, uh, Turfplex has, has got iron in it, but it's a very low amount. I typically augment Turfplex with Nutrizolve because it has, I think, two or 3% iron in it. I have to look at the label and see, but I mean, um, you know, adding feature along with, uh, along with um, Turfplex and your PGR app, that should work just great, should be just fine. Uh, no problems at all. That uh, concoction is approved. Go for it, sir. Uh, should, uh, should be really good. And, and definitely let me know if you chime in, if you're here in the live stream next week, let us know, R. Colson, if like how that concoction worked as far as preventing the yellowing that you get from PGR in your lawn. Okay, uh, Taylor Ursu is talking about um, Canada. He says, I live in Canada. Getting good products here is a pain. Uh, you know, um, any suggestions on places that may ship to Canada? Stretch question. Um, you know, your best bet is it might be um, like Amazon, man. Um, you know, if you can check like Amazon.ca and see if they, um, you know, if there's any herbicides or any products that are also in the Amazon store, they'll, they'll deliver to you. The big problem, Taylor, is that if it's not labeled for, um, for use in your country, like, 
I could ship it to you, but it's going to get stopped in customs. Like customs is going to get it, and they're like herbicide. What is this? Or, you know, oh, you know, whatever, whatever it happens to be, whatever. I don't know. What we can call it. Let's say spectricide. Uh, yeah, that's not allowed in Canada. It's not you know just on the prohibited list or on the ban list, and you, you'll just never get it. So it's not so much the trouble of you ordering it, not so much the trouble of, get, of shipping it. It's it's the problem of you actually getting it. You know what I mean? Because if it's not not really authorized or it's banned in your country, it's going to get stopped at customs. You're not. It's not going to get through. Um, so my recommendation for finding stuff that you can, you actually can get in Canada is see what you can find locally. See if there's any local shops, like places that sell to golf courses, if they will, um, you know, they have anything that they can sell to you. Or check Amazon and see what the Amazon store for Canada is offering uh, for your area. That's that's another option as well. Winchard is saying he's got, I'll get some, get, I guess I'll get some essential G. Carbon Pro G is a ghost in my area. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's bad. You know, I really started talking about Carbon Pro G a lot last year and even this year, and now it's become a problem. Like you can't even get it. Like I went to my local site one, and uh, the last time I was able to get some was ew, probably almost a month ago. And they told me, hey, man, we got like five bags. You want the five bags? This is all, this is all we got. And, we, and I'm not sure when we're going to be able to get more in. So, um, you know, good job, Site One. I guess you guys are getting lots of love. Miramichi Green getting lots of business. So that's really good. Um, but yeah, you know, Carbon Pro G is a victim of its own success um, uh, on, you know, I guess on that front. So, but you'll, you'll be fine. So, I mean, they're still stocking it. Just keep looking when cherry or just get Essential G. Central G is in stock and shipping at the golf course lawn store. So I'd appreciate the business. And it's a good option. It's like, you know, Carbon Pro G 2.0. All right. Uh, JK has a question. Says, any thoughts on spraying uh, urea? Um, you can. It's a it's an inexpensive way to get nitrogen in the lawn. Uh, you just got to be really careful, man. You got to make sure you um, you want to water it in after you apply it. So like you definitely, you got to be careful with straight, with straight um, urea. You're giving the lawn a pretty good nitrogen hit. So uh, just make sure you water it in properly afterwards. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, I tend to use products, like most, all the fertilizers I use, all the liquid products I use have some form of urea in them, right? But as far as the spraying straight urea, um, it's a great way to push a lot of growth quickly. Like if you're trying to get the lawn to grow really fast, that's, that's the way to do it, but you just gotta be careful. Like you can burn the lawn, you can damage the lawn pretty easily. And because um, it's, it's so quick release, it, it doesn't last as long, right? So it's, it's, I think it's, I look at it as like a, um, like a specialized use type product. Like if you're gonna use it in a spoon feeding program, that can work. If you're looking to push a lot of growth really quickly, it can work for that, but it's something to use like all the time. Um, not, um, not my first choice, not my first choice. Mainly because most people aren't going to, unless you have experience with it, aren't going to do it right and they can easily damage their lawns. So that's why. I, it's another reason why I don't really recommend it. Not that it's not good. Um, it's just that people that are not professionals or people that are not like serious lawn care fanatics um, can easily get a very bad outcome with it if they're not careful. So that's why I don't really don't really push it. So like, you know, get, if you want something quick release, that's probably not, that's not gonna burn your lawn, get Turfplex. That's quick release. Um, and it's, you know, it's two, three days, you're gonna see some, you're gonna see um, a uh, good response out of it and it's unlikely to burn your lawn if you apply it at the right rates. Okay, uh, PT Lawn Care says, what's a good game plan to get rid of poison ivy? That's not one I've dealt with, um, uh, PT. I'm not sure if spectricide is labeled for poison uh, ivy. Let's take a look. Um, I don't I don't think so. Yeah, actually it is. <laughs> it is. It, it's labeled for 470 weeds. So uh, this should work here, uh, uh, PT's Lawn Care. You can give this a shot. So um, if you look here, this product, um, Spectricide Weed Stop, the, the orange bottle. Again, this is assuming you have... Uh, Bermuda or zoysia, if you have St. Augustine, do not use this one. So if you have a Bermuda lawn or a zoysia lawn, you can use this. It targets over 470 weeds. And according to the label, poison ivy is one of those weeds that is targeted. So that's an inexpensive or you know a cost-effective way to go as far as, um, not, as, far as going after uh, poison ivy. Um, I, I don't know how well it works against it because I've never actually had to, I've never used it to actually target that particular weed, but um, it's labeled for it. And it's, you know, at, at like under $15 a bottle, can't go wrong just giving it a shot before you step up to like the big gun type for uh, herbicides, right? Okay, uh, uh, Lonnie Estrada says, has a question about a fert spreader. He says, what's your best, uh, in your opinion, what is the best fert spreader for a 3,500 th uh, square foot um, lawn, a walk behind? The one that I like is the Earthway lawn. So if you're gonna get one, <clears throat> if you're gonna get one, this is the one that I would recommend. Hang on, I'm gonna put it, first I'm gonna put it in the chat and then I'll put it up in here so you can actually see what I'm talking about. So see, at Lonnie Estrada, that is, uh, that's the spreader link. That's the one I'm talking about. And then is actually the spreader itself. Um, where is, where are you? There we go. 
uh, the Earthway 2050. The price on it actually went up. They must have been, they must be like following or something because it used to be 139. The price on it went up a little bit here. But this one, Lonnie, is what I would go with. So take a look here. That guy's what I would go with. It's got the air filled tires. This, it's usually 139. I guess they raised the price. I, mean, I guess maybe it's just getting more. They just raised the price for whatever reason. I don't know why. Um, but this guy's good because one, you got the air filled tires. It's got a big hopper. It's nice and stable. And the big reason why I would go with this one, Lonnie, is because um, it's considered like a prosumer or a mild professional grade spreader, meaning that like if you are using something like any fertilizers from, from Lebanon Turf or any like of the like, I hate to say higher end, but any of the more professional grade products, they are going to have, most of them anyway, are going to have spreader settings that list the Earthway. If you have a Scott's, like even like the Scott's Deluxe or even one of the nicer Scott spreaders, like those spreaders are just not considered by some by some of the um by you know some of the like the higher end or some of the like more professional grade um fertilizers as when they just list on the label i don't know why because they're probably you know they're probably more scott spreaders in this country than anything else but um if you're gonna if you're in the market for one the earthway is what i would go with it's a really really good option works works well and my, mine's been bulletproof it's worked really well for a number of years as a matter of fact i just bought another one and i gave my old one to alex so that's how much i like it that i, I bought another one of the exact same thing so uh, that is what uh, I would go with as far as a walk behind spreader. Uh, Rob Heidel says has a question here. He says, um, he says, Ron, thanks for all the help. Uh, Bermuda lawn. I got my soil test back. Everything was in the optimal range um, other than uh, magnesium and boron, which were low. Should I focus on getting the magnesium and boron up? Eh, you can. I mean, what, what, you, what you might do, um, Rob, is in... The fall, um, I'm trying to think of anything that actually has just like a bunch of magnesium in it. And I, I, the big first thing that comes to mind is like um, is like lime, right? Like dolomitic lime. But if your lawn doesn't need lime or if your pH is fine, if you just want to, if you want to put down some dolomitic lime like in the fall, uh, that will help raise your magnesium levels. Uh, as far as boron, if you want to target that, if you want to help improve that, um, Nutrizolve is a great product that will um, that will help that. It'll help all your micronutrient levels. So the product I'm talking about here is if we go to the golf course lawn store and then scroll down to um, here, if I can find it, there we go, Nutrizolve with C-Extra. This is strictly a micronutrient fertilizer. So what this guy has is your, your iron, your manganese, your zinc, your boron, and copper. So, the, so it's often a challenge to find all, all of those all in one package. Um, and this product has all of them. So if you're looking for something to help raise the boron levels um, as well as copper, which most people's, you know, boron and copper levels tend to be lowest in most soil tests, um, this is a is a good option. That is what I would um, I would go with. But you know, you don't, I mean, depending on how low it is, you don't necessarily have to to worry about it too much. I mean, boron and copper are measured, or how much your lawn needs. It's like fractions of a point, fractions of a one point per million. So it's very very tiny amounts, right? But if you really try to optimize everything give a Nutrizolve a shot. And you can get it here at the Golf Course Lawn Store. That's where you can pick that up. I got a question here about seed heads. JK is saying, uh, I still have a lot of seed heads coming up in my hybrid Bermuda. At this point, temps have stabilized. Would there be any other potential causes or stressors? So yeah, so you know, if the lawn is not getting enough water, if it's not, if it doesn't, if the soil doesn't have enough nutrient, um, those things can help, can make seed heads stick around for a little bit longer. On my lawn and Alex's lawn, like the 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 peak of the seed heads is pretty much gone. Like on our lawns, we had them really badly, like you guys had them for a couple of weeks, and then they fell off. And now the only places where I'm really seeing seed heads in my lawn is just along the edges. So like where my lawn hits the neighbor's lawns, and where I can't really get the greens more right up, like right on the edge there. Uh, that's right. I can still see a few seed heads here and there, but in the main lawn, it's gone. So, uh, you know, if you've not done a soil test, uh, JK, um, you know, consider doing that. The one I recommend is the one from my soil. This is the one I would go with just to make sure there's nothing major lacking that can also, that's kind of extending this a bit. Um, also make sure the lawn is getting enough water. So an inch, an inch of water or so thereabouts per week is what Bermuda needs to be happy. So, um, make sure you get enough water on the lawn. And if you're doing those things, uh, pick up your mowing frequency if you can. You know, like uh, if you're only mowing once every couple of weeks, you're mowing once a week, the more you mow, the more you're gonna be knocking those seed heads off and the less apparent they're gonna be. But it should, it shouldn't be an issue here for not too much longer. You know, with the step with the temp stabilized now, it shouldn't be more than another week or two, and it should be gone. You know, should be. You know, all things else being equal. Uh, great question. Robert Wallace in the house. He says, Hey Ron, what just want to say thanks. Actually, wrong person. He says, just want to say thanks for the lawn advice. The neighbors think my grass is fake. They actually ask to touch the grass to make sure it's real. That's one of the best compliments you can get, right? 
Um, and you know, you know, I mean, thank you for, thanks for the, you know, the compliment, but really you did all the work, right? Like I, I tell you guys in the videos, like what I do that works for me, but then you still got to go do the work. You still got to put the fertilizer down and most importantly, you got to mow. So if your lawn is looking really good, I know you're, you're keeping up with your mowing, which is really the most important thing once you get everything else in place. So, uh, congrats on that. Always fun to have the neighbors or delivery guys, gals, uh, you know, ask if the lawn is, uh, is fake or not. So very cool. All right, Flip McNeil has a question about, or a comment about a Tiff Tough Bermuda. He says, I had Tiff Tough Bermuda sod installed in April this year. It looks great so far. I'm new to sod. Any idea how long it takes for sod to be considered fully established? Thanks. Um, Fully established, six months, three to six months. I mean, Bermuda Bermuda is a little bit faster, um, but really once all the lines, like if you don't see it um, butting in anymore, like you don't see like, you, in other words, the lines don't look like it's sodded anymore. Like that's when I would I would really call it good. So really th probably three months, depending on temps, depending on how well you're watering, depending on just how well it roots in and gets established, then you should be good to go. But even with that, even with it being established, let's say you did it, you said it, you did it in April, um, really, I wouldn't do anything that's gonna to be too traumatic to the lawn this season. So the only thing you could probably could do this year if you really wanted to flip McNeil, like if you wanted to top dress it, like if you wanna go light on a top dressing, you absolutely could do that. The one thing I wouldn't do this year or this season because you just, just put the sod in is I wouldn't do anything that's gonna tear at the uh, turf. So like anything like core um, aeration, I probably wouldn't do that. Um, and I wouldn't, or at least not right now anyway, and I wouldn't verticut it. So those kinds of things I might wait till next year to do. But if you really are scratching, you really got, want to do something on the lawn and you want to do a light top dressing, you absolutely can do that. There's people that, that put down sod and literally right afterwards they top dress the lawn. Again, keyword lightly, go lightly on the top dressing um, and you can get a good result. But yeah, um, after a few months, you should be good to go. Should be good to go. No, uh, no issues uh, there. Kevin Sheehan has a question about uh, Turfplex and T-Nex. He says, hey Ron, do you spray down T-Nex every month with your Turfplex and carbon kit? Just wondering if it's okay to put down once a month. Yes, Kevin, so that's what I do. So if you're trying to be super hardcore, like some of the really more hardcore lawn geeks, people that are even more hardcore than I am will use like the Greenskeeper app and track their growing degree days, which will tell you, hey, this is when your lawn's coming out of regulation. They'll do their PGR apps based on that. Um, but what I do is which exactly what you're talking about. So the beginning of the month, actually today, this morning, if you guys saw like my YouTube story or um, uh, Instagram, you saw I posted about it. Um, I sprayed the carbon kit along with Turplex and along with TNX. I did it all this morning, right? Um, for my July 1st application. I just did it a couple days early. Uh, so yes, you can absolutely do that once a month. No issues there. And what, you can, what you'll find, Kevin, is if like you get to be like the third week of July, um, and you see that you're starting to see some surge growth, meaning the lawn is coming out of regulation a little early. You just know that next month, you just need to apply a little bit earlier if, if that bugs you. You know, for me, it doesn't really matter either way because I mow so much that, you know, I could probably get away with not actually using PGR on my lawn, but I like the way it looks with it. So that's why I continue to do it. But to answer your question, yes, you can do all of them together. And you can also do them once a month. Um, they all work, they all mix fine. They all apply nicely. Um, that concoction you're talking about is exactly what I did uh, today is what I do. Highly recommend it. Okay, Connor Souls is uh, talking about, he's, he's, he's having some withdrawal syndrome. He says, my greens master is at the shop right now, getting grinded and new bed knife installed. Cannot wait to get it back and, uh, and to mow. Yeah, I, I hear you, man. It's, it's rough. It's rough having your baby away from you. But uh, it'll, think about it. You're going to love it when, it when it comes back. It'll be all sharpened up. Everything will be good to go. And uh, there's nothing like that first, that first cut after getting the mower sharpened. It's, it's, a, it's always a sweet thing. Always a beautiful thing, right? Always a beautiful thing. Okay, so uh, Alex B has a point. He says, uh, thanks for the info on the application rates, Ron. This season, I transitioned to applying less product more frequently, typically monthly applications, and the results have been better than ever. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, Alex. I mean, if you're able to give the lawn what it needs um, in, in more frequent, like smaller amounts in more frequent doses, like you tend to do better, right? The lawn tends to do better. Kind of like, like fertilizing once a month can work. Fertilizing twice a month can work. Like using a, a slow release fertilizer that lasts for several months, that can work. But if you think about it, it's almost like eating one really big meal a day, right? If you're, if you're eating really one big meal a day, that can work. Like if you're doing intermittent fasting, that, that you can work and you can survive on that. But most people that do intermittent fasting, at least when they're first starting it, are pretty miserable, right? So it's much easier to do like very, so much of small meals throughout the day to get 
you know, you were happier that way. Like most people eat three meals a day. People that are super hardcore in their fitness eat several small meals throughout the day. They just feed their body just, just what it needs a little bit at, at a time. Same thing with your grass. You could pitch your grass with a ton of everything at once and just kind of hope for the best and let it, you know, peak and then slowly wear off. Or you can just give it like what you're doing, small amounts in regular increments. And the net result is that the, lot, the grass is just going to be happier. It just makes sense when you think about it, right? Because we're we're the same way. We don't like eat huge, you know, huge helpings all at one time and then go long periods of not doing it. So turf is the same way if you can do it. The only negative to what you're doing um, is it takes more time, right? So for people that aren't serious about their grass or don't want to, don't have the time or don't want to make them time to be out there all the time, um, or at least a couple times a month spraying stuff on the lawn, um, it's going to be more challenging. So the only negative to spoon feeding is the time that it it takes to do. But, you know, if you're hardcore, you're out there messing with your lawn all the time, you know, twice a month is not that much of, not that big of a deal. All right. Connor says, love the videos, man. They've been very helpful, extremely helpful. Thank you so much for watching, sir. I really appreciate it. I uh, always appreciate that. Always nice knowing that someone else is getting some value uh, out of uh, the content. I think so. I think I already answered your question. Um, you asked about irrigation. Yeah, I think I already covered that one. But yeah, you should still be good to go, Saul, even without um, irrigation. Just go light on the top dressing mix. I think we already covered that one. And then we have Effortless Cray says, I want a Bermuda lawn. It's a mutt lawn right now. When can I add Bermuda seed? Okay, so what, if I remember correctly, you said you have centipede, you have some zoysia, and you had Bermuda. I think you said Effortless Craze. So, I mean, if you add Bermuda seed, it's just going to be a little bit more Bermuda along with centipede and along with whatever else you had. I forget what the third grass was. If you really only want a Bermuda lawn, like if that's what you really want, all you want is Bermuda, um, what I would do is come up with a plan of action to eliminate the other grass types um, and then start over with Bermuda. You know, just doing Bermuda seed, you can do that. I mean, you can, um, but I don't think you're gonna get the result that you want where all you're looking at is a lawn that's only Bermuda. In other words, like the centipede that's been around for a while, and I forget if you say it's Zoysia or St. Augustine, or the, so the Zoysia or the St. Augustine that's been around for a while, like those grasses have been there for a minute, right? So they're gonna be, they're gonna be rough to get rid of. Like they're not gonna tolerate being choked out um, by the Bermuda, just by the fact that you're introducing more seed. Because if they were going to be choked out, like the Bermuda would have won the battle already. You see what I'm saying? So if the centipede is living and the zoysia is living and the Bermuda is living, they probably are going to continue to live together if you put seed down. So if you only want Bermuda, I'd recommend just going full renovation. It's going to be more work. It's going to be look ugly, but you're going to get a better result. Um, and you'll get, it's the best way to get an only Bermuda lawn versus trying to just put seed down and Hope for the best. I don't, I don't think you're going to get the results you're after if you uh, if you go that route. And then your follow up question: He says, "I live on a slope and I have some major major erosion going on. Very loose soil. Can I seed anyway?" Um, again, I would not recommend seeding for what you're doing. Um, and I don't know what kind of a slope we're talking about here. Like my front lawn has a slope. So look at my videos. Look at my content. You can see what my slope looks like. I've seeded that uh, successfully with with um, Arden 15. And it's worked well. Um, so you, yes, to answer your question, yes, you can see it on a slope. You need to do proper prep. Like you need to either, um, like either put down a thin layer of topsoil or carbonized peat or something for the seed to like, to root into, like that's going to be important. Um, but it depends on how much of erosion we're talking about. But again, to, to, to go back to my original point, I, I would not use seed if you're only trying to have a Bermuda lawn. If you're just trying to add another Bermuda, then yeah, you can seed it. But, uh, you know, if your, your goal is Bermuda only, I would um, I would nuke the existing grass, and I actually wouldn't even do seed. I would probably sod it. Like like sod is going to be a lot better, a easier way to get the lawn established um, than using seed. If you want, because here's why: if you take a look at my, um, I'm not sure if you, you guys have been watching like my um, my YouTube stories or some of the videos I've shown about like the little grass planters that I have outside. I've got like um, a zoysia planter, I've got a rye grass one, and I've got a Bermuda one, right? And what you find is although all those planters get the same amount of love, they all get, they got the same amount of water, same amount of fertilizer, same amount of seed. What you find is the seed, the, the grass is growing in like in the fringes first, and then it's slowly filling in. So just because you seed your lawn evenly doesn't mean that it's all going to grow in evenly is what I'm trying to say. So this in general, if you just want to be able to get a good looking lawn as quickly as possible, um, sod is what I would recommend for warm season grass like Bermuda. You can do seed, but it's just not, it's, it's, you're, it's the long haul. You're, you're, you're basically turning on hard mode. You ever play Street Fighter? Like when you're like back in the day, like, you know, you turn it on and like start going in hard mode. That's what that is. The seeding Bermuda, seeding warm season grass is literally the hard way of getting, um, a lawn. So it's kind of your call if you want to do that. But, um, you know, I, I would recommend, I would recommend going, uh, with sod. 
All right, uh, Ernest Mungai says, thank you for the constant, for consistently doing the live stream. You're welcome, sir. You guys keep showing up, so I'll keep doing it, right? Uh, so as long as that keeps happening, I'll uh, I'll keep helping out until I have like, you know, vacation at some point or something else comes up. But I mean, for the most part, I try to be consistent because it's important, right? You guys taking time out of your week to come show up, so I need to show up too. Okay, Alex B is talking about um, dormancy. He says, thanks for the dormancy info, Ron. And yes, I do have cool season grass, because I keep bluegrass and perennial ryegrass hybrid lawn. Um, 60, 70 split and about, um, 70, 20 or 20, 30, uh, perennial rise. So definitely some dormancy in July and August. Yeah, man, I would just not worry about it. I would not, um, you can, you can mow a little bit less, put a, keep a little bit of water on it, but just realize that now is your downtime, you know, but look at the bright side. Um, Alex, as a cool season guy, you guys get two growing seasons. You get the spring and you get the fall. We warm season guys only get like, you know, spring and summer, summer. So, you know, cry me a river. You guys, you guys get two growing seasons. You only get one. So hopefully, uh, you know, that helps. Just enjoy, enjoy the time off. Enjoy the time off. All right. Uh, Robert says, be right, guys. Going to go cut now. Uh, Lonnie, glad that I answered your question. And um, let me see what other questions we got here. Chandler, um, uh, Bush says, what about the Red Max? I'm not sure what Red Max is, sir. So I can't, uh, I can't um, help you on that. I'm not, I'm not sure what that is. So I can't uh, comment on that. And uh, let's see, JP Show has a question about checking the oil on a greens mower. He says, do you know how to check the oil on your greens mower correctly without the oil falling out? Do you have to tip the mower back slightly? Um, that's a good question, uh, JP. Um, hmm, I don't know the answer to that one. I'll have to, I'll have to dig into that one. I'll, I'll, I'll put that one down on... Um, on the things to answer for next week. Uh, I will, I'll call up Joey at Jerry Pate and uh, and ask him a question on that. Checking oil on greens on uh, on greens mower. Yeah, uh, proper way. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. Uh, I don't know the answer to that one. Okay, and uh, Dalvin, Larry, what's going on, Dalvin? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. Appreciate you, sir. And uh, do you change the hydraulic oil? I don't, here's the thing. I don't change any fluids in any of my mowers, guys. And I go, I know that makes me a weenie. I know some of you guys saying, man, Ron, man up, man. Get that wrench out there and change the oil yourself. But the thing is, really, it only needs to happen once per season. And because the mower has to go in anyway to get the, the real embed knife ground, I just let them take care of all of it. I don't, I don't want to mess with it. Because if I, if I got to do it myself, then I got to drain the oil. I got to find, I got to go take it somewhere to go get rid of it. Um, and then I have like an oil container that literally is sitting around in my garage, like until the next time I either decide to change the oil in the car or change oil in the mower. So it's not something that I do myself. Um, anything that has to do with like lubricants um, outside of um, the grease gun, like I do hit the Zerg fittings, like that I do do. But outside of that, like as far as like changing the oil um, or any other lubricants that the mowers require, I don't do that myself. I didn't. I don't even know that. I didn't even realize that the um, the Greens Master required um, hydraulic oil. So if that's if that's a thing, I definitely don't do it. Um, the guys at Jerry Pate take care of that for me. So, uh, good question. Um, Ernest says I'm recovering from surgery and can't mow for two weeks. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. It says, uh, what is the best way to get back to three quarters of an inch without stressing Zeon Zoysia? Eh, I mean, the long route is just to take it down a little bit at a time. So just slowly lower. I don't know what it grew up to. Um, and you said, okay, so you're recovering from surgery. You can't mow for two weeks. So I'm assuming you're saying you've got, it's been two weeks since you last mowed. It's going to be a two-week period with no mowing. Just take it down slowly. I mean, just, just bring it down slowly a little bit, you know, per week. I mean, I wouldn't even say a little bit each time you mow. Every time you mow, every like once a week, um, or sort of every time, every one mowing session per week, take it down a little bit until you can bring it back down to that three quarters of an inch um, height. That's probably gonna be the best way to do it that um, is gonna be less stressful than a full height of cut reset. Um, you're probably still gonna get a little bit of yellowing, but it won't be quite as bad as if you just knock the entire uh, thing down. Okay, uh, Andy Watley, Watley saying, go Hawks. Yeah, man, hopefully they hang in there, man. I'm trying not to get my hopes up too much because, you know, it just, the Atlanta team, man, think about it. Outside of, um, like, the uh, Atlanta, like, uh, Uni Atlanta United, right? Like, the, the football team, like the, like, the real football, like, you know, soccer. Like, we can't get a win, man. Like, we've got some really good facilities and we can't get anybody to win. Um, and then Derek, you know what? I don't, I can't stand Saints. Saints fans are like the worst. You guys do not know. I mean, it's one thing to win. Saints fans do not know how to win gracefully. You guys are some of the most outspoken, like in your face, haha, you guys ain't no good um, fans ever. So, you know, I don't know, whatever. You, you like your team though. So I, I, I can't, I can't hate on you too much, but Saints fans are something else. All right. Uh, JP says, so do you bother greasing your mower at all? Yes, I do. 
Um, I do. I do um, hit the Zerg fittings. The um, I, guess, I call them Zerg fittings. Um, I do that once a month. That's 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 the frequency that I I do those. Um, but yeah, everything else as far as like fluid changes, I don't do that myself. Uh, I take that to a professional so that they can do it along with anything else that they are um, they are doing to the mower to get it cutting its absolute best. Uh, Keon says, thank you for answering our questions. You're very, very welcome. Thank you for coming to hang out. I appreciate it. And uh, let's see, we got uh, uh, Chandler uh, Botchler is saying he's new to a GM1000. He says, new to a GM1000, bought a used, a bot used um, I'm not sure what that is, um, 04052. Um, how do you know when it's time to sharpen versus backlap the reel? Cuts beautifully on the edges, the center, doesn't cut, it almost pulls the grass. Yeah, that's not good. So that's a case where you might want, you, you want to probably take the, um, the reel in. So what I would do, Chandler, is do a paper test. So um, there are two bolts or two, two bolts on each side of the bed bar, the bed bar adjustment screw that, that when you turn them clockwise, they, inc they decrease the, the distance between the bed knife, they make it tighter. The reel between the bed knife, the, the distance between the reel and the bed knife gets tighter, okay? It's the best way to describe it. If you do that like one or two turns at a time and then you check, make sure you're cutting paper, like the reel mower should be able to cut paper all the way across. If it's not doing that and you're, and you're also hearing any kind of contact, like you're hearing like light contact but it's still not cutting paper, that's a good time when it needs to go in um, for sharpening or, um, you know, sharpening versus backlapping. I, I don't really, I don't backlap my, my mower. I usually just take it into, um, to Jerry Payton, let them um, let them deal with it, let them grind it. Um, and in my case, usually what I find is every every three to four mows is when I, I check that, and, and that's when I may have to go in just a little, I have to go in like one 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 click on each side. I'm mowing twelve thousand square feet, so that's a lot of, that's a lot of material, a lot of grass to mow. Um, that is what I find. Every three to four mows, I have to go in like one turn on each side to um, make sure I'm still cutting paper. Um, all the way across. But if you're doing that and it's not cutting all the way across and it sounds like you've got some areas where it's not cutting at all, like so the, the reel is, um, the reel or, and or bed knife have worn where it's maybe slightly out of round, like the reel is maybe coned a little bit. Normally coning happens on one side, but um, in your case, I would take the mower in. I would take it in and get it get it professionally looked at and get them to, to, to fix it, looked at, because um, that's not something you're gonna be able to fix yourself. And you definitely don't wanna keep cranking down the bed bar adjustment bolts to where you know, you're know you getting a lot of interference. That that we don't wanna do, because you can damage the reel and bed knife by doing that. So in your case, I think you're, it sounds like to me, Chandler, that you are due to go in and uh, get, it, get it looked at by a professional. Okay, Craig is in the house. He says, hey, Ron Henry, hope you're doing well, brother. I am, Craig. Thank you so much for checking in. I says, what's your post reel mow maintenance to keep your machine running like a top? Go Hawks. Um, post reel mowing, what I do is I just wash it off. I rinse, I rinse the mower off. I know some people don't do that. They just take it, up, take it after mowing it and stick it back in the garage till the next time. Um, but I tend to mow early in the morning. I like to do it because when it's cooler then, I can get like, it's, it's exercise for me. So I can get out there and just kind of relax and enjoy the, enjoy the mow. Um, and I, because of that, because I mow when there's water or, or clippings on the lawn or there's dew on the lawn, the mower tends to get pretty messy. Like the dew, the, the clippings tend to clump up and get all over the mower. So after mowing, I do rinse the mower off. And that that's outside of that, that's the only post mower maintenance that I really do. I don't do any kind of oiling. I did, I did have heard that some people would put some kind of a oil or lubricant on the bed knife to prevent rust. Um, I don't do that because I, I mow so frequently that it doesn't, there's not really a time for, for mu to rust to form on it. Um, but yeah, that's it. I just, just rinse it off. Rinse it off and stick it back in the garage and good to go. And I just wipe it down. I don't even blow it off with it. I don't even dry it fully. I rinse off the reel and, reel and bed knife area and then I'll wipe down the top of the mower and then put it up till the next day, until our next time I mow. So great question. And when Sherrod says, do not call a Harley a Honda. I am sorry, sir. I know that's like a cardinal sin. I did not, I, listen, it was not intentional. It is not intentional. I, it was a time, listen, on my screen, his avatar picture is like, is tiny. So I, I looked at it and said, oh, it could be like, a, um, what, what's, this, what's the Honda Cruiser? Something Hawk? I don't know, whatever. I, again, I'm not a motorcycle guy, but I thought it looked like a Honda. I'm apologize. I apologize profusely if it's a Harley. I don't, don't, Harley people do not send me hate mail and uh, barrage the comment section with, uh, you know, how can you not know? Harley, Harley looks totally different to Honda. So I'm sorry, hearing. 
Okay, we got some super chats in the house. Um, one from um, Ben. I think we've already got this one. Ben, we'll do it again. Super chat. Thank you so much. Yeah. And then uh, Alan, I think we already got that one. I think, are there any other super chats that I missed? I think I got Josh Abib. There's one down here from LG. Let me get this one. So from LG's in the house. Super chat. He says, it. thanks for the Friday Night Entertainment. You're very, very welcome, sir. He says, Lon is looking mint after the carbon kit and Ecologel products. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to the giveaway. We are getting close to the giveaway, guys. Um, yeah, we're getting close to the giveaway. So it's 9.30 now, too, at the top of the hour at 10, we're gonna do the giveaway. How about that? Because I don't want to keep you guys too much longer. Um, let's get let's get to getting that done. Um, you got, I've kept you guys around long enough. We definitely gotta get that done. And then we got another super chat here from Wise Guy. Super chat. Proceed. He says, uh, Ron, your brand is blowing up. Thanks so much, 100%. Thank you so much, Wise Guy. I really, really appreciate it. And then S. Bender, uh, super chat. Super chat. Says, always you. appreciate your help. I, so I applied image on my nuts edge two days ago. Was planning to mow in the morning, but I haven't watered it in yet. Was waiting for on tomorrow's rain. Wait until after the rain um, to mow. Um, yeah, I probably would. I probably would, um, S. Bender. I probably would. I mean, it, is it? It's six, probably six half a dozen. Probably splitting hairs, but I would. Uh, if it were me, I'd probably. I'd probably wait. I would probably wait. Okay, and again, um, Winchard, I apologize again for calling a Honda, a Harley, a Honda. Did not mean to do it on a purpose, so forgive me. Okay, Trin Dave says, I know most since last year. Uh, no, most since last year. What do you mean last year? You mean last week? He says, going to rotary mow the lawn tomorrow and then use the Out Liberty 43 turf rig to get the new Arden 15 grass ready for real mowing next week. Thanks for helping me. You're very welcome, sir. I don't think you mean last year. Um, because if, it's, if you haven't mowed since last year at this point, we're gonna need more than a rotary mower and the outlet. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you did. Maybe that is what you what you meant. But um, that's that would be. It could be a lot of grass to get rid of if, if that's the case, uh, Trin Dave. Uh, Gary says, "Why don't you try a Celebration Bermuda plot? I need to get my hands on some, um, Gary. I don't think you can get Celebration in seed form. I think it's only in sod. I think. Uh, so I'd have to find somewhere around here to get." a little bit of celebration to put in a planter. It'd be kind of cool because I do love celebration. It does look really good. It does look really good. Uh, Green Archer 77 says, hey Ron, greetings from South California or Southern California, SoCal. He says, I have dwarf fescue that a few patches turn brown from fungus disease. Will this go back to life or will I need to reseed? Thank you. It depends on how bad it is. Um, with Bermuda, it will grow back in. With a cool season grass like um, fescue, I don't know. It depends on how bad the damage was, uh, Green Archer. Assuming you've taken care of it, like assuming you have, um, you've put down your fungicide and you have stopped the spread, like we've stopped the problem, the damage, the grass, the lawn should begin to recover. Uh, but I know, I, I don't know, I'm not familiar with dwarf fescue as, as far as how aggressive it is, as far as if it, it, will, if it will spread and grow in quick, you know, reestablish. It depends on how big the area is too. If we're talking about a few areas where it's just a little bit light, a little bit thin, that will probably recover. But if big sections were destroyed or damaged uh, by the um, by the fungus, that's where reseeding might be a thing. It's not like Bermuda, but like Bermuda will recover as soon as you got enough heat and sunlight, it's just gonna, it'll hulk out and just, it'll just grow in and it'll do its thing, right? But fescue, I don't know for sure. Um, you may, you might have to seed it to get it to recover. But I, I'd only do that after you're sure you've eliminated the fungus, right? So I make sure you put your fungicide down, um, do a follow up app, um, you know, and then make. And then if you need to seed, go ahead and do that. So we're not like fighting against two things. You're trying to grow grass, and the fungus is still trying to kill it. So uh, great questions. Thank you for, uh, for come for coming to chime in from uh, from SoCal. See so again, we got the we got the the uh, Nolans contingent. Go Saints, who that? I hear you, all right, okay. Okay, all right, and um, let's see what else we have here. Um, John uh, Gooley says, I don't even I don't even watch Georgia sports anymore. The Braves disappointed me all throughout the 90s. Man, you, you don't know, you're, you're right. The Braves have always been letting us down. I mean, I, I can still remember the Super Bowl, man. We were winning that game. It was like 28, was it 28-3? 28-3, man, we had, the, we had Brady beat. We had, the, we had him down. And you know everyone was partying at halftime. It was a great time, and then it's just you just I can't even put it into words. It's still it's still painful. Like I have a friend of mine, like one of the instructors at the studio that I train at, um, at Rocks at the, the studio. Like it's still a bad topic for him. Like he's a diehard Falcons fan. He's like a Falcons room in his house, and it's been several years. It's still a bad topic for him. Still a bad topic. Just not not good. You know, it's you have to really. Um, it's, it's, it's tough being a Atlanta sports fan. It's like probably being a Browns fan, probably, you know, all the Browns have gotten kind of good now, but it's like for all those years, being a Browns fan is probably pretty rough. That's what it's like being a Georgia sports fan, unfortunately. 
Okay, uh, Evan says, your thoughts on doing, um, your thoughts on, on some of these guys doing deep core integration um, or aeration with a cordless drills and planning auger. It seems like a lot of work. It can work. I mean, if you've got it, I mean, it's, it's technically the same thing, right? You're removing plugs in your lawn. I would be careful about it because if you've got like one of those really long bits, like you wanna make sure that you're not gonna hit like a sprinkler head, you're not gonna get into irrigation piping. Like don't go crazy deep. I've seen some of these guys and they get the really long bits and they, they run it all the way down almost to like the chuck. I, I don't know if I would do that because um, you never know what you're gonna run into, but it, it is technically it's a way to aerate your lawn. It's a lot of work. If you don't wanna get a hollow tine aerator and you wanna get out there and just, you know, any of a smaller lawn, it can work, it's a strategy. Um, it can uh, it can work, not something I would do on my lawn because it's too much work, but um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's still knocking holes in the lawn and this, the, the dirt that was in the hole is coming out, so it's it's aerating, right? All right, uh, Eric Garcia says, uh, happy Friday, Ron, listening to your Q&A while pulling weeds. Nice, nice. So the two things, you got like uh, lawn care talk in your ear and you and it's pretty rewarding. It is nice to pull weeds, guys, right? Like I, I've got a, a bunch of crabgrass, baby crabgrass that's trying to grow on my lawn now because I didn't put any pre-emergent down. So, you know, this weekend I'll be out there, you know, pulling and plucking out little baby crabgrass. You guys probably can't see it. One, because the grass is mowed so short, but it, it, they are there. They're trying to they're trying to take advantage of the fact there was no pre-emergent this spring and and misbehave, but I'm not going to be having it. I'm not going to have it. I'll get out there and, and knock them down. And uh, Ben Raham says, you're spot on with the water bill. I'm in Sugar Hill, so the rate must be similar. I hit 540 on 6,000 square feet, only 10K square feet to go. Uh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you there, Ben. I hear you. All right, guys. All right, so let's let's see what other questions we got here. Um, LG and Josh are cutting up here about uh, the shirt. Uh, LG did, or Josh did a shirt for LG. That's really, really cool. Um, and then Greg Lyons says, what do you use to get rid of grass in your seed beds um, or in your, in your beds, your flower beds? Um, I don't have any, um, I only have like really big shrubs in my flower beds, um, uh, Greg. So uh, I use glyphosate. I use, that's the one place that I use Roundup is on in that case. You get, if, if you decide to do that, you gotta be really careful. Like don't get it on and the stuff that you don't wanna kill. There probably are better ways. You, if, you, if you actually wanna use something that will target the grass itself, um, that's probably a better route to go like that, um, fungus sale or the, or the one that the one, um, the one, uh, uh, specialty herbicide we were talking about that will, um, that works well against zoysia. It also is rated for ornamentals as well. But in my case, I just use Roundup cause I've only got like really big established shrubs and I just, I'm using it to kill grass that, that gets, that creeps in. So I don't really have anything that I really care about. Um, so that's what I use, but there probably are better ways to do it outside of that. But in my case, that's the one time that I use Roundup um, or anywhere near my lawn. Okay, Joseph, uh, Joseph Roberts has a question, it's an interesting question. He says, have you seen any correlation with low pH in an area that receive AC condensate? I fight crabgrass in this area yearly. I think I should pull a soil test on that area and compare to others. I think you should. I think you should pull a soil test, Joseph, and see. I don't know um, if there's any kind of correlation between AC condensate um, and you know getting more crabgrass in that area. If you need a soil test, the one I recommend is this one, the one from uh, my soil. So um, yeah, I don't know the answer to that one. I've never actually seen that. I can I could do some research and ask the guys at my soil if they have any any um, any thoughts on the matter. But yeah, pull a sample from that area and we can see if there's anything weird going on with that area that we can we can treat, and uh, that would be uh, that would work. All right, wise guy says. Um, hello, Ron and lawn enthusiasts. The bug is the June bug. I believe my May application is working. Uh, so you put something down to target the June bugs. Uh, very cool, wise guy. Glad that you are knocking those back. They are a pain. And uh, Greg Lyon is talking about PGR. He says, I put down growth regulator on my lawn and even though its growth has significantly decreased, the color has turned yellow after being a deep green uh, color a week before. What can I do to get it greener? Okay, so if you just put down PGR, um, you know, the one you're probably using is one that has Trinexapac ethyl in it. What you're seeing, Greg, is completely normal. Like you, you are gonna see yellowing. Um, normally it's only, normally it starts to happen within the first couple of days, but once you start mowing the lawn, it should knock that off, knock those yellow clippings off and the lawn should return to green. As far as things you can help to help bring back the green a little faster. Now, granted, this is something you really should have done when you were putting down the PGR, but if you can put down a little bit of liquid iron and some um, nitrogen, a little bit of nitrogen, and a little bit of iron, that can help the lawn, you know, it's gonna help it grow. It's also gonna help, the iron's gonna help it green up. Um, as far as a good option for that is this product, which is Turfplex. You can get it in the golf course lawn store. This is what I use. I use this and I mix it with a little bit 
of um, of Nutrizolve, which is a micronutrient that has a little bit more iron than the Turfplex does. That combination mixed with um, TNX does really well, with the PGR does really well to reduce how much yellowing I get. So that that is what I would do. But what you're experiencing is completely normal. Just keep mowing your lawn and it, it'll go away. It'll go away. It's not, um, not a negative. Okay, uh, Cars and Exotics has a question about the carbon kit and Headway G. Since I did the carbon kit today as well, what setting do you recommend on the Earthway for Headway G? Great question. Um, so for what I um, use for that uh, uh, Cars and, Michael, uh, and Exotics is a setting of nine. So um, if you look at the setting for Heritage, Heritage G, um, that the label for that guy has spreader settings for you know all kinds of spreaders. I'm not sure why Syngenta didn't include, or at least in, on my examples that I have, the bag doesn't have spreader settings on there for headway, but the prill size between the um, headway and heritage are the same. They're, 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 for the most part, they're identical. They're around the same size. So a setting of nine or 10 with your Earthway is gonna be just fine. That's what I use with mine, and you're gonna be good to go. If anything, go light. So start at like nine, and then you can go up a little bit more if you want. That is that is for the that is for the preventative rate, um, cars and motorcycles, exotics. If you're going at the um, um, the curative rate, so say you got like some brown patch or something in your lawn, you're trying to actually to get rid of it. That's when you're going to want to bump it up to like 12 or 13, um, and that is also spelled out on the Heritage G label. So the Heritage G has the labels. Um, rates for for preventative all the way up to curative and those you can also use with um, headway with good results so hopefully that helps um, and i'll have to ask Syngenta that why there's not um spreader settings on the label for um headway there's a lot of other information maybe they didn't have room maybe that's why and wise guy i appreciate that man he says yeah we're at the top of the hour guys we're about to do the giveaway we're about to find out who won the um the stickers and the hat so if you guys could touch the like button ever so gently. It's free for you guys to use to do. Great way to support the channel, and it sends good vibes to the algorithm. We'll get more people coming here, and it's great fun, and it gives me a chance to take a sip of my lemonade. Uh -huh. All right. All right. Let's see. We're, running, we're winding down on questions. Um, uh, Andrew Mank7 uh, Mank, uh, has a question about PGR. He stops grad. He says, hey, Ron, I'm a guessing... I'm I'm um um I'm a guessing you're a Real Madrid uh, span, uh, fan by your um, avatar. You're definitely a big Real Madrid fan, right? Um, Andrew, just give me a hard time, man. Manchester United, right? This is okay. I'm putting down PGR on some new and established grass, and want to know if it negative negatively affects seedlings. I have um some in that are I'm not sure what you're saying there in pout phase, and wondering if that could adversely impact them. So here's the thing: if you're talking about um, T -nex, TNX only affects actively growing plants, meaning that it has to grow. It ha there has to be foliage, meaning it has to be like like leaf for it to um, for it to begin working. If you are, if the grass hasn't or whatever you're planting hasn't germinated as yet, you should be good to go. In other words, like on the label, it literally says on a bunch of different parts. I guess they've probably gotten questions about this, saying yes, you absolutely can seed. There's no problem with seeding in TNX. It's only when it's, the grass starts growing that this stuff works. I guess they've just gotten tons of questions around that, but if, if it's if it's not growing yet, in other words, if there's not leaf yet, it's not going to negatively affect it. If there is leaf, then yes, it is gonna be taken up and it's gonna suppress like gibberellic acid synthesis is gonna prevent that 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 um, stock growth. It's gonna prevent that top, that vertical growth. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, it's not, it shouldn't kill it or anything like that, but it's just, it is gonna prevent it from growing in faster. Okay, um, Greg Lyons says, uh, did you hear about BYD's accident? It sounds like it happened sometime after Friday's show. Hopefully he'll be back on his feet soon. I have not heard about that. I know he was in an accident with the, with the mail truck, I think, but I think that happened before the live stream. I'll have to reach out to him and find out. I didn't hear about another accident, Greg. If so, I'll have to, after I get off the live stream, I'll have to text him and find out um, uh, what's going on. Hopefully he's uh, he's doing he's doing okay. I, I, no, to answer your question, no, I didn't, I did not hear that. All right, Brad H. He's asking for the secret sauce. He's asking for the for the crown jewels of um, the Super Bowl of lawn care. You know, in my opinion, Fourth of July prep, at least in America, anyway. Right? He says, "Evening, Ron. So let's hear your Fourth of July yard prep. We all know there's a plan for the showpiece and the rest of the yard. Give us a sneak peek of that soon to drop video. So what I'm doing, some of it has already happened, right? So I got my carbon kit down." earlier and I also got my TNX, my PGR down a little bit earlier because you got to figure 4th of July weekend is next weekend 
even though I mix it with the um, Nutrizolve and the um, Turfplex, just to take any chances of any kind of yellowing off the table, I got my PGR application done a little early. So if you guys are trying to get, if you guys are doing PGR the way I do it at the beginning of every month, get it down this weekend. Get it done a few days early so you take away any chance of by this weekend there being any yellowing in the grass. Um, I did my, my normal application of like the same thing. I've, uh, my granular as um, I've not done my uh, I've not done my granulars yet. My liquids have gone down. So this weekend I'll find some time to put down Humic Max. Um, once that goes down, um, that's it. Just really watering watering it in. And then what I will look out for is around Thursday, I'll look and see how the lawn's looking. And if it's if it looks like I, I want a little bit more pop, which knowing me, I'm probably gonna want a little more green, right? I'm gonna put down an application of just Nutrizolve. So nothing else, just Nutrizolve, just to push a little bit more iron to get that extra, that extra wow factor uh, a couple of days later for the 4th of July weekend. So that is my plan. There's not a whole lot changing really. It's just, it's normal, it's a normal thing that I normally do. Um, a little bit earlier so that I take the chance of any kind of yellowing off the table for next weekend. And then I'm going to do Nutris, uh, Nutrizolve probably Thursday to give that extra last boost of iron to get that super fake uh, green look to the turf. That is, that's my plan. So there you go. You got the whole, you got the whole plan. There. I may or may not do a video on it. I'm not sure if you guys want to see that, but maybe I'll do a short video just explaining what I'm doing for uh, 4th of July. Can't hurt, right? Uh, Andrew is talking about uh, Humic Max. He says, I recently switched um, to Humic Max from Melorganite. Not only is it a far superior product and easier to get out, but actually more cost effective. One bag can get through my front yard through summer, unlike Milo. Yeah, that's that's the thing. So that's the thing that people have to realize when it comes to Milo. They look at like Humic Max and say, yeah, it's, it's $69 a bag. It seems expensive. Um, and then Milo is like $17 a bag if you can find it. But you have to look at the coverage rates, right? Like one bag of Humic Max covers 15,000 square feet. And it's not just fertilizer. Like you've, it's also got 9% or 8.9% humic acid in it. So like if you combine those two products where you look, you're talking about a humic acid product and a quality fertilizer that is, you know, very, very fine pearls. So it goes, like you're saying, it spreads beautifully. Uh, it'll work in really tight turf. It works in coolies and it works in all kinds of grass. Um, it's actually a bargain. It's not, it's not any, it's actually cheaper than Milo is to apply. Um, and it's it's a better product. So um, you're, you're, what you're saying is absolutely right, um, Andrew. Absolutely correct. You get a lot, it goes a lot further than a bag of Milo. Uh, two shots of Baca has a question. He says, uh, Ron, what do you think about my watering schedule? 95 degree to 100 degree temps here. So I'm watering at 4 a.m., 10 a.m., 5 p.m., three minutes each zone. Front lawn is about 1,300 square feet. I would probably water a little bit heavier than that, two shots of Baca. I don't know about that, man. Like, um, like, Three minutes for each zone isn't a ton of water. I might do, I mean, here's the thing. Ultimately, how does the grass look? That's the best way I should answer your question. If the grass looks good, keep doing what you're doing. If it looks good, keep rolling with it. If it doesn't look good, um, I might increase those, those um, intervals a little bit. But if it looks good, keep doing what you're doing. Don't change anything. If it doesn't look good, I, I might put a little bit more water. Because three minutes of water, unless you got really high water pressure, isn't a ton of water um, in each of those sessions. But, um, you know, let me know. If it looks good, keep, keep rolling with what you're doing. Okay, uh, he says, uh, Wind Chariot says, since overseeding this spring, will it be okay to do pre-emergent this fall? Yeah, I'm gonna be doing pre-emergent this fall. I'm gonna be doing it later on, a little bit later than I normally do. So normally I do pre-emergent in September. Um, it's probably gonna be like October, November. I'm gonna try a different product. I'm gonna try a product called Coastal, which has two post-emergents and then uh, Prodiamine is a pre-emergent. I'm gonna be trying that out. Um, and I will be putting out pre-emergent uh, this fall. Absolutely, that is definitely going to be a thing. Uh, I am not dealing with a with a with a um, a poanio outbreak in the in the spring. I ain't doing that. So yeah, pre-emergent is definitely absolutely uh, going down. Okay, guys, we're gonna take a pause on the questions because we're gonna, it's about giveaway time. You guys have hung out for long enough, so let's do the first giveaway. So the way this works, guys, um, is we had a question last week around the fertilizer that you were using. The way that you entered, it was super simple. All you had to do is put your comment into, or put a comment into the um, into the uh, live stream once it went live, once it went um, once it was the video, the video was over, once the live stream was finished, and list what what fertilizer you were using. Doesn't have to be Humic Max. Doesn't have to be a fertilizer that I um, use. Doesn't have to be anything like that. Just I just want to know what fertilizer you're using this summer. So those are the requirements for entering. Um, and I said to only enter once because the, the thing that I'm using really will eliminate duplicates. So. Ideally, I want the comment to be about fertilizer, but you know, if someone happens to be chiming in about, as long as you're not like being like a jerk in the comment, then we'll let it count, right? But really the comment should be about fertilizer. Those are the instructions. All right, so let's switch over here to um, my tool, which is the random comment picker. 
So the way this works is I'm gonna take the video from last week. You guys can see like it ends in uh, right here. It ends in 7A8. That is the video. So if I come back over here, that is the one that I've just put in here, right? 7A8. So, the one, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to say fetch. And what it's gonna do is gonna look for all the comments. We're, gonna, we're not gonna allow any duplicates. I told you guys there'd be no duplicates allowed. And it should come back with some number. Okay, so we got 41 people that commented, all right? That added comments that, from uh, the video last week. So this first one, first thing we're gonna do is the Stripe Action sticker, all right? We're doing that one first, followed by the Ron Henry logo sticker, and then followed by the grand prize, a brand new Josh Habib inspired uh, trucker hat. Okay, so first, the Stripe Action sticker, you must be present to win. All right, the first winner for the sticker is, we're picking, you guys are seeing it live, is G Free 301. G Free 301, you have won the um, Stripe Action sticker. Congratulations, sir. If you are still here in the live stream, I hope you are, definitely send me an email to ron at golfcourselawn.com. So this is my um, email address. So send an email to that email address right here. Well, right here that's on the screen, ron at golfcourselawn.com. That is um, to do that, and I will get the sticker in the mail to you. So I'm not sure if you're here in the chat, if we can see if you are like saying, yeah, I won, or if not, if not, we'll just have to redo it. Okay, so that is uh, G free, all right? And actually, I'm gonna take a screenshot of that to, uh, to make sure that we are good to go. Let me come back to, um, to this. All right, all right, okay. So G free, you're the winner for that. And gotcha. All right, so next up is for the logo sticker. So this is, again, brand new, brand new item. Again, thanks so much, Josh Habib. Um, the winner for that, uh, again, G for you've been removed because as you win something, you get removed from the pooling, from the drawing, so you can't win like more than one thing, unfortunately. Okay, so the winner for the logo sticker is I Insane Fitness. So Insane Fitness, if you are in the live stream, definitely chime in. I'm gonna be looking for you in the comment section to see if you are here. If you're not, we'll just redraw it, okay? So Insane Fitness, um, we will do that as well. So we're gonna have you in here. I'm gonna get a screenshot of that. Awesome. And now, now guys, for the one of three trucker hat. Again, get the leather patch on here. Gener generously donated by Josh Habib. The winner for that is, watch, everyone's gonna like leave after this. Our grand prize winner is... Ben S, he says he's using Next Liquids. Ben S, are you in the live stream? So Ben S is the winner for that. I am going to take a screenshot of, uh, of that. I got that. So you guys all need to chime in. I need to see you guys in uh, the comment section. I'm gonna leave this here because you guys will be eliminated um, if you're not, if you don't chime in, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just keep that up and keep looking here in the comments and see if you guys are, are chiming in. So G Free I see. I do see that you are here. I haven't seen anyone else's yet. I haven't seen the winner of this sticker, of the logo sticker, or of the hat. So we're gonna give it a few minutes, guys. So make sure you stick around. We're gonna give it a few more minutes, and um, we'll give it like, uh, let's say we'll give it um, you know, a couple of minutes, and if they don't um, chime in, we'll revisit the, the random picker, and we will redo this sticker, and we will redo the hat, because I think, I think the first one is spoken for. Okay, in the meantime, let me get back to the questions that we have here. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned, because it uh, looks like some people might still have a chance at, at, um, at the hat and at the other sticker. Okay, uh, Alex B says, I apologize if I missed out on the site, but does the golf course lawn store have PGR available? And if not, any plans to add one? No, at this point we don't. Don't carry um, any plant growth regulator. Um, uh, at some point that might change, but um, not not at this point. At this point, you know, you can either get like Primo Max or you can go with Teenex, and I do have links for that that I can get you. So if you want um, a PGR, um, I'm not sure if I have it in here. Let's see. I may or may not have a link for it. I don't, it doesn't, look, doesn't look like I do. But just go to do my own and um, and check there and uh, and yeah and and get and get you a, a bottle of uh, of Teenex. That's what I would uh, go with Alex B. Um, I'd like to see if I can get it in smaller quantities. That'd be really cool, but um, it's, it's, it's been kind of tough to make that happen. All right, all right. Um, so I don't have a winner, guys. We don't have a winner as yet for the sticker or for the hat. So we're gonna have to go back. It's gonna have to happen. We're gonna have to go back, guys. So LG, um, hang in there. Don't feel too bad. I'm gonna go back to the, to the drawings. We're gonna redo um, the sticker first. So this one first, we're gonna do another winner for that. So I'm gonna get rid of Ben S. 
Uh, ben S, you were not here when we were calling. So we're going back to the sticker. The winner for this, because neither one of you guys were there for, for either one of these. The winner for the sticker is uh, Dejendra Rajak. He uses 16.4 PGF from the Anderson. So Dejendra, if you are here, show up, chime in, say, hey, uh, yes, I'm here. Oh no, actually, no, Ben says, <laughs> oh, Ben says he's here. Okay, so Ben, you look like you did win that. Okay, so Dejendra, we're going back to, um, to this. So it looks like the winner for um, the sticker is all we got left. So Ben, um, so Ben, it, you are here. Definitely leave me, um, send me an email with your email with your mailing address, Ron at golfcourselon.com. You got this, you got the email right here. And um, the winner of the sticker is Dejendra. So we're gonna give that a couple of minutes, see if he pops in, he or she pops in, so we can get that out. So I think um, G Free is spoken for, and Ben, uh, <laughs> you are spoken for on the hat. Um, LG, be nice, be nice. There's going to be other giveaways. Josh has got, is, you know, he keeps sending me swag, so I'm going to keep giving giveaways. So there'll be other, uh, Primo products as well. So, um, we're going to see if Desendra's not here. There's still a chance at the sticker. So don't, you know, don't, uh, don't go away just yet. Okay. Let's, uh, we have other questions here. Um, so Evans is, um, is having a question about spreading Scott's, uh, using a granular product, using a Scott spreader. He says, if spreading any Scott's Grinder product in an Earthway spreader, then you put the Earthway setting at plus 10. What's the Scott's broadcast setting is on the bag per Earthway tech support? Okay, so Earthway is saying um, that whatever the setting is, it's, pl it's, pl it's 10 more than the Scott's setting. So in other words, like 15 for Earthway is the equivalent of five for Scott's. Okay, well, if, if, if the tech support said that, um, I would, I guess we can, we can roll with that. I don't, I don't know. That's, I have, I have to look at that and see, I have to get two spreaders and compare them and make sure that's the case. But, um, I, it, I guess it makes sense. Cause yeah, the earthway, the, the settings are higher as far as, um, you know, like a, a 10 on an earthway is much smaller, is much smaller opening than 10 on a, uh, on a Scots. 10 on a Scots is like almost wide open. It's pretty, not quite wide open, but it's a, it's a lot bigger opening than an earthway. So yeah, that might actually be true. Uh, thanks for sharing that Evans. That's a good, that's a good tip. It's a great tip. Okay, uh, let's see what are the questions we um, we got going on here. And uh, Justin is here. Justin Cumming, he says, good info on your videos. I live in the Caribbean where there are only two seasons, rainy season and dry season. We're in the Caribbean, man. You got to tell us, Justin. He says, uh, temperature is an average 85 year all, all year round. Zoysia is green year round. Yep, that's cool, man. Yeah, that is true. Island life is really, it's either rain or it's either dry or it's not dry. But it's, it's pretty much hot year round. It's pretty much hot uh, year round. Um, very, very, uh, very good. Matthew Wimberly is talking about a mower he just picked up. Thanks so much, uh, Matthew. He says, uh, hey, Ron, enjoying the content info. I picked up my GM1600 today from Joey at Jerry Pate here in Atlanta. That's awesome. I like Joey. Joey's a great guy. He says, new bed knife and real grind, and he spoke highly of you. Great company and so helpful. Awesome to hear that. I'm glad. I always like to hear that. Whenever I send people to a company that whenever they have a good experience, um, that always makes me feel good. So I'm, I'm always nervous about that. So, uh, so yeah, I'm glad to hear that Joey is doing you right. He's taking care of you. Guys, I don't think our winner is. I don't think um, he's here for the sticker. We're going to have to go back. We are going to have to revisit back to our random comment picker. All right. So, so Dejendra, you are not here. So we'll eliminate you. We're down to 37, guys. So again, in for the sticker. Uh, the winner is, we're gonna select LG. See, LG, you got the sticker. Now listen, do not, listen, LG, don't be sour. Do not be sour. Uh, do not be in there saying, I wanted the things. I know how you can be. I know you can be kind of salty. You can be a little prima donna sometimes. But as you can see, the according to the uh, sticker, the, to, the, to the comment um, uh, picker, you are the winner of the sticker. So this is a start, man. Normally you had a really dry spell there where you couldn't win anything. And this is, this could be a change from new things, man. This could be a start. So, uh, so you won. And if you don't mind, sir, send me your address, ron at golfcourselon.com. And I will get these out to you guys. So G free Ben with the, um, with the hat and then, um, LG with the sticker. So you have, you guys have got that. So everyone I think is, uh, spoken for and your losing streak is not over LG. You can't, uh, you can't say that you don't have a losing streak anymore. All right, great. I'm glad. So we're all good. We're gonna do another giveaway guys. Not tonight. We'll do, but I'll, I'll plan another one. We'll do another giveaway. Cause these are fun. You guys seem to really enjoy them. And Josh keeps sending me swag that I can't possibly all use. So, uh, why not give it away to you guys and, uh, and keep it fun. 
Uh, Moro has a question. He says, uh, what application would you use for the release 901C? So yeah, 901C is kind of a cool product in the sense that it is a combination fertilizer and, re and release zero. So really all 901C is, is this. It's release zero with 9% nitrogen and 1% potassium. So it's like if, for people that don't want to... Um, that don't want to have to do multiple products. They don't want to do turf plex. They just want like one and done. As far as fertilization goes, 901C, right? That's that's all you need. Um, as far as application rates, I want to say the, the label is anywhere between two to seven ounces per thousand. So it just depends on um, you know how far you'd want to go. For me, I'd probably go at like six ounces per thousand since we're using it also for the fertilization properties, not just for the um, soil amendment, just not for the, the micronized carbon aspect of it. So I'd probably do that at like six ounces per thousand uh, Moro. Um, but yeah, it's a great product. I, I used it some last year as well too, but um, but because I know that some people have liquid ferts that they like, that's why I didn't opt to go with um, 901C in the carbon kit. I said, you know what, I'm gonna do release zero, that way people can use whatever, whatever liquid fert they want, and I'm not gonna force a liquid fertilizer on them. So that's why you notice that the only thing with any kind of like NPK in it is um, the Nutri kelp, and it's a very small amount of each of those. So a uh, good point. So hopefully that helps, sir. And um, Rayon Moore is in the house. He says, uh, hey, Ron, just joining. Sorry, I'm late. I bought and I bought and used T-Nex. It works well. Grass is looking good. I went from mowing three times per week to once per week. I'm so impressed with T-Nex. Awesome, man. I'm glad you're having a good result with it. And it, it is true. As long as you apply it at the right rates, it's really not that scary or difficult to use. And it, it does make a big difference. It really does. If you can get past a little bit of yellowing, um, <clears throat> a little bit of yellowing that you get when you first put it down, uh, it's uh, it's good to go, good to go. All right, let me take a sip here, and it uh, looks like we have a, a motorcycle war here in the chat. Mm. Duncan Brown saying the Hondas are built to tie their specs. Now you guys need to behave. I don't want I don't want this to be a return to like a Harley versus Honda thing, um, but it's probably just going to happen. It's like it's like uh, it's like Ford versus Chevy, right? Okay. Uh, um, Rawlings Johnson is, um, is talking, he says, you may have already mentioned this, but did the, uh, chucklehead that ran over your grass own their mistake? That was egregious. Yeah, they did. Amazon came through. They paid for the damage. They paid for me, like, getting the irrigation fixed. And, uh, you know, so yeah, we're, so we're all good. We're all squared up. You know, mistakes happen. Um, I don't understand how you run over it on the way in and on the way out. That's kind of hard, but it happens, I guess. They're in a rush. You know, in their defense, they got a lot of packages to deliver, so... That's probably some of it. Uh, GC says, hey, Ron, I just got my soil test results back. My low, my N is low and high. Uh, my N is low. Um, P is high. The phosphorus is high and uh, K very low. pH also came back very low at 4.3. That is very that is very low. Working the pH, um, so when the pH comes up, will it change? What is available to my turf, my turf tough, type, my, the TTTF, the tall fescue? Anything you can add. Um, send me the soil test results if you don't mind, uh, GC. Um, send them here, Ron at golfcourselon.com so you can take a look at them. But lime is going to be your life. You're going to be putting lime down like pretty heavily for a while, probably a couple of seasons to really get that up. Because 4.3 for pH, if that's actually what it is, is actually very acidic. That's very, very, uh, that's very low. Um, so if you can send me, um, send me, send me a, a copy of the soil test results so I can just take a look at them. Um, and yeah, just lime is going to be your jam, man. Um, whether it's uh, dolomitic lime or calcitic, as all depending on whether magnesium levels are low as well. But uh, yeah, lime, lime, and more lime. That's going to be your thing. Uh, Roman Vermont has a question about uh, leveling a lawn. He says, hey, he says, uh, how do you get a bumpy Zion Zoysia yard flat to real mow with a Fiskars real mower. Uh, the same way you would do it with any other um, mower, like rotary or even like a powered real mower. You're gonna be top dressing it, um, Romain. So um, what I'd recommend doing is if you have not seen my video on top dressing, I did one uh, about a month and a half ago at this point, almost two months ago, on top dressing. It's got, it's got the thumbnail, it says ultimate guide. Um, and I'll send that to you here in the chat so you can check it out. So at uh, Romain Vermont. There, that video um, shows the process that I use to top dress my lawn. It's, in a nutshell, you're gonna aerate, you're gonna put down a combination of fertilizer and soil amendments to help improve the quality of the soil, and then you're gonna top dress it. In that video, I also talk about overseeding as well, but you're not gonna be doing that. So just when you get to the overseeding point, I mean, I'd like you to watch the entire video, but when you get to the overseeding point, you can stop watching there, because you're not gonna be doing that. You're gonna be doing the top dressing part, which is the first part of the video. So just watch that. Um, you still got time this year to do it, uh, and that will uh, that will tell you um, the process that, that I recommend you use for leveling uh, a lawn. You know, any kind of lawn, but uh, for your Zeon Zoysia lawn, that should work uh, uh, really, really uh, well. 
And yes, I do agree the Falcons are uh, disappointing. And you've converted to the Eagles. Oh, I mean, I don't know about that. I don't know if I'd go that far. Uh, but yeah, as, and then Winchester is saying, goat, Brady is the goat. He is the goat. I mean, you know, you, you got when, you, when you're good, you're good. I mean, Brady left New England, went to the Bucks, and then won a Super Bowl there. So you, if anyone was going to say this man is not the best ever, kind of hard. You can't. You got to You got. You got to. You got to. Like I say, when you're good, you're good, man. When you're good, you're good. And you go to, go to a new team, and uh, you still win a Super Bowl. Kind of, it's kind of hard to argue against him being uh, being the goat. So uh, I still don't like him because you know he he did my Falcons like that, but really the Falcons did it to themselves. Like Brady didn't win that much game as much as the Falcons just just completely blew it. Okay, uh, Drizzle says applied caravan G a few weeks ago is a fungicide. Um, it's the truth. I had a grub issue for two seasons ago. When is the best time to apply apply a pesticide? Okay, so with um, caravan G, okay, when you say a pesticide, are you talking? I mean. I mean, technically, um, like, I think you mean insecticide, but technically an insecticide is a type of pesticide, right? So, but yes, um, to take care of grub issues, you could start with that earlier in the season, uh, Dwizzle. You could do it now if you want, and Caravan G um, does that. It's a combination insecticide and fungicide. So if you put those down, you're good to go for this season, as far as, like, an insecticide goes. Um, next season, if you want to try something that's even more effective and, it's, and is, is also better for pollinators and won't harm things like earthworms, Give a Celepringy a look. It's a little bit more expensive product, but as far as like best in class for uh, as far as granular insecticides go, that will also take care of grubs um, and annual bluegrass weevils and a bunch of other nasties that mess up your lawn. Like a Celeprin is excellent, but again, you don't uh, Caravan G is a great option. You put that down, you should be good to go for the rest of the season as as far as insect as far as um insecticide goes. So uh, good stuff. Thank you so much for uh, for letting us know. And then Chris Balducci's in the house. What's going on, man? And then we got Real Rollers in the house, man. What's going on, Real Rollers? What's going on, Lee? Lee and or Andrew and Eric. Uh, what's going on, guys? Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, hopefully the turf park is doing well. I got to get over there, man. I haven't seen you guys in a minute. Got to see what you guys are um, are doing and, and what you guys have been up to. Um, and then LG being like, uh, you know, he's a Chiefs fan. I mean, LG, you say you're a Chiefs fan. How long have you been a Chiefs fan? You've been a Chiefs fan because of Mahomes or you like been a die hard Chiefs fan? We got to know. You can't be a Johnny Come Lately Chiefs fan. You know, I got I to gotta call you out. I'm probably going to catch grief for that one. All right. Um, and then Duncan Brown uh, is talking about uh, the neighbor. He says, uh, says, hey, Ron, did your, is it true that, that use of iron over time uh, results in less and less return in, turn, in terms of dark green up? Um, my, Bermuda, my Bermuda is not responding to iron apps um, like it has in previous years. Um, I don't know about that. I mean, anything, in, anything to excess is going to lose. I mean, it, there's, you, know, you, you begin to lose the, the benefits of it. But I mean, if your lawn is deprived of iron and you apply it to your lawn, you should see a response. You should see a response from that. As far as it um, offering less and less of a return over time, I've not really heard that, Doug. It might, that might be true, but I've never ever heard that from anyone that, that that's actually the case. Um, if your iron levels are good, in other words, if your iron levels are already where they need to be, um, I could see you getting less out of adding additional iron to your lawn. But um, if they are low or even if they're just in the barely in the optimal zone, like giving it an iron spike, you should see a response. So that's that's I think um, what I would I would probably see more so than to say that, you know, if you just use iron every year, that after a while it just stops working. I, I, don't, I don't think that would be the case because because that would be true for everything else. Right. Like nitrogen, you apply it every year and it's used, um, you know, and your lawn still or meat anyway, needs nitrogen regularly to do well. So I don't I don't think there, I don't think so. I not heard that, but it could be true, but I don't, I don't believe that to be the case. Okay, Duncan Brown says, um, hey, Ron, did your neighbor get rid of those wheel marks by his sidewalk after leveling? Those are actually me. Has he changed his mowing pattern more frequently? And I still have those, and I, I need to start varying my mowing pattern. The problem is, is the sidewalk is about this wide, right? It's about this wide. So literally, I've got to go like, you know, like pass, move down, pass, move down, pass. It's going to look really, it's going to take forever to mow it, but I got to do it because it's looking really ugly, and, and it, if I keep doing this, it's going to get worse. So um, I've just got to change up my mowing pattern and do something about that. So it's just, it's, it's irritating um, that that's the case. And it's true. It's not only happening there. It's happening in another spot where I mow in the swale area where I tend to mow the same way each time. That's where I see it. And the back lawn where the mowing pattern changes after every mow, no issues there at all. But it's only in the areas where, like to your point, Duncan, where um, the mowing pattern tends to be fixed because it's such a narrow spot. Like mowing it in any other way tends to be kind of difficult. So I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and start mixing it up to try and um, get rid of the that washboarding, that waviness that you that she pointed out. So uh, good point. You when you watch the live stream, man, you uh, you you remember that. So thanks for for bringing that up. 
Uh, two Trella has a question about um, about Tiff Tough. He says, "Please help. I got some sod laid, and it's Tiff Tough. It's about four weeks old. Is there? Uh, there's really a bad ball spot near the sidewalk. Any advice on how to cure it? Okay, so we got to figure out why um, it's bald. So um, you said you had the Tiff Tough, and it's only been four weeks. So four weeks is not that old. Uh, if the sod was put there, and that spot is bald, what we might check um, to Trilla." is make sure there's no kind of debris or any kind of garbage under the sidewalk. I, I, I did a video here recently on lawn debris and how bad it can get. That you've, If you've not seen it, it's gonna give you horror stories. I mean, hopefully this is not the case um, in your lawn, but um, but yeah, check, especially since it's near concrete, check to make sure that whenever they poured your sidewalk, they didn't like um, over pour and just leave a big chunk of concrete um, under the sidewalk or something, and that's that's now causing uh, the grass to struggle in that area. That's that's something I, I might check because it's it's definitely a thing. Whenever they dug up the, whenever um, Austin was here to fix the sprinkler system, and he was fixing the, um, the the irrigation pipe right next to the driveway, what do you think came out? A little chunk of concrete about this big. It's about eh, about eight inches under the under the away from the surface, so the grass was growing fine, but there was still a big chunk of concrete about yay big down there. And that video um, to Trilla is here so take a look at that one you can see how bad it can really get as far as like foreign stuff and material getting in your uh, in your lawn and uh yeah check that out and and stuff all right so real rollers lee's chiming in he says uh hey he says hey ron let's do a video together showing how to bring down a lawn mid-season uh that's uh that's even uh rotary mower expectation challenges and results two to four weeks later I've got us a great test plot. Yeah, man, that'd be cool. That'd be cool to try out. It'd be cool. I think people would want to see that. We'll definitely have to get together and uh, and see if we can make that happen. Sounds sounds like fun. Always down to do collabs. You know me and collabs, man. I like my collabs. It's always fun. Always fun to hang out with you guys. Okay, I think I've already answered that question, Doug M. Already answered that one. And um, I got, and we have another question here from Robert uh, Mahoris around PGR. He says, sorry, I just joined tonight. You're still here, man. No worries. You're late, but you're still here. He says, what time frame should I be worried about if it rains? I'm putting down 12% iron um, and crabgrass control. Okay, so I think it's two questions there. Okay, so PGR, um, as long as you can get, as long as it dries, that's that's the short answer, right? I, I, I always say like six hours is good. I'm going like six hours with no rain because that's really going to give it enough time to dry on the grass. Um, but um, six hours and it should be rain fast, um, at least teen is anyway, uh, Robert. You should be good to go from that standpoint. As far as, um, you know, whatever you're putting down that has 12% iron and crabgrass control, I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure if there's a PGR that actually has all that in it. There's a granular that does all that. But um, as far as the, um, the crabgrass control and iron, uh, if they're designed to kill the, grab, the crabgrass um, foliarly by being picked up by the leaf, you're going to want it to do it when there's not when it's not going to be rain in the forecast. Um, I don't even know what products you're using, but if it's one that has to be foliar absorbed, um, you want to let there be some dry weather after you apply it, um, so it can be taken up and then it'll be more effective against the crabgrass. That's that'd be my only uh, thing. But again, you have two questions in one: um, PGR six hours. The other two, um, if they're foliar absorbed, when there's not going to be rain for a while, because you want to make sure they um, they pop in. You are very welcome, um, uh, G Free. You're very welcome. And uh, Robert is saying that um, Coastal is a great pre-emergent. He uses it. That's awesome. And then Ben is here. He's the hat winner. I'm glad you won, Ben. Congratulations again. And then Ben says, we all win supporting Ron. I watched last week after the fact. First time I missed in live in months. Here for the lawn info and fun. No regrets whatsoever yeah man and then uh the habib merch is awesome yeah if he is yeah josh man josh is is um he's a, he's a connoisseur when it comes to merch you know what i mean he's like yeah i don't i want a patch in the hat i want you know i don't want i want this kind of t-shirt material you can tell he's a very picky guy when it comes to these things but then we all benefit from it you guys get to get some cool merch and uh it's really awesome stuff and there's gonna be more to come there's gonna be more stuff to come i got like another hat that i'll probably do at some point if i can part with it um, and, uh, you know, some other things as we go along. Since you guys seem to enjoy it, we'll keep doing it, right? Uh, so awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Sea Hill says, I've used different firsts over many months and have found that Cubic Max will be next level. That, that is my go-to. But I tell my neighbors, it's Milo. <laughs> Your domination is real. Man, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Sea Hill, how are you going to do them like that, man? You can let them know. Let them, here's the thing, you need to let them know to go and buy Humic Max because we need to sell a lot of it. Of it. The more Humic Max that I'm able to sell this season, um, 
that increases the likelihood that we'll be able to bring another Lebanon turf fertilizer, another country, another fertilizer in their country called Blind uh, next season. It's not going to happen this season, but it increases the likelihood of that. But I mean, it's just, you know, Country Club or Tumic Max doesn't sell as well. It's going to be harder to make that argument, right? So, uh, so I mean, share the love, man. Even if your neighbor gets Humic Max, if they're not doing everything else you're doing, in other words, if they're not mowing as much as you're mowing, they're not going to get the results. So there's no harm in sharing sharing the furt and, uh, you know, letting them get some of that good, good too. Don't uh, don't hold back from it. Definitely don't tell them it's Milo. I mean, that's, that's, that's just dirty, man. You're giving them bad information, man. I mean, Milo's a good furt, but it's not Humic Max. I mean, you, know, you, can't, you, can't, you can't do them like that. Okay. Um... Let's see. Uh, Moro Marcillo has a question at Real Rollers. Do you guys carry a grooved reel for uh, Flex Twenty One? I don't know. I don't think I'm not sure if they carry grooved rollers for um, Toro mowers. I'm not sure, but I'm sure if they do, they will chime in. And um, I'm gonna see what other questions uh, we got here. We're probably winding down, guys. I think you guys, um, you guys all stuck around for the giveaway, and we will be doing more. You guys seem to like it. It's a lot of fun. Um, more than anything else, it's just fun to watch. Um, uh, LG, like he go to go through all the peaks and valleys of like, you know, pain and suffering and thinking, you know, he's never going to win in an elation to all the way to literally doing the running man in his garage. So, uh, I would love to see video of that, <laughs> but I'm glad you won, man. You know, I know you are a, a regular, so it's really cool that, um, that you were able to get a sticker. Maybe next time be the hat, man, but at least this is, this is still unique. You can be the first person in the country outside of Josh of you and myself to actually have one of these. So that's, that's kind of cool too, if you're uh, a sticker buff. Uh, Christian O'Connor says, thanks for acknowledging my question. Lesson learned is don't wait to top dress after aerating. Made it easier for the tree sprouts to find a new surface nightmare. Uh, yeah, I hear you, man. Yeah, definitely um, aerating and top dressing are two things that go really, really nicely together. So yeah, uh, no worries on uh, that. Um, and then uh, G Free says, thanks for the sticker, Ron. I'm going to put it on my Scott's 20 inch push mower. Do you still have yours? I do. I still have my, my, my 20 inch. It's still in the garage. I don't, I don't use it, but it's still um, in the garage, taking up space, you know? But uh, I have not gotten rid of it. Can't, you can't get rid of your, 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 your old, your first love, right? Not yet. I mean, at some point, it probably may have to go somewhere, but I mean, right now, I still, I still have it. All right. So Nyan has a question about uh, getting that dark green look for the force. So everybody's now on the, on the 4th of July. Uh, train. What can we do? He says, hi, Ron. What should I use to give that dark green look for the fourth? I plan on putting down Lebanon Turf tomorrow. Should I put down Ironite? Um, so yeah, the, so Lebanon Turf Humic Max is a good option. You got plenty of nitrogen. That's going to help uh, drive the growth. That's going to help just make everything else work well. Um, Ironite's a good option too. Ironite's a good product. I've not personally used it, but everyone that I've seen that's used that product seems to really like it. Okay. Really good product. So if you are also open to spraying, right? Cause you, the two odd products you mentioned there, I think are both granular. If you're open to spraying, um, consider using like that, um, the, uh, the Nutrizolve, right? The Turfplex or the Nutrizolve. Nutrizolve probably more so because that's got like, uh, I think it's two or 3% iron in it. That's going to give you that quick green up. So, so what we can do is tomorrow, go ahead and put down your Lebanon turf, put down ironite if you already have it, that's fine. Do the same thing I'm going to be doing. Look at the lawn around Thursday and say, uh, is it green enough? Do I like how this looks? If you're like most lawn care people, you're probably going to say, no, not green enough. In that case, you're going to get the Nutrizolve out, assuming you, assuming you have some, and spray that at like the six ounce per thousand rate. So at the low rate, and that's going to give you that extra pop. Like the, the one thing I've seen with the Collagel products is kind of crazy. I'm not sure what exactly why, but um, they, you get a response from them very, very quickly. Um, granted, I always mix them with a carbon kit with release zero. So that is definitely helping. But like literally you put it, you'll spray it. And then a day or two later, it's like you're going to see a response. You're going to see a noticeable improvement in the color of, of the turf. So um, that is the only thing I would do. And then Nyan, you can get that at the golf course lawn store. Let me come back here and I'll show you. Uh, that so Nutrizolve. This is what I'm talking about. Is uh, this product Nutrizolve with C Extra? You can get this at uh, the golf course lawn store, and it's in stock and shipping. Um, shipping now. That is what I would go with as the plan to get the lawn. It's best looking for uh, the fourth of July. Um, um, Insane Fitness says, made it, finally made it, Ron. It's after I sent you uh, pics about my irrigation trenches, my whole. Yard uh, flooded and washed out. Um, after all the level mix, I had to go back and saw it. Everything else, always something. LOL, Zach. Yeah, it, there is always um, something. Always something, Zach. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry about that. And uh, you know, at least, at least, um, 
at least you well you still, I mean you still have enough time in the season that even if you go back and um and resod it, you still have plenty of time for the, everything to root in and do pretty well. So don't sweat it. It will um it will bounce back. You'll be all fine. Okay, we have a question here about uh, McLean uh, reel mowers. Uh, Jason Knight has a reel mower question. Always like those. It says, uh, hi, Ron, I'm thinking um, about purchasing a McLean real um, GR real mower with a Honda engine. I wonder your thoughts are on that mower. Okay, so okay, if if you can get, here, here's how I make my decisions around choosing mowers, Jason. Before you buy the McLean, make sure there's somewhere in that area that you can get its service. So as far as like parts, as far as a place that can grind the reel, um, those kinds of things, make sure there's a place nearby that can work on it. That's thing one. Um, if that's the case, then, then that's that, that puts it as an option. Um, I personally, I am not personally a huge fan of the drive system, the propulsion system of the McLean, but that doesn't really matter because there's people that have the McLean, they love it, they get great results with it. So just because I am not a fan of it doesn't mean that it's not a good mower. Um, if it were me, if I were buying a mower in the McLean, um, like in that category, I would, I would much faster buy a true cut before I go with a McLean. Um, I just, I just would. Uh, that would be my my choice. Um, the good thing you're saying is you're getting the Honda, you're getting the Honda engine. So um, that's going to be make it really reliable. You're not going to have problems with starting. It should do really really well, um, and no issues whatsoever there. But yeah, I mean, if you got the McLean, if you want to get the McLean, you're definitely bound on that one. That's the mower for you. Go for it. Enjoy it. Um, just make sure that before you buy it, there's somewhere nearby that can actually service it. Um, same thing for the True Cut. Same thing for a Greens mower. Whatever you get, make sure there's a place nearby that can actually um, get parts. And uh, LG saying he has been a Chiefs fan since 1990. Okay, so you, you're you're a diehard Chiefs fan. So you, you uh, you've earned um, the chance to, to enjoy Patrick, all the all the glory Patrick's giving you guys uh, uh, these days. Okay, uh, Patrick in Texas has a question about top dressing. He says leveling with sand. After spreading and then leveling um, with my leveling rake, I used a broom to bring the grass blades up. Did I mess up? No, uh, you did it. I think you did it right. So you you put the so you put the leveling mix down. So you use a leveling rate to work it in. That sounds good. And then you use a broom to kind of expose the grass blades. That's fine. That works just fine. I mean, you can use the leveling rate to do the same thing, but a uh, but a broom like a shop broom with grass blades that'll work just fine too. Yeah, either 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 strategy works. Um, I think I've actually got videos actually talking about using that um, on on that topic. Actually, there's actually a video that actually is all about what to do after top dressing. Like I say, so you get, you just finished top dressing your lawn. Um, what now? Like literally that's the name of, that's what the, the thumbnail is. So Patrick, so if you just finished doing it, Patrick, and you're looking for um, some feedback at Patrick in Texas, check out this video. That video is literally about what to do right after you finish top dressing your lawn to get the best um, possible result, in my opinion. There's people that have different views, but that is what I do on my lawn and I, I get a pretty good result after uh, top dressing. Okay. Um, uh, Bama says, hey Ron, do you have any footage of your lawn when you bought the home? I've got a couple of pictures. You can actually see them at the Golf Course Lawn Academy. So if you go to the golf course, if you go to golfcourselawn.com, which is where um, my training course is, the golf, the golf Course Lawn Academy, the video that's there, the trailer, the intro video, if you play that, like um, like the first few seconds into that video, it's gonna show like how the lawn looked when I when I when we first moved in here. When I first moved in, like what the lawn looked like. Um, it shows like the sod looking really disgusting, and it shows um, the crabgrass that was everywhere. So the lawn did not look very. It was not a nice lawn when I started. It taken a lot of work to get to get it to where it is now. So go go to golfcourselawn.com um, and, and play the trailer. And near, it's near the beginning. I don't know exactly what section, but near the beginning, there's gonna be a portion where I show you like what the lawn looked like and then what it's transform to and then if you that's where you can see some some snippets of what the lawn um what the lawn used to look like and you can see how far it's come because you can see what it looks like uh today very cool uh travis says hey ron do you know um i have an alternative for humic max because it cannot ship to virginia um not races does site one carry it most site ones do not carry um, Humic Max. They don't care. Not that I know of anyway. But what I would do is I'd consider going to Site 1 and seeing what they do carry from Lebanon Turf. Go there and see, hey, what do you guys have um, from them, from, from the Lebanon uh, line? If, if, if possible, you, if you can get something out of their Country Club line, that would be better. 
Um, but even like ProScape, that's a great fertilizer too. Like I use fertilizer, I use ProScape for a while, and that's that's I've had great results with that. So anything from Lebanon turf is going to be it's going to go just well, work really well on your lawn. Um, just check with site one; they usually have it or they can get it. Uh, the people that have went and asked them for Humic Max because it's kind of a specialty product. It's a newer one that Lebanon Turf just came out with. Um, they they want to they want people to commit to like a whole pallet or something like that. Like they won't they won't even they won't bring in just a couple of bags. In other words, unless you're buying a lot of it. Um, they probably won't won't bring it in just for that. So uh, hopefully that helps. Plus, yeah, and then he makes a good point here. Insane Fitness says they don't sell it because they also have uh, Lesco products. So that's that's another part of it too. They don't want to bring in fertilizers to compete with um, the stuff that they uh, already sell. Very, uh, very good. Um, thank you for checking in, Robert. I really appreciate you. As always, thanks for coming to hang out in, uh, in the live stream. And... Um, well, we got um, MJ Young is really, really asking the question with Bermuda will eventually push other grass out of the way. You've asked a million times, so I'll answer it once. Uh, not really. It depends, man. It really depends. Not not really. The whole thing of like Bermuda killing or push or eliminating another grass, like it's a very aggressive grass. Like, so it will it spread and um, like integrate well or integrate like fully with other grasses? Yeah, it's one that's going to do that better than say something like a rye grass. But um, if you're talking about a lawn that has like St. Augustine in it and Bermuda and you're trying to get rid of the St. Augustine, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a challenge because both those grasses are really stubborn. They're really difficult to get rid of. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, to, it's it, it, eventually over time, what you will find is that you will end up with an evenly distributed mutt lawn. But as far as like one grass dominating and completely eliminating another grass, um, using like an example of St. Augustine, if you start mowing Bermuda like how I mow it, like at, like at half an inch, like super, super short, yeah, that's going to allow Bermuda to eventually get rid of the St. Augustine because St. Augustine isn't going to tolerate that, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be stressed all the time and eventually it's going to die off and it's going to make it easier for the Bermuda to spread and harder for the St. August Augustine to do well. So in, by your mowing practices, by your cultural practices, you can help one grass to do better than another. But as far as like just time, Bermuda getting rid of another one, um, not um, not as quickly as you as you might hope for, um, MJ. Um, Moro has a question about um, AccuGage. He says, question, what is AccuGage's readings in? Uh, they're in thousandths of an inch, uh, Moro. Um, he says, for example, what is 0.63 in inches? Can't figure it out. Okay, so um, if we look at it this way, if you look at like... Um, if you take if it's if yours is in inches, I think they make gauges in millimeters, but I think yours, I think most of the gauges are in inches. If you have like um, if you're if you're um, if you get to like one thousandth one thousand as your measurement, right? That is one inch. So 0.63 or six hundred thirty thousandths is like uh, 0.63 inches. So that's just over half an inch. That's around is that around five eighths thereabouts, something like that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's just over half an inch. So you can think of it from a standpoint of, um, think of it in tenths. Take that, take that number and say that's 0.63 inches. Okay. That's, that's the way to, um, that's the way to look at that. So 0.5, so 500 thousandths or, or so 500 thousandths would be half an inch. My, my mower is set up for 0.495. So 495 thousandths, which is just under half an inch. So think of that number in terms of a percentage of an inch. So 0.63 or 63, you know, 0.63 of an inch. That's the best way to, to explain it. Hopefully that helps, um, helps um, Moro. Very, uh, very, very good. Um, and uh, Two Trillos says, um, thanks, thanks for the video, Ron. I'm um, getting out tomorrow to on the lawn to, and trying this out. And then Sean Heath has a question saying, what a season do you use Ironite from Bermuda? Um, I would put it down whenever it's actively growing, Sean. So now is probably fine. Um, also, like in the in the late spring, into the, whenever the lawn is actively growing, kind of like any other fertilizer. Because remember, iron just like nitrogen is um, it's a nutrient, and you want to give it to the lawn or give it to the turf whenever the grass can actively make use of it, right? So whenever it's actively growing um, is when you'd want to do it. So now would be fine. You could have done it earlier in the spring. That would have been fine too. Um, but yeah, whenever the act, the grass is actively growing is. Uh, is what you want to go with. And uh, I think, and guys, I think that is the last question for the evening. I think that's it, guys. Well, um, I don't have anything else for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate it. To, to all the winners, be sure to send me an email. So ron at golfcourselawn.com. Send me your email with your mailing address of where you want the stuff to go. I have to get that to be able to send it out to you. I can't just use your name, unfortunately. 
Um, so do that, and uh, we'll get those out to you. Guys, we will do more giveaways in the future. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. So guys, here's the thing. I wanna leave you guys with this. This is go time. This weekend is go time for the 4th of July next weekend. So if you want your lawn to look its best, this weekend is to start picking up your mowing frequency, and this weekend is the time to start putting down those products to get, the, if you're doing PGR, this weekend is the time to do it. Do it a little bit early, so you got extra time for uh, the lawn to look its absolute best to peak. Uh, about a week from now. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have not liked this video on your way out, please do so, I really appreciate it. If you're not yet a subscriber, consider subscribing. Also, if you're looking for a formalized training on the methods that I use to create a golf course lawn, be sure to check out the Golf Course Lawn Academy and also check out the Golf Course Lawn Store for all your golf course lawn needs. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys uh, next week. Have a great weekend. Get out and do something fun in the lawn, guys.